you saw just how easy we are making it for non-technical users to create business applications that meet their immediate needs. With no code and low code, you and your business users now have more tools to work with. This is why I believe that over half of all business apps will be built by users who don't identify as professional developers today. Thank you. Well, folks, that's a wrap on our predictions. We're excited about the conversations this will start and continue with all of you. Remember, if you want to share your own prediction, use the hashtag Google Cloud Predictions to tell us all about it. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you for your continued inspiration and for partnering with us to build what's next. So, are you ready? Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, and I'm the founder of Big Chicken. When you're trying to build a national chain, Communication is so critical. To do that, you need a great partner. And we're really lucky that partner is Google Workspace. Google Calendar is my girlfriend. I don't know anything I'm doing unless I talk to my woman. Google Workspace, productivity and collaboration tools for all the ways you work. Uncertain. It's gonna be a crazy day, Huey. It's also unwritten. Bear this. Today is the day we can start to change things. Hey, oh, hey. Make things better and make better things. Let's take on problems, big or small. because they're all worth solving. Let's make tech more helpful, more open, and accessible to everyone. Let's keep data safe and people safe. Look after the environment and each other. Today may surprise us, push us, even scare us. That's why we're here. Let's take those challenges and make something even better for tomorrow. Welcome, President of Google Cloud International and Head of Google Island, Adair Fox Martin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Google Cloud Next. I'm delighted to have all of you here with us today. And to the tens of thousands joining us virtually from across the region, thank you so much for tuning in. 
And for those of you here in Munich, it's been three years, three whole years since we've had the chance to connect face to face at a next event, and we have a lot to catch up on. I'd like to take a moment, if I could, to thank all of our partners who've helped to make this event possible. Special thanks to our Lumery sponsors, Accenture, Atos, C3AI, and Deloitte. Indeed, Google Cloud could not do what we do for our customers without the continuing and ongoing support of our partners. And I can't actually think of a more fitting location to bring us all back together. I had the pleasure of living here in Germany for nearly five years, and it's truly synonymous with technology. As a case in point, right here in Munich, it's home to the largest technology museum in the world. But it isn't called the Technology Museum, it's simply called the German Museum. Technology is already applied. And today, we'll be looking at the transformative power of cloud technology and how it can help drive your organization's transformation forward. This is what today is all about, your transformation and how Google helps. And from the main stage and in our breakout sessions, you'll hear directly from our customers about both the value and the experience they are driving via their transformation with Google Cloud. You'll hear how they're solving some of the most critical business problems and also taking on some of the world's most formidable challenges today, tomorrow, and long into the future. So let's get started. To set the stage, let's connect with our very first customers. In the past few years, Renault Alliance and SEB have both aggressively been pursuing transformation strategies. And for both organizations, cloud technology sits at the very core of their transformations. To share more about this bold course of action, please join me in welcoming two leaders, Renault Alliance's Vice President of IT Services, Stefan Van Uck, and Petra Uhland, Head of Tech and the Group Executive Committee member from SEB. Please join me in welcoming to the stage. Great to have you. Great to have you. So thank you so much for being with us. Maybe we start off <coughs> by helping the audience here to understand a little bit about the vision for transformation that you have in your company. Stefan, let's, let's start with you and the Renault story. Okay, thank you. Uh, Renault Group CIO has a strategic vision, in fact, to pivot from a company with uh, 124 years of history in making vehicles mm -hmm. to a tech company. We want to move from a car manufacturer to a provider of mobility services. Mm -hmm. When we say transformation, we mean transformation across all areas of the business. Uh, first, a new approach to our product. Renault Group is completely changing what is delivered to its customer. From offering just vehicle, we are moving to offering mobility services. Our vision is that 20% of our revenue will come from services by 2030. This means a new approach to product development to deliver electrified, connected, and software-defined vehicles by 2025. Second, we are changing the, the company business operating model. All operations will be cloud-based, data-driven, and AI-enabled. We need to gain in agility and scalability, improve security, and at the same time, conti continuously provide new services. Uh, the cloud delivers the best platform for us to drive these opportunities. Oh, we, I definitely agree about the cloud being the best platform for you. What about you, um, Petra? Tell us a little bit about SEB's ambitions and vision to transform. Yeah, SEB was formed 165 years ago, so this will definitely not be our first transformation. We are a wholesale bank, but we're also one of the largest IT organizations in the Nordics. Banking today is about IT and data. That's where we meet our customers' expectations with new innovative services. And we believe traditional banks with our key asset in people and funds can use the cloud in very powerful ways to be the best banks of tomorrow. Digital transformation is critical to our ability to succeed with these business goals. And from a technology standpoint, we have a set vision to be cloud native by 2030. 
Having said that, it's important for us to acknowledge that we must execute both the new and the proven technologies that we operate at the same time. Feet on the ground, head in the cloud is one of our mantras. So we start with selected business-driven use cases in areas like data and analytics to achieve this balance. Additionally, technology partners like Google Cloud enable us to develop and manage digital and data security and cyber defense with confidence. And this has never been as important as in the current geopolitical and economic context. And in our view, doing this in the cloud is the only way forward. Yeah, so it seems that business and digital transformation are synonymous at SEB. Um, Stefan, how does Google support Renault's ambitions in, in that regard? Well, Google is a critical part of our digital transformation. Uh, we are working on the end-to-end -end process from a car design to its launch through uh, the manufacturing, quality check, supply chain management, and delivery to the dealers. Uh, the car usage will be then monitored, analyzed using our car data platform for a better understanding of our customers. Renault has also connected over 30 manufacturing plants uh, and the associated uh, supply chain to the Google Cloud platform in order to collect data. We are switching to data-driven manufacturing and supply chain models. The data collection using AI enables us to optimize our energy consumption and improve efficiency through predictive maintenance. This is also support our sustainability program, which is a huge part of our transformation objective. We are also addressing the new B2C channel by connecting cars to GCP using the unique analytic capability of the platform. It is an opportunity for us to better know our users and customers. We can offer them the best possible experience, customized features and new services and provide pay-as-you-go mobility services. Any company undergoing a shift uh, of this magnitude has to stress the security of the platform they are choosing. Uh, we trust Google secure infrastructure uh, and are confident that you will also uh, have to create a solution for us to comply with the French digital sovereignty requirement, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, our first strategy was multi-cloud, then we switched to uh, a GCP first. Uh, beyond trust, Renault Group chose Google as a partner for multiple reasons. Uh, Google Cloud is offering the best value for money. Uh, Google Cloud is offering true cloud flexibility and ability to respond to short and long-term challenges. Uh, and cloud, uh, the Google Cloud data is the best value proposal on today's market. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the Google teams are very skilled and very supportive to any of our challenge. Oh, thank you so much, Stefan, for some of your kind remarks there. Um, Petra, how are you at SEB working with Google on the other digital transformation efforts that you have in the company? Yeah, when we started our journey to become cloud native, we evaluated many options. And while we settled on a multi-cloud strategy, Google Cloud has supplied all the functionality we've needed so far. But more than that, their true partnership in helping us solve challenging problems through an integrated approach of collaboration, technology, and training has really been an asset for us. And in a highly regulated industry, building trust is a foundation for personalized services. It's enabled by technology for security, know your customer, and compliance. And with our new data platform, we'll be able to use current and historical data in a more intelligent way and speed up the creation of new innovative solutions for our customers. Being able to automate more and spend less time managing infrastructure allow us to focus on developing those new solutions like embedded banking and self-service digital banking. SEB is actively supporting sustainable transition, and that is by offering advisory services, innovative and sustainable financing, and investment products. And we support our customers in their transitions to the Paris Agreement for Climate Change. So our role is very much to enable companies and individuals to make choices that contribute to sustainable society. So with our updated sustainability strategy, we raise our ambition level further and take the next step in accelerating the sustainability transition. And Google's track record and ambition and credibility is inspirational. Thank you. Our experience of working with Google is that Google combines both the stability, reliability, and responsibility of a major enterprise, and also the speed, innovation, and flexibility of a startup. <laughs> thank you for that, and thank you to both of you for taking the time to come today and share your ins insights with us. I think the stories that you've shared present a great backdrop for some of the discussions that will come today. 
and certainly at Google Cloud, we look forward to continuing our partnership with you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please join me in a big thanks for Stefan and Petra. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Now, as Stefan and Petra shared, working with Google is more than about achieving consistency and convenience. It's about helping organizations right across EMEA on their journey of sustainable change. And to provide some additional context about transformation and how it's so underpinned by cloud technology, I'd like to hand it over now to our CEO of Google Cloud, Thomas Corian. Thank you, Adair. I'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to our customers and partners. We're really delighted to have you all with us. To echo Adair, across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, now more than ever, cloud is essential for digital transformation. A lot of cloud work to date has been focused solely on cost optimization, reducing costs by moving technology to the cloud, using collaboration tools, and being more efficient. But as we look forward, companies and customers want more than just cost optimization. They also want value creation. Cloud has to deliver more value and more innovation to organizations from understanding your customers better, helping you make your supply chain more resilient, bringing people together to improve not just their productivity, but their creativity, and creating seamless interactions across your entire value chain. We're committed at Google Cloud to the digital transformation of all businesses across Europe, Middle East, and Africa and the continued investments in cloud on Europe's terms to support sovereignty, security, and sustainability. It's inspiring to see how organizations across the region are leading the way in this new era. Vodafone, for instance, has migrated to Google Cloud to drive breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and machine learning that have helped it improve customer loyalty through personalized offers and NPS predictions. Swiss International Airlines is using Google Cloud to optimize plane rotation to better align with booking demand, helping them better accommodate customers and save millions. And HSBC has launched more than 250 live services across its organization to support the experience of over 40 million customers around the world. What sets these organizations apart, and what you will hear from many of our customers today, is that they have systematically embraced cloud as the foundation for their digital transformation. To share more about this, I'll hand things back to you, Adair. Thank you again for having me and I hope you all enjoy the rest of Google Cloud Next. Thanks so much, Thomas. <laughs> the transformation era of cloud is marked by a completely different kind of conversation. The questions from our customers are no longer just about convenience and efficiency. They are about the very core of their businesses. And organizations are asking five key questions. How do we become the best at understanding and using data? How do we ensure we have the best technology infrastructure? How do we know that our data, our systems, and our users are secure? How do we create the best workplace for our people? And how do we collectively create a more sustainable future? Now, last year, we introduced those questions on behalf of our customer. Today, our customers are going to share how they've answered them with the help of Google Cloud. So for the first two questions, please join me in welcoming Garrett Kazmaier, VP and General Manager of Data and Analytics 
right here at Google Cloud. Gareth. Stay for all yours. All right, thank you there. So how does an organization actually become the best at understanding and using their data? You know, it turns out data is at the heart of digital innovation, and it's really the key to unlocking AI. The challenge is, though, that today data is generated at far greater rates, and the clue is that it's being trapped in the new data silos of different formats, of point solutions, and of closed clouds. But when data is unlocked, it can really improve everything. It can make supply chains smarter. It can help you to build contextualized customer applications. And it can truly improve everybody. I'm talking about all your customers. I'm talking about all your employees. And I'm talking about all your partners. Google is a leader in the analysis of structured and unstructured data. And we are unifying the data ecosystem for you, creating the most open data cloud. And this includes actually all of your data in all of your formats from all sources from any clouds. And collectively, it's about enabling all styles of analysis. So here is coming you know, one big announcement exactly in that spirit. Today, we announced the support of unstructured data in BigQuery. With that, you can combine your unstructured data with your structured data from your operational databases and SaaS applications. And with that, basically, BigQuery becomes the point for which you can connect all of this data with our machine learning platform, all through the simple and familiar SQL interface of BigQuery. A very interesting statistic is that 90% of our customers, they are analyzing data also from other clouds. Now, with BigQuery Omni, you can access data in Azure and in AWS, but without even moving that data. That makes it simple, and it saves you egress fees. Now, we brought all of this data together, right? So what comes next? Well, you want to uni unify query that in a simple way. Well, today we're going to announce the integration of Spark into BigQuery's Open Query Engine. And with that, you get a single interface for both SQL and Apache Spark right in BigQuery. And I can imagine what most of you are thinking right now if you're onto data like I am. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about data lakes for a second. BigQuery does support key file formats through which you can build data lakes and lake houses through the announcement that we made recently called Big Lake. And today, we are announcing the support of Apache Iceberg and the upcoming support of the popular formats Hootie and Delta. Now, after we connected all of this data together, well, let's connect it to all of you. Let's connect all of this data to people. And the first stop is business intelligence. In the business intelligence space, let's be honest, we actually have two sets of data. On the one side, there is centralized, highly governed, and well-managed data. It's used for standardized reports and dashboards. And on the other side, well, we have that not so much official data. It's often distributed. And it's many times used for self-service dashboarding, right? Google has products for both of these worlds. First, we have Looker. It is the leading product for governed data access. It has strong business semantics. And it's really the foundation for data-driven application building. And we have Google Cloud Data Studio. It's one of the most popular tools for self-service data visualizations and discovery. If you combine them together today, they have more than 10 million users a month. And today, we announced that we are unifying these two products into a single offering called Looker and Looker Studio. And with that, actually, we're going to unify self-service BI with trusted data. We are also announcing Looker Studio Pro. Looker Studio Pro is an enhancement of that with additional support and management capabilities. And well, you know, with obviously, you know, you would think now, this is a Google-only story, but I talked about being committed to an open data cloud, right? So we are also working with all of the leading BI vendors. We are already working with Tableau, but today we are announcing the brief of Looker support for Microsoft Power BI. <laughs> so let's move on from BI to AI. Last year, we have announced Vertex AI. 
our machine learning platform, and that requires 80% less code than other comparable platforms to train machine learning models. But the reality is that today, most of the data is actually video data, and it has been really, really hard to get meaningful insights out of video streams. So today, I am very excited to announce Vertex AI Vision. It is an end-to-end, -end fully managed development platform for Vision AI applications. It allows you to easily ingest, analyze, and store video stream data, and it comes with pre-drained machine learning models for common actions. And it takes down development times from days down to minutes. Now, this is time to value. An open data cloud must also enable a connected ecosystem from SaaS applications to all of the technology partners out there, many here in the audience, I assume. And our data cloud makes it much, much simpler to access data from all of these SaaS applications out there. I'm talking about ServiceNow, Workday, SAP, Adobe, and many more. With SAP, actually, we have created predefined integration points. You have models in BigQuery and out-of-the-box reports. And in the latest version of it, it just takes seven minutes to get deployed. One customer who is taking advantage of that today is Carrefour, and they have reduced both their operating expenses and their energy consumption by moving their data-centric SAP architecture to the cloud. And now, with our data technology, they are getting insights and take actions in real time on both supply chain management and inventory logistics. We also have 800 technology partners who are building their products on top of Google Cloud today. And 17 of the most influential data companies in the cloud have joined us in the Data Cloud Alliance program. It is a program with the commitment to open standards and interoperability. We have also expanded our partnerships with Colibra, Palantir, Elastic, MongoDB, ServiceNow, and many more. Because the bottom line of all of this is, you need an open data cloud. And with all of these announcements today, we are taking a major step forward in making this a reality for all of you. Now, obviously, I can talk about data with you the entire day, but we have to move on to the second question and talk about how do you get the best possible infrastructure. And for us, you know, for me, being an engineer myself, great infrastructure means that you can innovate and build really, really quickly. The challenge is, though, that yesterday's infrastructure slows down development. It makes innovating really, really hard. And the reason is quite simple. It's complexity. It's tough to build quickly, you know, when you have to select from thousands of options, when you have to stitch together infrastructure all the time. And at the same point in time, think about, you know, the poor developer, you know, managing costs and keeping applications safe. The good news is, though, there is a better way. Tomorrow's cloud creates simplicity through what we call golden paths. Now, golden paths are prescriptive architectures and an opinionated development model. And the point is that they reduce complexity right from the IDE when you deploy it through production. And here is a fantastic example of a golden path. Today, we are launching Software Delivery Shield. And that is a fully managed end-to-end -end software supply chain security model right from your source code into deployment. It has four key components. First, a cloud workstation to develop. Second, an assured open source software service that we are validating and securing. Third, cloud build our continuous integration service and GKE, our, manage, our security management dashboard, all coming together in software delivery shield. Another great example of golden paths is our workload optimized infrastructure that we are building at Google right from the Silicon app. And I'm going to talk about three quick examples here. And we start, obviously, with the most important one, AI-optimized infrastructure. Google has developed the Tensor Processing Units, or the TPUs. And the point was we wanted to massively increase hardware performance for AI, right? Today, we are announcing the general availability of TPU version 4. They are even faster, and they are more effective. And the whole point of TPU version 4 is that you can run really large machine learning models in your companies for your next breakthrough innovation. 
We are also super pleased and psyched to announce the deeper integration with NVIDIA. Together with NVIDIA, we are committed to using AI workloads and running AI workloads on their latest technology that ranges from GPUs to managed machine learning services in combination with Google AI models. And a great example of that is our joint commitment to open source AI. Not only to bring the ecosystem together, but actually to help all of you to prevent platform and model lock-in. The next stop is our cloud-first workloads. You know, I was talking about developers, and 50% you know, of developers are actually using containers today. And Google contributed a very important format in the container space called Kubernetes, right? Google's Kubernetes engine is a fully managed service. That is already a big deal. But a bigger point is it scales to unprecedented levels. PGS, it's a Norwegian geophysics company, they have tripled their deployment size with us. And they scaled up to, get this, 21 petaflops. Do you, does, does any of you know what that means, 21 petaflops? That means that PGS is now in the top 25 list of the world's supercomputers, just through the powers of Kubernetes and GKE. To run Kubernetes in different environments, we are providing Antos, and Antos basically allows you to run Kubernetes in multi-cloud settings, on-premise or on the edge. And today, we are announcing a set of enhancements to make multi-cluster management much simpler, by just deploying a single configuration file to hundreds of clusters in different environments. So we also want to stay ahead, help you stay ahead of emerging technologies. And we are working with web free companies, the pioneers in that space. And they're using our workload optimized infrastructure for workloads such as blockchain, for instance. And today we are announcing that Coinbase has selected us as their premier cloud provider and partnering with us to enable the web-free community. So these golden paths, they are really our approach to give you the best technology infrastructure. And to talk about the impact of that to their business, I would like to turn it to our great partners and customers from the Deutsche Bank team. Let's roll the video. If you don't have financial stability and you don't know that you can take care of your dear ones, your happiness is impacted. Deutsche Bank is a leading German and European bank that is transforming the industry. We are on a journey with Google Cloud to redefine banking. We are building the foundations and the infrastructure for a compliant, secure experience. We're also enabling all of our clients to really now leverage that to better their life. What really excites me is the huge transformation that we are driving at the bank. We're creating modern solutions and new opportunities. Deutsche Bank's Frontier app is a cash flow and invoice management platform for our clients. It allows them to, in real time, share their invoices with their customers, collect payments from them, automatically send them reminders, overall decrease in time to capture a mandate and accept a payment. We brought that down from weeks to days with 80% in sales efficiencies. One of the biggest benefits of developing this app on Google Cloud is most of the services we needed were just out of the box. So my team could really focus on building the business features. We are able to connect to our clients' ecosystems, becoming a part of their entire business value chain and beyond the traditional boundaries of banking. Some of the key benefits for partnering with Google Cloud is speed, security, and scalability. By having data in one place, you can apply analytics, you can build machine learning solutions. The partnership with Google Cloud allows us, from an innovation point of view, work directly with Google and engineers, sometimes on products and services that are not available in the market already. Google Cloud is really at the heart of our transformation that our great team has and are able to implement it efficiently, securely, and at the right velocity. The sky is the limit. So I want to I wanna end with this. 
men companies are empowered with an intelligent, simple, and open data cloud, the sky is indeed the limit. And with that, I would like to hand it back to Adair. Thanks so much, Garrett. So having the power of an open data cloud and an open infrastructure cloud to drive your transformation isn't meaningful unless you can operate in a trusted environment. And this takes us to our third customer question. How do we know our data, our systems, and our users are secure? Cybersecurity is naturally a top of mind concern for CISOs, and it's increasingly top of mind in the C suite and in the boardroom. And on one hand, CISOs need to defend against increasingly sophisticated threats and actors. But on the other hand, they're faced with an unprecedented shortage of cybersecurity professionals. So, how do we reconcile this? With our solution, we are championing a future of invisible security. In this approach, security is engineered in. Operations are simplified, and we pursue a shared fate together. Our commitment to you is twofold. First, we work to keep you secure from cyber attacks. And to do this, we utilize the expertise that we've developed from securing our own Google business and our own billions of users. Second, we help you to quickly and effectively identify and resolve cyber threats. So what does this look like in action? Using our new Chronicle Security Operations Suite, Morgan Sindel, which is a UK construction and regeneration company, ingests, analyzes, and retains all of its security information, eliminating what was the typical trade-off between cost and security blind spots. Vertiv, a leading provider of equipment and services for data centers, is now analyzing more than 20 times more security data and responding to three times more security events with exactly the same resources. Security queries that used to take hours now take seconds. Our investment in your security is only growing. We've recently completed our acquisition of Mandiant, a leader in dynamic cyber defense. Mandiant is known for being the best in threat intelligence and in incident response. Google Cloud is the best at data and analytics. Now that we're together, we have the latest threat intelligence from the front lines. And we can deliver this automatically through SaaS products backed by the leading managed offerings and consulting services of Mandiant. Jointly, we can deliver on our shared mission of a more secure world. We understand that to fully embrace transformation in the cloud, you not only need security, you also need trust. You need confidence and peace of mind that when you deploy the latest innovations, you can meet your unique requirements for control, transparency, and sovereignty. Whether that's driven by your regulator, by geopolitical considerations, or indeed by the government and its policy. At Google Cloud, we take digital sovereignty seriously. Customers, partners, policymakers, and governments have surfaced three requirements in three very specific areas. The first is data sovereignty, which is keeping control over encryption and access to your data. The second is operational sovereignty. This is keeping visibility and control over the provider operations. And the third is software sovereignty. This is running workloads without a dependence on a provider's software. To address these requirements, we launched our initiative, Cloud on Europe's Terms, in September of 2021. To achieve data sovereignty, we offer unique external encryption capabilities, allowing you to store and manage your encryption keys outside of Google Cloud's infrastructure and deny Google access for any reason. 
To support data residency requirements, we continue to launch cloud regions in EMEA. Just recently, we launched new regions in Qatar, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Greece, adding to our 16 cloud regions here in EMEA. And today, I'm really excited to announce new cloud regions for four more countries, for Austria, for Norway, for Sweden, and South Africa. To support operational sovereignty, we offer an exceptionally strong set of trusted partnerships for stringent local supervision. And to support software sovereignty needs, we offer hosted cloud solutions. Now, these solutions are built on open source foundation, embracing open APIs and services to enable interoperability and, most importantly, survivability. They can run on the customer premises, they can run on partner premises, and they meet the strict needs for disconnected operations. Our unique relationship with T-Systems in Germany here demonstrates how we deliver both the full benefit of the public cloud and confidence in compliance with German regulations. And to discuss this, I'd really like to welcome on stage Adele Al Sayeh, CEO of T Systems. Please join me in welcoming Adele. Hello, Adele. Great to have you here, Adele. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, T Systems uh, was Google Cloud's first digital sovereignty partner in Europe. And as you know, since then we've partnered in France, in Spain, um, and in Italy, and probably more to come. But it started with you. Yes. Um, why do you think this partnership model is so important, not just for Germany, but in Europe and beyond? Well, there, first of all, thank you for having me. It's great to be in a room full of people again. <laughs> Um, you know, sovereignty has been a topic for um, a period of time. This is not a new topic, right? Um, it's driven by multiple factors. Um, geopolitical tensions is driving it, the bifurcation of the world between East and West, the fear of being dependent on somebody and not being able to move uh, is another. The war in Europe that we didn't expect is fueling even more this sovereignty sentiment. Um, and at the core of it, as I said, is fear of dependency, but also fear of not complying with regulatory environments. And you talked about data. Data is a big deal here, right? How do I control my data? How do I make sure I know exactly who is touching it, where is it, etc.? And um, we've seen this opportunity develop over multiple years. Um, and we found this opening where we worked jo jointly with you uh, to develop the engineering solution. Um, and, um, you know, I'm super excited about that because it is a unique way of providing a hyperscaler solution with the sovereign controls that allows companies to digitize, allows them to use the best of the cloud without losing their sovereignty and their worries about controls. All right. And I think, you know, there's an element of trust here. Yes. And um, I think, you know, both of us appreciate it's so easy to lose trust and so, so hard to win. Yes. And when we look at organizations that want to start or accelerate their journey of digital sovereignty as part of their transformation narrative, there's a lot of questions and a lot of options to navigate. What would your advice to be to this audience about getting started? Well, look, the first thing is um, this solution that we're talking about is real. It's available. Um, we are launching it in phases. Of course, we introduced the sovereign controls and every quarter. Um, we have now uh, multiple customers that are going live that are using this. Um, so it's no longer a theoretical debate or theoretical discussion. So my advice is go for it, right? Take advantage of it. Um, and I believe the regulators in Europe are going to put more and more focus on this area. They're already asking and looking at legislations that would require, of course, first the uh, the, the, the mission critical infrastructures to comply with certain security requirements that is going to be put into law and it will extend beyond the mission critical infrastructures. Um, they're encouraging the companies to assess their environments. They're encouraging the companies to move forward implementing the solutions in order to address these vulnerabilities, if you will. So my advice is um, give us a call <laughs> and uh, either Google or T-Systems 
and uh, we would be delighted to help you think through it. So as um, our companies perform a risk assessment, you know, often looking at what the regulators have suggested, I, I think there's a very strong sense that the time to act is now, as you said, this yes. solution is available. And that's because of the upside that is significant. So if I asked you about that upside, what would excite you most about it? Look, there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm super excited about. I'm excited, first of all, about this engineering solution that addresses European concern. Um, this is a unique solution. Um, it doesn't compromise in terms of access to the hyperscaler stacks and all of the exciting technology that you just learned. Um, so I'm excited about bringing it to the market and, and, and showcasing it and bringing customers on it. I'm excited about onboarding our clients. Uh, you know, we're, we're learning as we, as we bring every client on board and, and that makes us stronger. That makes us um, revisit our roadmaps and decide what to prioritize. Um, and Wieland, I'm excited about our co-innovation lab, right? I mean, it, it is a big investment in Munich uh, where we, would, we are building our teams, bringing them together, where the customers actually can come and spend weeks working with the teams and moving their applications into the sovereign cloud. All right. Well, listen, Nadal, thank you for an incredible partnership. Thank you for highlighting some very important issues for us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in, thank in thanking the CEO of T-Systems, Adal al Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are committed to making partnerships like the one we've just discussed with Adal available wherever they're needed by local legislation. They're part of our commitment to deliver the most secure, most trusted cloud to our customers here in this region. We want to help you transform in full confidence that your data, your systems, and your users are secure and compliant. Now, when we think about transformation, it's impossible without people. And we have to ensure that our people are able to work together and they are empowered to drive the change. Over the past three years, we collectively have experienced nothing less than an upheaval in our workplace. Remote and office work have blended and combined into a hybrid workplace. And accommodating this with the right collaboration and productivity tools has become absolutely paramount. So let's look at this question. How do we create the best hybrid workplace for our people? Google Workspace was built to answer that question. Workspace helps people communicate and collaborate to get things done regardless of where they work or how they actually want to work. It is the world's most popular set of productivity tools with over 3 billion users across 8 million companies. And we absolutely continue to deliver innovation with more than 300 new features delivered in the past year alone. Workspace is secure by design, leveraging Google's industry-leading zero-trust architecture. But how does that show up as value for our customers? First, let's look at Just Eat. They run Google Workspace to keep their staff connected and communicating regardless of where they are. And when the lockdown hit, they were able to launch a campaign literally within weeks to provide workers in the UK's National Health Service discounted meals for themselves and for their families. Revolut, a fintech also out of the UK, uses Google Workspace for its teams to collaborate across 26 regions and deliver new banking products at speed. And right here in Germany, Zalando, uses Google Workspace for communication across its rapidly expanding operations. So you can see the momentum very clearly in new, rapidly growing businesses. According to Forbes, 96% of companies in their 2021 next billion dollar startups list are Google Workspace customers. And I think it's really important for established traditional businesses to take note, because in a study of university students, 75% felt Google Workspace offered a more advanced, seamless way for teams to work together. What's more, 
this preference actually informs their choice of future employer. 47% said Google Workspace would make a job, offer, a job offer at a future workplace much more appealing. So Google Workspace is by far more than the sum of its parts and its capabilities. It has been designed from the ground up to help organizations thrive in a world of hybrid work. More than any other set of tools, Google Workspace helps create the ultimate workplace for today and I also think for the future. Now, in our final segment today, we move from the future of the workplace to the future of our planet. Many of you here will recall the intensity of the heat this summer, breaking records, triggering droughts, and even threatening food security for many. There's no doubt that climate change is upon us. And today's final question is one that should always be top of mind. How do we collectively create a more sustainable future? Sustainability isn't a nice to have, it's an imperative. In good economic times and in bad, it has to stand at the top of an organization's priorities. But interestingly, we have found that you can have your cake and eat it too. And what I mean by this is that you can become more operationally efficient and more innovative by becoming more sustainable. The secret is smarter data. To discuss this further, let's welcome on stage Stephanie Nioi, Nioiman, the VP of IT Sourcing and Infrastructure at Lufthansa Group, and Neil Kuz, who's the CEO of a Google Cloud partner, Geotab. Please welcome Neil and Stephanie. <laughs> Neil, welcome. Stephanie, a warm welcome. Thank you so much. So thank you both for joining us different companies, but both in the travel and transport sector. So let's begin our discussion by just asking to what extent you agree in your industry that sustainability is a data problem. And Neil, we'll, we'll start with you. Thanks, Adair, and good morning to this really impressive audience here today. Um, let me start by saying that sustainability is at the core of Geotab's purpose. Uh, we are global leaders in IoT and connected vehicles, supporting over 40,000 customers, many Fortune 500 companies in over 150 countries. The data insights that we gather from 3 million connected vehicles and around 100,000 data points processed a second ensures that we have the data intelligence to support customers on their sustainability journey. But here's the real truth about commercial fleets. A large percentage of commercial vehicles cannot yet be electrified. So with that being the case, what can organizations do to be more sustainable? The answer to that challenge is, as you said, data. Mm. First, you use the data insights to make your non-electric fleets more efficient, reducing their carbon footprint. You do this by adding sensors to the vehicles, optimizing the road routes, optimizing the types of vehicles used for a particular job, lowering the fuel consumption and idling, and managing inefficient driver behavior. Second, we're seeing that without data insights, vehicle electrification projects often fail. By applying data insights, you can make the best decisions for electrification. Using the data to understand the usage patterns, such as optimizing for range, where infrastructure is readily available, where and when vehicles can be charged. Using the insights from data, you can decide how much and what part of your fleets can be electrified for maximum benefit. So to summarize, yes, data intelligence must be at the core of your sustainability transition in our industry if you're going to move quickly enough. All right. And what about Lufthansa, Stephanie? How does it contribute to sustainability from a data perspective in the aviation industry? To make aviation more sustainable is really a huge challenge, you can imagine so. However, at Lufthansa Group, we have set ourselves very ambitious climate goals and will become a carbon neutral company by 2050. On the way towards that target, we will halve the 2019 net emissions by 2030 already. So as the first airline group in Europe, we are proud that our clear emission reduction path is officially in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. So quite an ambition here. For the aviation industry, a truly hard 
it is to decarbonize and this challenge will be managed with three levers mainly the new aircraft which is currently the main contributor to safe emissions the deployment of sustainable aviation fuel and operational efficiency on top and of course that is a very much data driven exercise so at Lufthansa we have used Google Cloud to create a new cloud-based operations decision support suite meaning the first Lufthansa subsidiary to use this is Swiss Mm -hmm. First, they pulled in multiple sources of data regarding their planes, their crews, passengers and schedules. And then they applied AI tools on top, so they are now able to optimize operational decisions with just sub-seconds uh, response. So let's look at just one feature in that platform. It's about rotating planes within a short time. That feature alone has reduced fuel consumption and thus CO2 emissions for mm. us. So it's very clear to see the impact on sustainability objectives. But for orgs that are transforming, does sustainability go hand in hand with other desired business outcomes? It might be things like cost cutting, maybe operational efficiency or reimagining the, the customer experience. I mean, Stephanie, seeing as probably a number of us used your services to maybe arrive in Munich today, let's start with you on this one. <laughs> We've clearly seen uh, this with the project I just described, uh, the operations decision support suite. So yes, we are able to reuse emissions, but within the same time and within the very same projects, um, the optimization we have saved money as well yeah so during the first three months we already saw a savings of 1.5 million euros and this was just from optimizing 50 percent of the routes of just one of our companies uh, meaning swiss so we expect the overall savings from the project will be very significant for lufthansa also in the more or less non-digital world examples which show the coexistence of cost cutting, sustainability increase and more customer comfort are easy to get. Mm -hmm. Look at new aircraft, save up to 30% fuel and thereby emissions. They lower costs per seat and increase comfort, uh, customer comfort at the very same time. So by reducing emissions and also noise pollution, call it as you want, is win, win, win. Yes across a number of variables, win, 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 I like that. Mm -hmm. And Neil, for your customers, a broader set of customers, of course, given your customer base, is data that drives sustainability also clearly driving other business outcomes? Yes, absolutely. Um, our customers tell us that's exactly what's happening. Um, one of the customers, for example, is Deutsche Bahn Regio, the largest bus company in, in Germany with over 5,000 buses connected to the Geotab platform. By harnessing data insights, they make sure that the vehicles are available for drivers on time and ready to go. They have the state of charge, evaluation reports on energy consumption, and they're using Geotab data for immediate feedback to their drivers. This feedback helps the drivers con c correct behavior like heavy braking. Mm -hmm. Some of the outcomes reported include higher driver satisfaction, which is good, 40% reduction in idling time, and savings of over 1,400 tons of CO2, a substantial reduction in fuel costs as well, and high customer satisfaction. So absolutely, by leveraging data insights, customers are bene benefiting from this transformative change. So first of all, thank you both for being here. And I think it's wonderful to see the cases of sustainability in both your organizations pairing beautifully with you know, operational efficiency, cost savings, and creating wonderful customer experiences. Please join me in thanking both Stephanie and Neil for joining us today. Thank you so much. You. Great to see you both. Thank you, Adair. That conversation leaves me truly optimistic about what's to come. And it's all part of our overall goal, to help you make the sustainable choice, the easy choice for everyone in life, in work, and in the cloud. So I'd like to close by thanking all of our guests for illustrating what true transformation looked like today in the cloud and possibly for tomorrow. You, our very valued customers, bring the possible to life and you inspire us each and every day to deliver the technology, the tools, and the solutions that drive value creation in the cloud. No matter what your circumstances are 
or where you are on your journey. We will help you to better understand your data, help you to apply technology so you can lead in your industry, help you to ensure that your systems, your people, your users are safe and secure. We'll help you to create the best workplace for your employees. And we will help you to drive sustainability in your operations. So let me thank you once again for placing your trust in Google Cloud. Google is investing for the future, and we are here to help, whatever comes next. Thank you. Shaquille O'Neal, I'm the founder of Big Chicken. When you're trying to build a national chain, communication is so critical. To do that, you need a great partner. And we're really lucky that partner is Google Workspace. Google Calendar is my girlfriend. I don't know anything I'm doing unless I talk to my woman. Google Workspace, productivity and collaboration tools for all the ways you work. Everybody. So I'm standing backstage at the Google Clouds HQ. We're literally seconds away from kicking off the keynote for developer. I am so excited to share our predictions. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, everyone. Please welcome Google Developers Vice President Janine Banks. Welcome to Next22. I'm Janine Banks, and I lead developer products and community at Google. My team and I love empowering developers to build innovations for the future, which leads me to the theme of next this year. Today, meet tomorrow. To tell you a little more about how we think about tomorrow, my friends and I at Google Cloud will share top technology predictions for where we believe the cloud is headed over the next three years. Each one of us will share the one prediction we believe will be true by the end of 2025. And we'd love to hear what predictions you all come up with too. You can do that by responding to our original video or creating your own video on YouTube shoot, Shorts or any other social video platform. Just use the hashtag Google Cloud Predictions and tell us all about it. But before we get into all of that, I want to talk about our developer community for a minute. I get most excited about the incredible ideas and new products coming from our community, as well as the opportunity we have to help developers learn, grow, and build powerful systems and engaging experiences. Google's developer community is inclusive. One where cloud developers at every level of expertise are welcome while being challenged at the same time. 
And being part of Google's developer community creates true economic impact because Google Cloud certified professionals are some of the highest paid in the industry. This same cloud developer community fosters the creators. And by that, I'm talking about the students, the career switchers, and anyone else hoping to become a developer who's encouraged and supported to bring their creations to life. Just like we saw with our partner in Brazil, Soul Code Academy, and one of our newest professional data engineers, Patricia. Take a look. Tecnologia é como se fosse um bichinho que uma vez que ela te morde, não sai mais de você. Eu cursei análise e desenvolvimento de sistemas, só que eu não consegui terminar. Tinha lá aqueles formulários, né? Qual que é o seu nome, seu endereço? Mas qual que é a sua profissão? Eu não tenho profissão. Agora é a hora de eu retomar. Aí foi onde eu vi a oportunidade do Bootcamp da Soul Code Academy em parceria com o Google Cloud. E seis meses depois, aí foi onde eu recebi o convite para poder fazer parte do time da Soul Code Academy. Só que do lado de lá. Ali o mundo sabe quando o mundo ganha cor. Então nessa hora ficou colorido. Eu, Patrícia, mulher casada, mãe de três filhos, 39 anos, profissão, engenheira de dados habilitada em Google Cloud Platform. Don't you just love Patricia's story? This is why I'm excited to come to work every single day and the potential of what we can build together with all of you. Speaking of exciting, we recently announced a new partnership with the Drone Racing League. We built new immersive learning experiences with DRL that will blow your mind. You can participate in the Google Cloud Challenge where you can get hands-on with DRL's race data and Google Cloud services. You can predict race outcomes, give performance tips to DRL pilots to help them smoke their competitors, and learn all at the same time. And you even get to compete for a chance to win a trip to the season finale of the League's World Championship. You can get started with the challenge right now. We look forward to seeing what you'll build next as we fly into the future of cloud together. Do you see what I did just there? Fly, drones, okay, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go. My prediction is by the end of 2025, developers will start with, with neural inclusive design. We'll see a 5x growth in user adoption in their first two years in production. According to the National Institutes of Health, up to 20% of the world's population is neural distinct, with the other 80% being neurotypical. These two groups make up what is called neural diversity. And neurodiversity describes the ways people experience, interpret, and process the world around them, whether in school, at work, or through social relationships. And here at Google, we believe the world and our workplace needs all types of thinkers. What do you think about that, Jim? That's right, one in five of us here are neurodistinct. But what is neuroinclusive design? Neuroinclusive design is designed for cognitive and sensory accessibility. One of the things that makes participation in meetings accessible to me is the raise hand function. It allows me to pause the cadence of the meeting to provide an opportunity to share my thoughts. Then we realized that this made meetings better for everyone. It created more structure for everybody, which enabled visibility and broader range of ideas. So neuroinclusive design starts with raising accessibility for neurodistinct people like myself, but everyone benefits. Good design is already neuroinclusive when implemented properly. As an example, when developing interactive and visual features, we need to consider how noise, vibrations, or pop-ups show up in design because it creates sensory stimulation that leads to distraction. Design principles can be made neuroinclusive when you plan thoughtfully for balance, proportion, unity, light, 
color, space, and patterns. And here are some tips for developers. Number one, design with simplicity and clarity. Number two, remove distractions or extra visualizations like pop-up windows. Three, avoid really bright colors or too much of a single color. Four, stick with a predictable and intuitive user flow. Five, be thoughtful about the vibe you are setting. Do you need music or sounds to set the tone, or is that just an extra element that can create distraction? And finally, six, stay away from pressure points requiring a quick reaction from the users. This can add unnecessary pressure. Back to you, Janine. Thanks, Jim. This upfront design thoughtfulness is just so important. How often have any of you been pressured to ship something, but you knew you could have improved the user experience with just a little more time? At Google, we feel that ideation, user research, testing, and marketing disproportionately help teams launch more inclusive products faster. While these are standard practices in software development, when we made a conscious decision to have all types of thinkers included across these phases, our eyes open in so many new ways to be more inclusive. For example, closed captioning in Google Meet helps all of us process information better visually. It also helps people participating in meetings where a different language is used. When you build simple, clear experiences with fewer distractions, your products will inherently drive greater user adoption. In fact, what did I say? <laughs> I predict 5x more in your first two years in production. This is because developers like us will have built belonging directly into our products. So that's my prediction. Now I'm going to pass the mic to some of my friends here at Google Cloud to share their predictions. Thanks. <laughs> My name is Eric Brewer, and my prediction is that by the end of 2025, four out of five enterprise developers will use some form of curated open source. Now, you're probably wondering, what is curated open source? Curated open source is just open source as you know it, but with a layer of accountability. What I mean by that is curated open source comes with support for developers, and the curator in this case will focus on not just finding vulnerabilities, but helping to fix them too. They'll update old dependencies and track new ones. With curated open source, the curators will build in automation for testing, may even offer response-based SLAs. And here's why this is so important for the community. Open source is everywhere. It helps power our electrical grids, water supplies, oil pipelines. It's fundamental to all clouds, most nations, and even widely used in proprietary software. Open source is public infrastructure, and it's a central part of our everyday lives. So now what? Open source is here to stay, but everything it powers is vulnerable. The incidents are real, and they are costly. This is why governments are stepping in with regulations like FedRAMP and executive orders to combat cybersecurity. Regulations like these are super important and show us just how deeply security vulnerabilities impact our lives. But in fact, these regulations are exactly why we need curation. Curated open source enables you to depend on the open source beyond the as-is approach we use today. We believe in this philosophy so much that we are already working on it. To help you build secure apps faster, we're releasing Software Delivery Shield. This is a fully managed security solution that protects your software supply chain from source to deployment. And as part of SDS, we have our initial curated open source example called Assured OSS. This service curates open source packages used by Google and makes them available to you, our cloud developers. Google will scan, analyze, and fuzz test more than 250 Java and Python packages for security vulnerabilities on your behalf, and we'll update them as needed. Still don't believe me that developers use some form of curation? How about this? Let us show you what we're going to, doing at Google to make this reality. Hi, Aja. Hey, Eric. So let's actually see what the software delivery lifecycle looks like 
if you use Software Delivery Shield to enforce responsible use of open source through policy. So we're going to start with Cloud Workstations, a complete development environment in the cloud. Cloud Workstations is highly customizable, and the version I'm showing today has all the tools and compilers and everything I need, including the brand new Source Protect extension. Actually, right here you can see that Source Protect has flagged a dependency with a known vulnerability. I can fix this right now on my workstation before anything is ever checked in. Now, Cloud Workstation is going to automatically detect those changes, and it's going to redeploy my app on my workstations as needed. This shortens my dev loop and makes me more productive. So when I push my changes, because I'm happy with them, Cloud Build is going to run continuous integration against our code base. Here, you can see a Cloud Build build report, and you can see that we provide Salsa Level 3 compliant build provenance. Cloud Build also scans for vulnerabilities. And here we can see a list of vulnerabilities, including details on many of them, and in some cases, even the fix that we need to make to address it. Now, it happens to be that the image that Eric and I are working with today has several external open source dependencies. For example, Spring Boot Starter. In general, pulling these directly from the internet could pose some risk. Fortunately, that dependency and many others are in the assured OSSS portfolio so that I can use a version of that dependency that's been vetted by Google, which is what you've been telling us about. This is exactly the point. You don't have to worry about these dependencies because they are already vetted for you. And so now that I know that I don't have to worry as much about these dependencies, it's time to push the code to prod. So let's actually look at a delivery pipeline. Here's a cloud deploy delivery pipeline. Super simple one. We've just got a dev and a test environment. And when I'm happy with my code and dev, I can promote it to prod. And we can deploy to GKE. So. While that's deploying, let's look at one last thing. Here's the new GKE security posture page. Here I can see security concerns on both the cluster and workload level. I can dig into any concerns if I need to, including seeing recommended actions to take to mitigate any issues that were identified. So that's the dev to prod tour of Software Delivery Shield, so you can see how it helps you use open source responsibly all the way from the, when you start writing code to when it's released into production. That was great. Thank you, Aja. We love co-creating. <laughs> we just want to make sure there's an added layer of accountability to better support you and the apps you build. This is why we believe that four out of five enterprise developers will use some form of curated open source. Thank you. First off, it is so nice to see everyone here in the room. Give it up for being back in, in person, right? Yeah. All right. So, hello, everyone. My name is Iman Ganizada, and my prediction is that by the end of 2025, 90% of security operations workflows will be automated and managed as code. Okay, so SecOps teams are struggling to keep up with the attackers. We all know this, right? There's, there's too much data, complex technology environments, and there's more adversaries now more than ever. I mean, every day on the news, we hear about a new 18-year-old that has breached a company, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and let's, let's pair this with the detection and response workflow, which is notoriously centered around toil. And it requires a linear growth in people to keep up with the volume of threats. But we all know we can just hire a bunch of more people, right? Like, every CISO has a billion dollars in their bank, and you know, they're just waiting to hire 700,000 people. <laughs> so this inefficient workflow has basically created the cybersecurity talent shortage. There's over 700,000 unfilled cyber jobs. And these jobs, they're, they're high stress, they're overloaded with toil-based work, and uh, a lot of folks are quite frankly just burnt out. So there's just no way that this issue is going to get solved if we keep doing things the way that we're doing them today. So to scale security across cloud, we're going to make security more agile and accessible to everyone through code. Here's how. So our autonomic security operations framework is designed to help you take advantage of our API-first approach with Chronicle security operations and other tools, including many of those tools that are within our new Mandiant portfolio. 
The shift in our, our new framework takes traditional assembly line security operations workflows into a codified continuous feedback model we call continuous detection, continuous response, or CDCR for short. You can imagine it's, it's kind of like CICD, but, but for threat management. We've seen customers like BBVA and NCR, and as well as our MSSP partners like Sideris, use our tools to build continuous detection and response workflows that scale across billions of alerts. And so earlier this year, we actually partnered with MITRE Ingenuity, with Sideris and others to launch community security analytics. CSA is an open source repo that we created to foster community collaboration on developing security analytics for your cloud workloads. These analytics can be deployed as code to complement the native detection capabilities in Chronicle and other Google Cloud tools. So it's, it's kind of like having a team of devs collaborating on your detection rules. So I'll show you how to deploy these rules, but first let's actually dive into an example, okay? Let's just say that there's a user outside of your DevOps team that gets access to impersonate a highly privileged production service account. That probably wouldn't be good, right? <laughs> so yeah. So, to rule 2.20 analyzes your admin activity logs for permission grants on service accounts. And for this next part, we went ahead and pre-recorded this because we wanted to save time and also I don't want to have you watch me fumble over my keys and take down US East or something. <laughs> <laughs> so first, we're starting in the terminal and we've already cloned a private repo here. Now we're going to go ahead and open up that URL rule and we can add parameters to fine tune the rule to our needs. So in case you haven't noticed, Chronicle's URL syntax is very, very, very simple compared to other detection languages. Now we're gonna go ahead and commit and push our changes, and we already have a GitHub action set up to auto-deploy these rules into our Chronicle instance. And by the way, Chronicle can be deployed as code, and it can scale across petabytes of data without needing infrastructure or human involvement. I mean, it's, it's as cloud-native as they come. Okay, so we're gonna pivot into our Chronicle instance, we're gonna refresh, and let's see, voila, okay, boom. So there's our new rule, and from this point on, it's gonna start alerting when this malicious activity is identified. We can also run a retro hunt, which essentially takes this rule and it runs it against all of our historical data in Chronicle to see if there's an alert that we missed, and we've done retro hunts with customers that have taken seconds or minutes that may have taken them hours or days with their existing tools. I mean, it's like it's uber fast. We can also use Chronicle Soar to create a, uh, an automation playbook, basically to figure out how to respond to this type of alert. And we also, have we also have APIs to automate this entire thing from ingest to analytics to response. So the moral of the story is what? Um, none of us want to end up on the news, right? <laughs> So, so in order to make this 90% prediction a reality, security analysts are going to have to work a lot more like devs so that they can free up time to focus on the most important threats to their organizations. So you'll need to implement modern, developer-friendly workflows like CDCR across your detection and response practice. And what I've shown you today is how we're making it possible for you to do so. Thank you. My name is Camilia Ariafer, and my prediction is by the end of 2025, AI is going to be the primary driver for moving to a four-day work week. <laughs> so what does this mean to you and me, a three-day weekend? <laughs> What, what it actually means is being able to comfortably complete five days worth of work in four days or even less with efficiencies gained through AI. Enterprise use of AI alone exploded over the past few years, touching all aspects of business. One of the greatest reasons behind this is AI's huge potential to increase employee productivity. You have told us how excited you are to work with Google Cloud because we make all of the AI research, AI models, and ML toolkits from Google available to you as enterprise-grade products and solutions, like Vertex AI. Since its launch, Vertex AI has helped data scientists ship ML models faster into production by automating routine tasks like model management, monitoring, and versioning. 
With Vertex AI, data scientists can now build and train ML models five times faster, meaning increased time for experimentation, reduced custom coding, and the ability to move more ML models into production. Today, with the announcement of Vertex AI Vision, we are taking this a step further and providing you with a fully managed development environment for creating computer vision applications. In the general keynote with a smart city use case, my colleague Jun Yang discussed how you can use Vertex AI Vision to reduce the time required to build and deploy computer vision applications from weeks to hours. Now, let's dive into three areas that I, as a developer, am most excited about when it comes to Vertex AI Vision. The ability to use your own custom models, integration with BigQuery, and developing external applications with SDKs. Let's see how. First, in the smart city example, we used a pre-built occupancy analytics model to detect and count vehicles. Now, if I want to do the same thing for bicycles, I can use a custom bicycle detection model in Vertex AI and easily import it into my computer vision application. Basically, if the model works in Vertex AI, then it will also work in Vertex AI vision. Second, I want to use the power of BigQuery to combine video annotations with other information in my data warehouse. By the way, I can also store annotations in the included vision warehouse feature to easily search for insights across my video. By using Vertex AI Vision together with BigQuery, I can correlate traffic patterns with weather patterns or even make a forecast with BigQuery ML to predict future traffic patterns. Finally, I can use the SDK to access process video data and annotations and hook into a live stream of vehicle counts to power other applications or dashboards. It's that simple and it can be applied to one video stream or even hundreds of video streams. This level of flexibility and scalability is unique to Google Cloud. And that's how we help you reduce the development time for computer vision applications from weeks to hours. Not just with Vertex AI Vision, but all of Google Cloud's AI products are built to help you be more productive and delight your customers. For example, using contact center AI, call center teams can manage up to 28% more conversations concurrently. That means a lot, product a lot more productivity. With Translation Hub, localization teams can translate documents into 135 languages in a matter of seconds which means time saved for other efforts and a more inclusive workplace. Similarly, with Google Cloud's recommendations AI, merchandising and e-commerce teams can now drive 40% more customer conversions. That means a lot more happy customers and a happy sales team too. When you put together all of these productivity gains, powered by AI across the organization, a four-day work week is a very distinct possibility. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Irina Farouk, and my prediction is that by the end of 2025, 90% of data will be actionable in real time using ML. I'm sure many of you are pretty skeptical of this prediction, and that's understandable. A recent survey found that only one third of all companies are able to realize tangible value from their data. And we continue to hear that many of you are trying to fix that by taking on the operational burden of managing data infrastructure, moving data around, and duplicating data to make it available to the right users in the right tools. So then, how do we begin to overcome these barriers before data can be actionable in real time using ML? Since our inception, Google has been focused on delivering highly personalized information that is highly trusted by billions of people around the world. Data is in our DNA. The same data infrastructure that's allowed us to innovate is available to you, and that is why we believe 
we can make this prediction a reality. Take, for example, our customer, Vodafone. As one of the world's largest telecommunication companies, Vodafone unified all their data so that thousands of their employees can innovate across 700 different use cases and 5,000 real-time data feeds. They now run AI development 80% faster, more cost-effective, all without compromising governance and reliability. So then, how can we help you achieve your own data infrastructure vision? The short answer is in three parts. First, you can't act on data unless you can see it and trust it. Today, we're announcing automatic cataloging of all your GCP data with business context in Dataplex. And you can integrate third-party sources, too. What this means is, is that you no longer need to spend days looking for the right data and instead can spend time working with it. But once you find your data, how do you know you can trust it? Have you ever been in a meeting where someone questions the validity of a single data point and then nobody can trust anything that's being presented from that point onward? That's why I'm particularly excited about the new data quality and lineage capabilities in Dataplex, bringing intelligence and automation to help you trust your data. Second, you can't act on data unless you can work with it. To innovate, you've got to be able to use the best tools for the job across all your data. Speaking of the best tools, I'm excited about BigQuery's new support for unstructured data. Now you can be sure that you can, your BigQuery skills will pay off across all your data, from structured to semi-structured to unstructured. It is also important to be able to use the best of open source tools. Last year, we introduced our serverless Spark offering. And today, we're announcing that you can run Spark directly from BigQuery with fully integrated experience and billing. But this is still just the beginning. We have a bold vision for our Spark offering to bring the Google infrastructure magic all without forking open source. Take, for example, MindMelt, the shuffle service powering BigQuery and Dataflow that helps deliver scale, reliability, and performance that you know and love with those services. That's coming to a Spark job soon. Lastly, you can't act on today's data tomorrow. We've heard from many of you that you struggle with making real-time, in-context experiences a reality for your own customers. Dataflow, our streaming analytics service, powers critical Google services, and we believe it can do the same for you. With Dataflow, you can use Apache Beam to build unified batch and real-time pipelines. You can start small while having the assurance that you can process real-time events at extreme scale if your application needs it. To summarize, when you can see the data, trust the data, and work with data as it's collected, we can see how 90% of data will be actionable in real time using ML and the incredible innovation that that will unleash. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Andy Goodmans. And I predict that by the end of 2025, the barriers between transactional and analytical workloads will disappear. Traditionally, data architectures have separated these mixed workloads, and for good reason. Fundamentally, their underlying databases are built differently. Transactional databases are optimized for fast reads and writes, while analytical databases are optimized for aggregating large data sets. Because these systems are largely decoupled, many of you are struggling to piece together different solutions to build intelligent data-driven apps. 
For instance, to provide personalized recommendations for e-commerce, apps need to support both transactional and analytical workloads on the same data set and without negatively impacting performance. At Google Cloud, we're uniquely positioned to solve this problem because of how we've architected our data platform. Our transactional and analytical databases are built on a highly scalable disaggregated compute and storage system and Google's high performance global network, allowing us to provide tightly integrated data services. And to help you unify your data across your apps, today I'm excited to tell you more about new capabilities we recently announced. First, data stream for BigQuery, which allows you to easily replicate data from transactional databases into BigQuery in real time. Next, database migration service, which provides a one-click migration from Postgres into AlloyDB for operational analytics. And lastly, we support Query Federation with Spanner, Cloud SQL, and Bigtable right from the BigQuery console to analyze data in transactional databases. But don't take my word for it. Let's see how some of these technologies remove barriers for our fictitious company, Symbol Bank. Symbol wanted to integrate their core banking features in their app with market data to provide personalized, real-time investment dashboards. The problem was their app's backend was optimized for transactional workloads. So how do they maintain the responsiveness of their app while ad adding analytical goodness? Symbol Bank chose Google Cloud's new fully managed Postgres compatible database, AlloyDB, offering the capability to analyze transactional data in real time. Now, migrating all their existing data with minimal downtime felt like a big lift for the Symbol engineers. But it turns out that database migration service makes this simple. And I'll walk you through just how easy it is. Database migration service lets you migrate from Postgres to AlloyDB with continuous replication, minimizing downtime. Once we define where we're migrating from and what we're moving our data into, we can see the prerequisites for the migration directly in, our, in your UI. Sources are defined using profiles which contain host, username, and password, and you can predefine them like I've done here for Symbol's Postgres instance. Here we define our destination and some basic configuration options, and then we get to hit Create. This part will take a few minutes, so I've sped up time a little bit. Once it finishes, a quick test to ensure that it will all work, and then hit Create and Start. Once the initial dump is finished, we're now in a state where we have both the old and new database populated with our live data continuously replicating from old to new. And that means we can do cool stuff like testing the performance of our new investment features against both the existing production Postgres database and the new AlloyDB database side by side. Since AlloyDB is fully compatible with Postgres, you don't have to make any application changes. And as you can see, we're getting much better performance out of the new AlloyDB backend. AlloyDB is four times faster for transactional workloads and up to 100 times faster for analytical queries compared to standard Postgres, making it the perfect database for these kind of hybrid workloads. We all want to act on data in real time without the toil of infrastructure assembly and operations. We've given you a taste of how Google Cloud makes it easier for you to build data-driven apps on a unified platform. And this is why I predict that by the end of 2025, the barriers between transactional and analytical workloads will disappear. Thanks. My name is Amin Vadat, and my prediction is by the end of 2025, over half of cloud infrastructure decisions will be automated based on an organization's usage patterns to meet performance and reliability needs. At Google, we believe the work we do today with our partners will define the next generation of infrastructure for the world. While some people look at infrastructure as a commodity, we see it as a source of inspiration. This inspiration comes from delivering capabilities not available anywhere else and pulling in the future by operating at a level of reliability and scale that might otherwise seem unimaginable. 
Our infrastructure is designed with the scale-out capability needed to support billions of users who use services like Search, YouTube, Gmail, and our cloud services each and every day. We pioneered the model of entire buildings operating as a single computing and storage system. And with Spanner, we showed how services could run reliably at scale across the planet. And we've experienced network innovations like Google Global Cache, B4, and Jupyter, shortening distances across the planet. This gave us the opportunity to reimagine what was possible from infrastructure in terms of scale and capability. Look at the world around us. The time for disruptive innovation has never been more profound. We're seeing incredible demand on the industry's infrastructure, yet simultaneous plateaus in efficiency. You and your companies continue to push the boundaries of what infrastructure can provide. Yet the burden of picking the just right combination of components continues to fall on you. To address this, we've engineered golden paths from silicon to the console. These paths combine purpose-built infrastructure, prescriptive architectures, and an ecosystem to deliver workload-optimized, ultra-reliable infrastructure. So let's talk about the investments we're making in infrastructure at Google in power and performance to make all of this possible. We partnered with Intel to co-design and build custom silicon like this little thing. This is called an Infrastructure Processing Unit, or IPU, and it gives you massive performance and scalability to power high-performance, data-intensive apps. These IPUs are at the heart of our new C3 VMs. C3s include the latest generation Intel Sapphire Rapids processor and custom-designed offload based on the IPU that delivers 200 gigabit per second low-latency networking. And coupled with our new block storage, Hyperdisk, they can provide incredible storage performance. Now, let me show you something else. From the, big to the, from the small to the big, meet the hardware behind the new Tensor Processing Unit, the TPU v4 platform. It's likely the world's fastest, largest, and most efficient machine learning supercomputer. This liquid-cooled board is a beast in both power and performance density. You see these pipes running across it, running chilled water over the board. They're there to ensure you extract the highest level of efficiency from this hardware. It allows secure, isolated access, and is at the cutting edge of services like natural language understanding, recommender systems, and image processing. The TPU makes large-scale training workloads up to 80% faster and up to 50% cheaper compared to alternatives. When you talk about nearly doubling performance for half the cost, you unlock your imagination in terms of what just might be possible. The same IPUs and TPUs that power your services are the foundation that will enable us to automate over half of cloud infrastructure decisions in the next couple of years. They will support the telemetry data and ML-based analytics to proactively recommend the best infrastructure. It will be based on an understanding of how infrastructure balance points correspond to performance and reliability for your individual workloads. We don't think that you should have to think about hardware specifications. That is last generation cloud thinking. You will specify a workload and will quickly recommend, configure, and place the best option for you based on your price, performance, and scale needs. We know that these automated, Adaptive decisions deliver lower cost, more performance, and higher reliability than any handcrafted solution. So is my prediction that over half of cloud infrastructure decisions will be automated based on an organization's usage pattern correct? Honestly, I think it's going to be much higher than that. It has to be in order to keep up with all the advancements you're making in technology. The burden and complexity of infrastructure decision making you have today will disappear through the power of AI and ML automation. And when you have freedom to focus on your solution delivery, the rate of innovation and customer benefits will only accelerate. While cloud has been transformative, we are still at the early stages. We're excited to continue to make the unimaginable possible and the possible easy. Thank you. My name is Teron Giannini, and my prediction is that by the end of 2025, three out of four developers will lead with sustainability as their primary development principle. For the longest time, the focus was elsewhere. We needed to build it fast, build it securely, build it as simply as possible, build it at the lowest cost, build it reliably. Well, now 
it's also time to build it sustainably. We can't ignore the urgency required from all of us to meet climate targets. And while organizations are moving in the right direction, they struggle to take action. 65% of IT executives said they want to improve their sustainability efforts, but don't know how to do it. 36% of them said they didn't even have the measurement tools in place to track sustainability progress. So, how can we help them out? We can give them better data about the environmental footprint of their business. So today, I am excited to announce that Google Cloud Carbon Footprint, which helps you measure, report, and reduce your cloud carbon emissions, is now generally available. Let's take a look. Right from the Cloud Console, you can access the Carbon Footprint dashboard of your account. The underlying methodology is quite unique and is based on actual measurements of the energy used by machines in our data centers. It is also the complete picture of your emissions. Not only um, emissions coming from electricity production, but also on-site fossil fuel emissions and other embodied emissions coming from data center hardware. This is also known as scopes 1, 2 and 3. And of course, you can break down the data by Google Cloud Project, Google Cloud Region and Google Cloud Product. With a simple click, you can export your cloud emissions data to BigQuery for further analysis and to provide your sustainability teams with the data they need to report on your company's emissions. We also want to help you build new applications that emit less carbon by making the right choice at the right time. Let's say you want to deploy a new application to the US West Coast. From a latency perspective, all of these options are very similar. Without more info, you might have picked Las Vegas, which happens to have a relatively carbon-intense electricity grid. But up in Oregon, you'd find a very clean grid, full of hydropower and therefore low carbon intensity. That is why it is indicated as a low carbon region. In fact, a simple choice of, a, of Oregon over Las Vegas can reduce your gross electricity emissions of running that app by about 80%. And with this move, you not only saved carbon, you also saved money, since a Compute Engine VM is cheaper in Oregon. A move that can help you save money and carbon is easy to make. When we tested this feature, we noticed new users were 50% more likely to choose a low carbon region when they saw the icon. And that can make a very big difference. So, how do we make it easy to identify more opportunities to lower your carbon emissions and deliver those options at scale? Well, Active Assist now shares recommendations to remove idle resources and their associated emissions. Actually, all of the sustainability features I just showed you today are embedded into Google Cloud Console and documentation. They are available out of the box at no charge and for all developers. Sustainability is too important to be complicated. Before I go, here are two things to remember. One, moving to Google Cloud gives you the efficiency gains and energy benefits to reduce your emissions. Two, when you build on the cloud, pick the region with the lowest carbon impact for your application. Because these tools are available, I believe that by 2025, three out of four developers will lead with sustainability as their primary development principle. Thank you. Hey everybody, I don't know why I did jazz hands. Let's play with that weird energy though.
together here today. Let's go. Good. So hi, my name is Richard Siroder. My prediction for you today is that by the end of 2025, over half of all organizations using public cloud will actually going to freely switch their primary cloud as a result of all these new multi-cloud capabilities available. So quick story, I recently moved from the Seattle area to San Diego after a vacation this year with my family. We realized we needed something different. So bought a house in San Diego before I finally sold the house in Washington. And for a weird time there, I was multi-house. And that was not good. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't my desired end state, but that's okay. Sometimes you're in these multi-situations while you transfer from one state to another. And that's related to my prediction here. I think in the years ahead, we're going to see companies use a multi-cloud strategy not just as a way to hedge their bets, but as a way to actually switch from their first cloud to their next cloud. So research data shows that the majority of companies are actually multi-cloud today, meaning they use more than one hyperscale cloud. Sounds probably pretty familiar to most of you. I'm personally talking to more and more companies, though, that are using multi-cloud technologies as a way not to shift their, just their workloads, but their mind share to the different cloud as well. So let's see what that journey might look like. What would that look like? Let's look at like three different steps. We'll do some live demos. What can go wrong? So first, that first part of the journey is how do we meet you where you are today with what you got? You probably use another cloud. That's totally cool. Nobody's perfect. But here at Google Cloud, we've made some unique investments in a multi-cloud management plane that works with your compute and your data, even if it's on other clouds. So in this first step, you're starting to use Google Cloud, but you want to incorporate existing investments in other ones. So consistency matters a ton here, and Anthos plays a huge part. Let's see how. So first off, if you'll see here, I actually have an EKS cluster I built, and I've actually attached this to the Anthos control plane. From here, I can manage the cluster, I can view workloads, I can deploy things, I can troubleshoot, I can apply common policies. And even with our recent partnership and collaboration with the Crossplane project, I can actually create and manage GKE clusters, AKS clusters, EKS clusters, provision and manage them all the same way from Google Cloud, which is pretty cool. Now, what do you do with your data? We talked about compute. If I think about my data, how do I analyze all this? We know that data transfer costs are real. Consolidation isn't always the right option. And so for financial, strategic, or even policy reasons, your organization might need data in different clouds. It's OK. So with BigQuery Omni, I can actually have my data lake in Amazon S3 or here in my Azure storage account. And I don't have to move the data to actually run my queries against it in BigQuery. I can actually analyze it where it resides without moving the data. So this is one of many Google Cloud services that actually work wherever you are, whether they run across clouds or actually integrate with the different clouds. It's a big deal. So that's a starter phase, right? I'm building skills. I'm moving, you know, kind of comfort in this new home I have. But I haven't moved really anything. So some of you might think this is where you stop, right? Multi-cloud is just use a bunch of clouds. But I don't think so. I think many are going a step further. So in the second stage, you start upgrading your tech where it is and growing your adoption of that secondary cloud. So step two, as I start using Google Cloud services, let's say things like GKE, which are awesome, I want to use it even more and more. So I might introduce things like Anthos clusters to Azure and AWS. This is the GKE API and GKE software running across clouds, which is amazing. And just now, we just shipped the capability where I can even upgrade those clusters in place on another cloud from the Google Cloud Console. That's awesome. I don't have to jump all over the place to run all my infrastructure. Now here, you might also start creating a multi-cloud mesh and say, look, I want to actually maintain services that run across clusters in different clouds. In this particular mesh, my web app is spread across GKE, EKS clusters, all of these different places. I'm actually able to manage those services and see them and connect them wherever they are. Now let's talk about data. At this point in the game, you might use our great service data stream to redirect your existing Aurora cluster in AWS from Redshift. Maybe you want to steer it to BigQuery instead. And I actually built a stream that connects from my Aurora database and feeds the data in real time to BigQuery. Pretty awesome stuff. So use data stream to move data around as well. So that's cool. So for some, multi-cloud is a bit of a phase. It's not a permanent state. You're not trying to get there. Your final stage could be a full-on migration to your new primary cloud. So once you've invested in Google Cloud, you might start taking advantage of really awesome stuff like GKE Autopilot. This is a fully managed Kubernetes environment where we are running the whole thing. You don't want manage clusters. You just deal with your workloads. It's awesome and exclusive to Google Cloud. Now, what's really cool is you may also continue to use Anthos on Google Cloud to manage all of your fleets of GKE clusters in all of our regions around the world. I'm showing you some new dashboards here that are coming out. And this actually, actually lets me manage not just my GKE clusters, but I'm managing on-prem, bare metal, VMware, 
edge, doesn't matter. I'm getting a view of my entire fleet and managing that. So now you get things like BigQuery for analytics, you're in Google Cloud, Spanner for distributed data, AI ML for amazing insights, all these unique developer tools and more. So look, if you forget everything else that I've talked about here today, remember that Google Cloud has a really unique management plane that meets you where you are, but honestly takes you further. So this is why I believe over half of companies using public cloud today will freely switch their primary provider in the coming years as a result of all these great multi-cloud capabilities. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Jana Mandic, and my prediction is that by the end of 2025, over half of all business applications will be built by users who do not identify as professional developers today. One of the most interesting opportunities as organizations evolve is that we will continue to see more development work in the enterprise taken up by teams and individuals outside of central IT. The adoption of no-code and low-code tools will unlock this potential by making the development process easier for more users. How many times have you been asked to do something but you had to say no because your roadmap or feature request list were already way too long? Well, with these tools, those business users you had to say no to can instead create apps and workflow automations themselves with no programming skills required. These no-code and low-code apps will be built collaboratively with developers like you who will provide the guardrails to keep the business secure while enabling business users to deliver their own solutions. And I'm not alone in thinking this prediction will come true. Leading tech analyst Gartner forecasts that by 2025, 70% of new applications developed by organizations will use low-code or no-code technologies. That's up from less than 25% in 2020. Organizations are getting ready for this change, and our customers are already moving in this direction. Globe Telecom, a major telco out of the Philippines, reduced targeted business process turnaround time by 80% through experiences built by their citizen developers. And now, it's demo time. Let me show you how Google Workspace's app sheet is making all this possible today and in the future. Now, I'm going to be Anne Gray, a business analyst, trying to help my team save time managing request approvals. Currently, the process is manual and disorganized, spread across ad hoc emails and chat messages. So to fix that, First, I'm going to build a no-code request approval app, and then I'll show you how my team and I can use this app to efficiently manage our development workflow, our approval workflow. With AppSheet, I have a single place to store my data and build my apps. I can also connect to other easy-to-use data sources like Sheets, or with the help of IT, I could connect to CloudDBs. Let me show you the solution that I could build as a business user. Here's my database. AppSheet helps me structure my data and prep it for app building. When I'm ready, I can create a new application with a single click. This creates a prototype app that will be usable on any desktop or mobile device. After some customization, here's what I've built. I have a new request view for users to make requests and an approval view for approvers to do their thing. Each of these views is available to me in mobile apps and desktop apps by default, and I can also configure them to show up in Gmail and chat, meeting my users where they are. Here is my Google Chat app. With this, my users can make requests directly from their team chat space, and it's reusing the same request view I configured earlier. Here's my automation that will send the approval view to the approvers in email. When I'm happy with my app, I can share it with my users, and I can add it to my chat spaces. Throughout this whole process, everything I created is controlled by governing policies set by the company's workspace admin. For example, here's what happens if I try to share the app outside of my domain. AppSheet blocks me and keeps company data secure. This allows IT to do two things. One, keep a clear line of sight on all apps so they can deprecate, update, and retire them when necessary, and two, restrict access to only those users who need it. Now let me show you how my colleague Jeffrey and I can use this app to manage our request and approval workflow. 
I'll be Jeffrey now. I'm on Anne's team, and I have a request to make. Let me ask Anne how to use her new app. She's added the bot to the space, and now I can quickly submit my reimbursement request. Okay, now I'll be Anne again. I got this email for Jeffrey's request. I can review and approve it directly from here, and if I have a pile of requests to review, I don't have to click through individual emails. I can pop into the app and see everything in one place. This app is accessible to all the users, requesters and approvers. With simple sheets-like expressions, it's configured so the requesters see only their own requests and approvers see all the information that they need. You saw just how easy we are making it for non-technical users to create business applications that meet their immediate needs. With no code and low code, you and your business users now have more tools to work with. This is why I believe that over half of all business apps will be built by users who don't identify as professional developers today. Thank you. Well, folks, that's a wrap on our predictions. We're excited about the conversations this will start and continue with all of you. Remember, if you want to share your own prediction, use the hashtag Google Cloud Predictions to tell us all about it. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you for your continued inspiration and for partnering with us to build what's next. So, are you ready? Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, everyone. Please welcome Google Cloud's Head of Developer Communities, Ashley Willis. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here for as long as you have. I'm sure you were right. Like, I'm ready to go. Uh, my name is Ashley Willis. I'm Head of Developer Communities at Google Cloud. I'm also a wife and mother to three beautiful kids some of whom are watching today, thanks for watching. And today I'd like to talk about something a little bit different than my colleagues have been on stage. It's something that affects all of us in one way or another, and that thing is burnout. Needless to say, I am not a doctor. I cannot diagnose any of you with burnout, but I have experienced this numerous times over my career at careers, but we're gonna talk more about that later. Um, Today's talk will focus on why I think burnout exists, some of the ways that you can identify it, and for the managers in the room, I'm going to, keep, I'm going to give you some tips to keep you from burning your people out. But first, I think it's helpful to start with a definition of burnout. Burnout can be really difficult to describe because it's not necessarily one medical condition in itself. But according to the APA Dictionary of Psychology, burnout is defined as physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion accompanied by decreased motivation, lowered performance, and negative attitudes towards oneself and others. Is any of this starting to sound a little bit too familiar? Yes, good. 
So be honest, this is a very safe space. This is a small room. How many of you have experienced burnout? Yes. The good and bad news is that you are not alone. Employee well-being is a new workplace imperative, and we are hearing our managers talk a lot about employee morale, how, what can we do for people, and the term quiet quitting is kind of setting the internet on fire. <laughs> so a recent Gallup study cited that about 74% of workers have experienced burnout on the job, and 40% said that they experienced it specifically during the pandemic. And I don't know about you, but I found those numbers to be shocking. And because it's so hard to recover from burnout, people will sometimes leave entire industries trying to escape it. For example, I used to be a commercial photographer, a software engineer, and as you may have noticed by my slides, I was also a graphic designer, or still am. An Ashley of all trades, if you will. So I ran a consulting business for about 10 years. My business was actually doing well, it was thriving. But I had burnt out so bad that I decided to do something completely new, learn a completely new skill in my 30s, and then I entered the corporate world again, and here I am. So why are we like this? I think that there are a few things that factor into burnout, but the one that I'd like to talk about today is status. A status symbol used to be a nice car or a fancy watch, or maybe you live in a really nice house, but the point is that status was visible to the world. And now, I think status is about being busy. We're keeping up with the Joneses, along with a fancy car or a nice watch. I see you all pre-ordering your Teslas. <laughs> so imagine for a moment that somebody's like, hey, how are you doing? The normal answer is, oh man, I'm really busy, or I'm really tired, because we are overscheduled. We even overschedule our kids. Our vacations are scheduled, all of it. If your calendar isn't filled with back-to-backs, are you even important? <laughs> if, you, if you are not sharing a selfie at that tourist trap, did you even vacation? By the way, this is Hootie the Owl, and if you are looking for a good owl cafe in Tokyo, hit me up, I know where to, take, to send you. <laughs> Which brings me to social media. So social media is involved in every aspect of our daily lives. We are more online than ever, and we are constantly sharing the highlight reels. But it's not enough just to be on social media anymore. We all want to be influencers. We want all of the likes and all of the engagement. We really need that attention. And so we're trying to keep up with our peers, and we've prioritized this public perception over our own mental health. And through social psychology, we actually know that this negatively increases the frequency of our own self-evaluation of our appearance, our health, and even our jobs. I like to say that every like equals one serotonin, and that might not be too far from the truth, because my little heart flutters every time I see a notification. I'm like, yes, more likes. So it's kind of like that 1985 Oscar speech from Sally Fields where she's like, you like me, you really like me. So that's normal, though. We require connection. And in fact, connection is known to reduce anxiety, stress, and depression. Socializing helps us learn to navigate and cope with life's challenges and can boost our self-esteem. And it also helps us avoid loneliness. So in a lot of ways, social media helps us create those connections. But the life that we lead on social media is an idealized version of ourselves. We are not connecting authentically. So it's no wonder we're all stressed out. We're constantly trying to keep up we're constantly doom scrolling, and we're constantly available. If I don't answer that call or that text, will they think I'm lazy or unreliable? What if they reach out to somebody instead? How can I be the hero in this situation? Which leads to what I like to call the hero syndrome. The addiction to being a hero is no different than any other addiction. As a hero, you spend most of the time trying to save the day and not enough time sharing knowledge with other people. That lack of knowledge transfer can cause many single points of failure across your business, also known as the lotto factor. Take Jane, for example, who works as a software engineer at a fast-growing startup. If Jane wins a lotto tomorrow, she is not coming to work. So who can pick up Jane's workload when she doesn't show up? Because no matter hardworking or heroic Jane might be, she will ultimately burn herself out. Nobody can keep up that pace forever. So do not be a hero is the lesson you should learn from that. 
So how long do you think it takes to recover from burnout? A month? Six weeks? All of you are wrong. The answer is going to surprise you because it surprised me. On average, it takes two years to recover from burnout. That's right. Which makes sense because it probably took you just as long to get there in the first place. <laughs> burnout does not happen over a single project. It's caused by repetitive stress and lack of work-life balance over several years. The trouble is that by the time you feel like you're burnt out, you're probably already there. And that's why taking your vacation does not always help. Vacation should be proactive instead of reactive. So now that we've talked about some of the reasons why I think burnout exists, let's talk about what the burnout cycle looks like. There are seven phases here, and I'm going to take you through those now. So phase one is the honeymoon phase. I am really excited about this. I'm happy, I'm committed, I'm energetic. And this is especially true when we've started a new job. We're solving hard problems and we have this compulsion to prove ourselves, that's normal. Your productivity uh, levels are at an all time high, it's great. Phase two is the onset of stress. This phase begins with an awareness that some days are more difficult than others, and you find that you're just not as optimistic as you once were. The more, and you're more tired than normal, like up, like sleepy all day and then up all night thinking about work. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Yes? Phase three is neglecting yourself. By this point, some people are postponing self-care just to get the job done, and nobody likes pepperoni on their keyboard. Maybe you're ordering takeout because you don't have enough time to cook a healthy meal. I uh, spend way too much money on DoorDash. Or maybe you're just dunking your kids' dino nuggets and ketchup and sadness. <laughs> Another example might be you canceling plans because you just cannot enjoy a night out with that looming workload. It's terrible. Maybe you're engaging in really unhealthy coping mechanisms like drinking too much just to get your mind to stop racing. Phase four is interpersonal problems at home and at work. And that's my kid who I'm completely ignoring. And so is your family checking in a lot? Is the vibe just generally off? There's a tension and you can't really put your finger on it, but work is really stressful. And that's starting to bleed into your home life. You're snapping at your kids, you're canceling plans, the things that you used to love just aren't as much fun anymore. Does it sound a little bit like depression? That's probably because burnout is often diagnosed as depression. When we reach this phase, we're just not present anymore. And I don't know about you, but I feel like a bad partner, a bad coworker, a bad parent. It feels like I'm feeling everyone, so why bother trying? Phase five is re reduce performance and cognitive problems. <laughs> That's right. That's me just scrolling through TikTok. So, <laughs> burnout and chronic stress is actually known to interfere with your ability to pay attention and concentrate. Distracted breaks become much longer and you just can't seem to concentrate no matter hard, how hard you try. And when we're stressed, our attention narrows and even small tasks become a huge burden. So, there I am again, spending my afternoon on TikTok because I know I have a lot of work to do, I just don't know how to do it. So, phase six. I cannot get excited about work anymore. By this point, I'm done, I'm three cups of coffee in, uh, we're, we're done. But now I'm feeling a little bit cynical about my working conditions and even my coworkers. I can't seem to get ahead no, how, no matter how hard I try, and the workload is so big that I don't even know how to ask for help at this point. Phase seven is physical symptoms. So experts know that chronic stress can create real health problems like digestive issues, heart disease, and depression. And according to an ITA group study, employees who say that they burned out are 23% more likely to visit an emergency room. When you're tired all day and thinking about work all night, of course that's going to trigger something physical. And phase eight is total burnout. And here you can see my soul departing to the great work stream in the sky. <laughs> It's at this point that I just do not trust myself anymore and I doubt whether or not I'm even qualified for my job. By now I feel like the only way to recover is to find a new job. And spoiler alert, that's not going to help you either. That is merely a band-aid for a much larger problem. 
And this isn't necessarily a phase, but as a developer, I thought that this was a really cool visual <laughs> of burnout. You can see that really strong commit history in those first two years. And this is from Johnny Holloman on Twitter. He's great, but he said that what got him there was five years working day and night on his own app. So you can see by years three and four, that's total burnout. He's done. He's not committing anymore. He's done. And there have been some studies that talk about open source and burnout. And for anyone that's contributing to open source, if you're not doing it as part of your job, developers say that it gives them energy, which makes a lot of sense. But if you're like Johnny and you're trying to get paid through open source, it's really hard to say no, and it can lead to burnout. So we'll talk about boundary setting a little bit later. I think that that's really important. But if you're feeling any of this, here's the good news. There really are things that you can do about it. And I found that some of the things I'm going to list in a minute were really helpful. So here are seven tips to help you avoid burnout. The first one is to get clarity. A Gallup study cited that actually only half of workers know what's expected of them. Think about that for a moment. Do you know what's expected of you? Raise your hands if you do. I see you here, yes. <laughs> All workers though, regardless of age or stage in their career, want to know what's expected of them. And those lack of clear expectations will create anxiety and frustration. Even if, even if your employees feel energized, those who lack clear expectations and spend too much time working on the wrong things can't create value for their organization and they will exhaust themselves trying to figure out what it is that they are supposed to be doing. Number two is to stop multitasking. You're not good at it, I promise, you're really not. <laughs> multitasking actually reduces your productivity because your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. The more we multi multitask, the less we achieve and learn. It's because we divide our attention and don't allow enough time and space to do deeper processing and learning. This continued context, context switching definitely leads to burnout. So if you're at capacity and your manager asks you to do one more thing, ask your manager to help you prioritize your to-do list. What is something that you can drop to take on this new thing? The short answer is that it cannot be the baby. We cannot drop the baby. <laughs> Number three is to set healthy boundaries. Listen, we cannot be mad at our managers for asking us what we can handle. We are all adults here, and your manager expects you to know and communicate your limits. Saying no helps you and your coworkers. Your entire organization actually benefits from you setting healthy boundaries, because when you burn out from being a hero, who has to pick up your workload? Likely your peers. Burnout is contagious. It creates both upstream and downstream implications for everyone involved. Number four is to take control of your notifications. Every time your phone buzzes, you get that shot of dopamine, but your body is tensing and reacting. It's spending energy needlessly. Unless you're on pager duty, there is nothing that cannot wait until tomorrow. Number five is to find something outside of work that you're passionate about. This is me nicely asking you to get a hobby. Please, all of you get a hobby. <laughs> Something that's challenging and engaging because research shows that if people with hobbies are less likely to suffer from stress and depression. When you stake your entire self-worth on your job, you become less resilient to things like layoffs or negative performance reviews. It also makes it really hard to switch off after work. Number six is to have a clear separation between home and work. Is the Roomba cat landing? That's my favorite part. <laughs> So I understand that having a dedicated workspace is not a privilege that everyone has. But where you work plays a huge role in your productivity. If you work in front of the TV, you're basically setting yourself up for an unplanned Netflix marathon. Speaking of, has everyone seen season four of Stranger Things? It's great, I highly recommend it. But the point is that having a dedicated space for work that's a healthy distance from your relaxing and eating spaces will create that separation from home and work, which is very important for healthy work-life balance. Number seven is to get enough sleep. Sleep deprivation and burnout actually go hand in hand. In fact, the National Sleep Foundation says that sleeping less than six hours a night is one of the best predictors of on-the-job burnout. 
Most of us have an awareness that sleeping better will help us perform better at work, but a lot of us have a hard time putting that into practice. And you're not alone because the National Sleep Foundation did a poll in 2018 that showed only 10% of American adults actually prioritize their sleep. And I have also found that 0% of children prioritize their parents' sleep. So you might as well get it while you can. So now that I've given you some tips to help you identify and avoid burnout as an individual, I'd like to dedicate some time to helping the managers in the room. This is arguably the most important section of my presentation because I believe that poor management is directly responsible for burnout. A Harvard Business Review survey revealed that 58% of people trust a stranger more than their own boss. And employees who feel strongly supported by their managers are 70% less likely to burn out. So here are some tips for you managers. Be clear about your expectations. I made this comic as a joke, but you're in a one-on-one, -on -one, and your manager's like, hey, what's the status of that thing? And you're like, I didn't even know about that thing. Those are the unspoken objectives. And I am totally nailing them, always. So how many of you here have experienced this? Yes, there are some hands that should be up, I know it. But as a manager, it is your job to remove this guesswork that creates anxiety. Make sure that you are communicating early and often. And repeat yourself until you're sick of hearing it, because the average person needs to hear something seven times before they act on it. Seven times. Side note, this is also a great tip for when you need to get laundry or dishes done. Yeah, seven times to your kids, for those of you. Okay. Number two is to help them understand their value. Why is meaning and purpose? It's there to guide you and your employees through the day to day and when your employees know why they're doing something, they're more enthusiastic and dedicated. Everyone wants to know that what they're doing is meaningful, otherwise what's the point? Three, enforce reasonable work hours. And that doesn't always mean nine to five. My working hours might not be your working hours, but if a project is taking someone 80 hours a week to complete, then as a manager, I have a resource problem that I need to solve. Number four, try not to send email or messages after work. There's that uh, schedule button in your email. We should use that. use that. Do not underestimate the influence you have on your team. People will feel obligated to respond to you even if you tell them that they do not have to. I see some of you in your signature line. You're like, do you only respond on your own time, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter what you say, it only matters what you do. Number five, encourage people to take all of their vacation time and you take yours as well. You need to model the behavior that you want to see. And many people don't take vacation because they have anxiety about the workload that they will have when they return. So as a manager, meet with your people and see what you can remove from their plate so that they can relax while they're out. Number six, have regular one-on-ones and actively listen. Do they sound stressed out or overworked? Can you take something off of their plate? If you're taking notes during the one-on-one, -on -one, you are not actively listening. Remember what I said about multitasking? You're not good at it. So I suggest that you recap at the end by saying what I heard was, and then repeat back what you heard and send an email recap after the meeting. Number seven, do not only recognize the big wins. We do this a lot. Our jobs are mainly a combination of small wins, and us managers have a tendency to only recognize the big ones. So people crave recognition. Show them that you appreciate them early and often, otherwise they're going to kill themselves trying to figure out how they're supposed to gain your approval. And you will unintentionally create a bunch of competing heroes. So this next section is q and I've done this talk a couple of times, and I have, I have three questions here that I get asked the most. The first one is, I heard you say that it can take two years to recover from burnout, but I don't have two years. So I did consult a professional about this talk in general, but specifically this question, and my friend Lindsay Paoli is a licensed therapist and founder of the Mind Fundamentals, and she says that we often believe that this is an all or nothing thing, and it's not. If you start incorporating small things like movement, intention, deep connections, fresh air, go touch some grass, uh, so you'll start to see results. So she suggests you start layering these things into your day every single day while mindfully knowing why you're doing it. Like, hey, I'm feeling burnt out. These are the things I'm doing very intentionally. And then you will start to see results towards recovery. 
Question two is, I have a friend who's burnt out, how do I help them? We have a tendency to want to solve our friend's problems. Don't do that, just listen. If they've never heard of burnout before, maybe you can forward them some articles and then suggest that they talk to a professional or maybe send them this talk. <laughs> Number three is how do I restore work-life balance? Remember when I said you need to hear something seven times, so this is number two. Back to question number one. Go outside, touch grass, move your body, um, talk to your friends, stop canceling your plans, figure out who on your team can help you with your workload, have an honest conversation with your manager. Your manager really does want you to succeed. Something that I did though, was I turned my entire garage into a maker space. I like to build things, so I put a 3D printer out there. I have a Glowforge, I have all of my soldering stuff, and these are some of the, the things that I've done recently. It's a lot of fun, highly recommend hacking on things. I'm gonna add some lights to something here. Um, but in closing, get a hobby, but also, if your family is telling you like, hey, something's off, you need to slow down, those are the people that know you best and they want the best for you. Listen to them, take a moment, take a breath. We are all in this together and I hope that everything that I've said here has helped you in some way. I will be mingling around here. I'm happy to talk about this at length. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, and I'm the founder of Big Chicken. So you gotta do that at the end when you say Big Chicken. Big Chicken is Shaquille O'Neal's emerging fast casual restaurant chain that focuses on big fun, big flavor, and big food. When you're trying to build a national chain, communication is so critical. To do that, you need a great partner. And we're really lucky that partner is Google Workspace. You know, Josh, every time he does a presentation, he just loves Google Slides. As the person responsible for our marketing, probably the best at Google Slides. His presentation is like I'm at a movie sometime. I'm just sitting there going. I've got some great new chicken sandwiches for you to try. Brand new recipes. <laughs> Isn't there something important we're supposed to be talking about? Good recipe development comes with collaboration. Using docs in Google Workspace gives us the tools we need to collaborate together. Shaquille's life gets crazy busy, as does our entire board. When you want to talk to me, make sure you put on my Google Calendar. Google Calendar is my girlfriend. I don't know anything I'm doing unless I talk to my woman. Google Workspace, productivity and collaboration tools for all the ways you work. Google products provide the information you need when you need it. But why can't you get the same kind of answers for your business? Looker, Google Cloud's business intelligence solution is here to solve that problem, enabling you to go beyond traditional dashboards and make your organization's information accessible and useful. Bringing this innovation to business will be revolutionary, just like navigating a city after Google Maps. Looker is Google for your business data. Here's what we mean. What if Google AI were built into the tools you use to store and analyze data at work? Google's Vertex AI Vision takes data like video, images, and audio, and in real time, turns it into structured data, ready for business intelligence. Going beyond the dashboard means using Google Glass Enterprise to see insights and recommendations based on your data in real time. More access, more transparency. Now that's Google for your business. With Google Maps, you know if a restaurant is busy before you go, or you can get rerouted around a traffic jam. Looker will help you connect similar dots in a predictive way. A concert in five days will increase foot traffic by 65%. Would you like to adjust staffing and inventory? Yes. Looker and AI lets you respond to changes in demand and turn insights into action. Foot traffic continues to be busy. Encourage customers to visit an alternate shop with a reward card? Yes. Smarter insights mean better experiences and happy customers. So go beyond the dashboard and transform the way you do business with Looker, powered by Google Cloud. We started with the Exponential Roadmaps goal, zero carbon emissions by 2050. Where our emissions primarily stem from? Device, CDN, networking, and cloud. Our goal is actually to get to zero emissions by 2030. Backstage was built internally at Spotify, so it unifies your tooling, your services, 
docs, and apps under a unified, consistent UI. We donated it to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Amazing to see how many people at Spotify actually care deeply about this topic. Cloud Carbon Footprint is actually an open source tool developed by ThoughtWorks. The only thing that's limiting us right now is just people hearing about it. It leverages cloud APIs to provide visualizations of estimated carbon emissions. We leverage Bigtable, GKE. It starts not just from the cloud, but it goes all the way out to our end user devices. We want to empower not just Spotify internally, but the broader developer community to reduce their carbon footprint. Google's infrastructure powers services for billions of people. And then Google Cloud takes those lessons from running these services in order to deliver an innovative and easy to use cloud infrastructure. Today, Google Cloud helps users automate the life cycle of their workloads. In the future, we'll use AI to understand workload patterns and do this automatically. Intelligently optimizing for higher performance with lower latency, cost, and power consumption. Today, we optimize our infrastructure for AI ML and your data, ensuring that it is accessible anywhere. But we're not stopping there. Chiplets are a new design and manufacturing process that brings open source agility to the world of silicon by using a building block approach. Custom chips for a vast range of configurations. Sustainability is important to us because our planet depends on it. And we will operate on 24 seven carbon-free energy by 2030. Every email you send through Gmail or every question you ask search and every virtual machine you spin up across our cloud will be supplied by carbon-free energy every hour of every day. We are reinventing infrastructure where AI-based automation will recommend the most efficient design for your workloads based on your usage. And we'll run them on Google's unique infrastructure optimized specifically for you. All of this delivered on the cleanest public cloud in the world. This is our next. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Welcome to the Customer Innovation Series, where you're about to see six unique stories of transformation. Your peers from around the globe will talk about their challenges, share how they solved them, and offer lessons learned. Let's kick off the series with a Google Cloud Partner customer story from Atos Maven Wave, featuring Jason Sharples, Chief Technology Officer of Global Payments. Jason shares how they improved employee collaboration with Google Workspace and began their journey of migrating core applications from on-premise data centers to the cloud. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's probably dear to many of you, how to get your increasingly distributed teams to work better together, how to create order from the disparate systems that come with mergers, acquisitions, and changing procurement policies over generations of tech. How to start working faster, more flexibly, and more securely. These are all things we've accomplished at Global Payments over the past few years, working with Google Cloud and their consulting partner, Atos Maven Wave. Even if you haven't heard of Global Payments, you've encountered us. Among other things, we are one of the world's largest payments technology companies serving 4 million merchants and thousands of financial institutions. Our merchant solution segment 
provides customized software and services to help merchants run their businesses from front of house to the back of the house. Our issues solution segment provides technology products and processing services to large financial institutions, fintechs, neobanks, startups, and retailers who issue credit cards. It also offers B2B payment solutions. Today, we are far ahead of our competitors from a technology perspective. As just one example, we are already a top quartile SaaS company with even more ambitious goals. As you can imagine, we've acquired a lot of companies over the years as we've grown, each with their own technology stacks, communications and productivity systems. We've seen and adopted several generations of communications and collaboration tech ourselves. So in 2016, we decided we would develop a single reliable, cutting edge productivity platform that could empower and strengthen every employee and team, speeding our customer responsiveness and boosting innovation. We chose Google Workspace and Atos Mavenwave to make this a reality. We chose Google for their products like Anywhere, Anytime Chromebooks, real-time collaboration on Docs and Sheets, brainstorming across continents in real time on Jamboards, and tools like Chat and Meet that enable us to work together to deliver for customers in real time. To give you just one example, before Google, a business leader spilled a can of soda on their laptop, losing three years of data and requiring a month to get back up to speed. With a Chromebook, they would have just shrugged, picked up another machine, and been back at work in a minute. That's incalculable savings. And it wasn't just the excellent Google products. What convinced us was their responsiveness. They walked the walk, improving their products and responding to our requests for new features and changes very quickly. That all sounds great, I know. But here's the thing. When you are using technology to change your corporate DNA, and if you're serious that this is what you are after, you need to think long and hard about the human factor. So when we thought about minimizing the stress we know people go through when they have to learn new ways of working, we in Atos Mavenwave focused on the human element. Leadership at our company is technically adept, so it wasn't hard to make ourselves the first part of the organization to go to workspace. Besides, everyone everywhere knows how to use Gmail and calendars, and learning Chromebooks just means learning how a browser works. But the corporate commitment signal it sends, having these leaders adopt the platform first, is invaluable. Elsewhere, we activated our culture of peer comment and collaboration to prepare, teach and evangelize the benefits of workspace, and show directly the ease of use of added features. Our Google Guides were team members who volunteered to assist and answer questions as the program rolled out across the organization. The group has continued to evolve by itself, adopting best practice where they find them to ensure that the full employee base gets the very best service. Recently, the group created efficiency workshops, such as how to be really good at sheets, that spread through positive word of mouth recommendations across the company. This demonstrates how we're achieving our objectives through decentralized, democratic, and high proficient ways to improve performance. The proof is always in the doing. The original phase brought 12,000 users onto Workspace in a year. Subsequent smaller acquisitions took a month or so. The last larger task was bringing on 12,000 additional users in a year without generating noise or distracting them from their ability to do business. We've replaced expensive, hard to manage laptops with Chromebooks, tablets, Macs, phones, really anything people want to use. Whereas before meetings would start with people spending a few minutes starting their computers, looking for documents and complaining, now we just get to work. We demised independent intranets in favor of a single intranet that plugs directly into Google Workspace, leveraging docs, contacts, and analytics. We're opening offices that are Wi-Fi only with no desk phones, since we've got stable and secure communications in video, chat, and of course, good old email. So there's lots of networking and telecom hassle out of the picture as well. 
When COVID hit, the 24,000 employee base of global payments was perfectly placed to pivot to remote working without skipping a beat. This allowed us to continue to execute our projects, answer calls and deliver to our customers. One of the things I'm most excited about is the way these products are constantly growing and improving. I've mentioned how efficiently they blended our feedback into the products with seamless updates. We are now a comment driven organization. We have the ability to collaborate effectively to drive progress through an asynchronous and synchronous manner. Meetings focused on resolving comments. We are opinionated, we are engaged, and we are highly efficient. And I've got to call out to our friends at ATOS Mavenwave here, who provided high contact training for app sheets. Our teams have started using app sheets to build internal and desktop apps. And this is being done by the people in departments that will use them, such as people from accounting, HR, and procurement. Because one thing we know is that everyone is now a digital native, capable of leveraging great tools to solve their business problems. The cultural shift engendered by ATOS Mavenwave and Google Workspace changed the way we as a company perceive the capabilities of the cloud. If Google can run everything we rely upon, can we run our workloads in the cloud to support our customers? And if we can run workloads, we can modernize from monolithic mainframes to services. ATOS Mavenway has been instrumental in creating a pragmatic modernization plan for one of our most important workloads that supports a million merchants across 15 countries. They are helping convert 5 million COBOL lines of code into Java on GCP, taking advantage of the best advances in cloud development, testing and deployment, all the way through to scalability up and down to remove bottlenecks and move at the speed the business demands. The job of migrating merchant acquiring technology to Google Cloud is not only focused on bridging the application technology gap, but also enabling our existing developers to embrace cloud technologies. Sometimes these developers perceive cloud as an enemy, but they are a critical facet of the cloud journey because of their business and application knowledge. ATOS Mavenwave helped us upskill our team members in cloud practices so they could continue to be a critical part of our innovation efforts. I can't wait to see what the future holds for this partnership, which has already saved us time, money and headaches and helped take global payments into a more dynamic and collaborative future. Thank you very much. What a great story from Jason, right? Showcasing great work between the teams at Global Payments, ATOS, Mavenwave, and Google Cloud. We'll now hear from Laura Merling, Chief Transformation and Operations Officer at Arvest Bank. Laura dives into how they are building a new data platform to accelerate their journey from a regional community bank to providing services nationwide. This week is my first year anniversary at Arvest. It might be interesting to share with you why I left a Silicon Valley company to join a community bank in Bentonville, Arkansas. Well, the answer is the financial services industry is in the middle of a disruption. And I like the opportunity that disruption brings. It's an important opportunity. And for us, it's an opportunity to rethink what it means to be a community bank in a digital world. I find it exciting and I hope you do too. So who is Arvest Bank? Arvest Bank is a leading community-based financial institution with more than $26 billion in assets. We are also serving more than 110 communities across Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Kansas. It's a high priority for us to continually invest in providing the digital tools and services that our customers expect, both our retail customers and our growing commercial customer base. So where are we on this transformation journey one year in? Well, we know that transformation impacts every aspect of our business. We're reimagining what it means to be a community bank in a digital world. And so in order to do that, we spent the last year identifying our path forward to align our business strategy with our technology strategy. The technology stack is critical in order to allow us to be flexible in meeting our customers' needs. It all starts for us on the path with cloud computing, 
as well as a new data platform. And we've decided to take on building a new banking core as the foundation. So where are we headed from here? Our journey to defining what it means to be a community bank in a digital world means we're taking a look at each aspect of the bank and we're looking to create a consistent experience across all channels. We need to be hyper-focused on the customer and what they need. That means we actually have to think about data at the center of everything that we do, whether it's front office or back office, and especially when it comes to facing the customer. So let me tell you a little bit about a customer story and data. One of the things that we learned was we had done some research and understood that our customers preferred or told us they preferred more ATMs and longer branch hours. Well, that tells you one story, but then when you look at that same data from a different perspective, those exact same customers actually told us that they preferred a digital channel. Over 95% of them preferred digitally. And so you have to kind of take a step back and say, well, what does that really mean? Uh, and if we hadn't looked at the data from both angles and thought about it, we wouldn't get that answer right. It's at the center of everything we do is data, for, at least from this point forward. So that was the foundation. Now we have other foundational pillars that support our things like our back office and our contact center. We have to provide a level of simplification and automation, removing manual processes and creating operational efficiencies. So around that, we had to think about what does it mean? How do we how do we get these efficiencies, create new customer experiences? And so at the center of our transformation is a shift as a business to having a data mindset. We needed to actually redefine our customer interaction models and our back office operations. And so at the heart of it, we decided to build a data platform based on GCP. So this data platform, we also wanted to give it a vision, a vision that aligned with our business vision. So the data platform is to be a living architecture that will be built as a foundation to support our best future. It will be using real-time data for experiences and decisions. And it's really important to keep that as part of your mindset and create a vision for where you're taking your data platform to know what you need to create and how you think about that future state. So in defining the data platform, we also said, well, how are we gonna do this? We can't just lift and shift all the data. So we identified six use cases and each one of these use cases had a set of criteria. The first criteria was it had to be solving an immediate pain point for the business and it had to be able to be solved within 90 days. Each one of the criteria or each one of the business cases, I should say, or use cases needed to actually test an end-to-end -end, you know, aspect of the data platform. So whether it was access to real-time data for AI decisioning, or whether it was to do reporting, or even creating new digital experiences for customers. And of course, we all wanted to be able to ingest third-party data. And so what does that look like? Well, we did all of this and we've been doing all this while standing up our GCP foundations over the last year. Um, we had a desire to move fast and we have been moving fast, but of course, there's lots of lessons to learn. We identified data sources, we set up the infrastructure and we enabled access and permissions. Then we ingested the data and we did a bunch of transformations and we did those once it was all in GCP and then you think we'd be ready to go. So we partnered with the Google PSO team, the Google Professional Services Organization, uh, to jointly pursue an automation of underwriting. So think about this, how do you decide who you give a loan? And so think this as small business customers and what we call our Arvest Opportunity Fund. The Arvest Opportunity Fund is where we extend uh, loans to small business customers that might not normally be eligible. And so being able to automate that process is really key to our business. Now, we've got all those steps done and we're on our path forward, but we did take a lot of lessons learned along that way. The pre three primary lessons that we think we've gotten out of this transformation so far around our data platform are around, um, we'll start with and say, the first one is really around who needs to know what? Who needs to learn the data platform and what do they need to learn? Uh, first and foremost, we didn't have enough people trained uh, on the platform and we needed to make sure that 
So it was about who did we anticipate needed to be trained versus who need to be trained? And then did we have learning journeys identified for them? What do they need to learn and over what period of time? And then of course, making the time available for them to learn while they're trying to build the data platform. It's all kind of tricky, but really important to do. Second, um, we learned that we had not established a framework that met the needs of our internal teams, nor our partners, as they looked to get access to the different data sources. We ultimately needed to create a set of persona templates for the access. Now, it seems like you would have thought of that up front, and we thought we had, but once we started getting people access to the data and started thinking about the use cases, um, we learned what the real needs were and the access requirements. Lastly, we realized that while we had set up some of the foundational aspects of GCP and we had set up the data platform, um, we had not actually set up the environment to begin using the pre-built AI, AI models that come with Google. So think the Vertex platform. Were we really ready to consume it? We weren't. So those were kind of our three major lessons. Um, they're all good learnings, uh, lots of progress since then, and we're off and running. Back to moving fast. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you so much, Laura. To hear more about Arvis Bank's digital transformation, be sure to catch her panel discussion with Google Cloud and Thought Machine. Look for the session ID INV108 in the next session catalog. Let's peek into another dimension of the financial industry with Ari Stunitzer, Managing Director, Architecture and Product Management at the CME Group, the world's leading derivatives marketplace. This Deloitte customer will share how their Google Cloud Platform Experience team worked with application and platform teams to better manage costs, improve efficiencies, and accelerate migration. Just under a year ago, we announced that CME Group would move our technology portfolio to Google Cloud. We have an aggressive timeline for our transition, and along with Deloitte and Google Cloud, we've been working hard to deliver on our commitments. We're working not just to improve our technology, but change how we work, creating a more outcome-focused process that helps CME Group customers use our products more efficiently, more securely, and in ways that better meet their needs. What I want to talk about today is how we created a new outcome-oriented system of architecting, migrating, and training our teams on Google Cloud. We did it to serve our customers better, and I believe our method has important lessons for many of you watching today. First, let me tell you a little bit about CME Group. As one of the largest financial exchanges in the world, CME Group is the only exchange where every major asset class can be traded on a single platform. Our futures and options products help customers manage risk across commodities, interest rates, currencies, energy, metals, and many other asset classes and our markets create data and information that is then used by traders, financial institutions, farmers, governments, news organizations, and anyone interested in critical aspects of the global economy. In some cases, our customers use our applications directly, or they might use our data and information from other providers. In fact, one of the many reasons we partnered with Google Cloud is its strong capabilities and data with a goal of increasing developer productivity, increasing software flexibility, and improving operational excellence while maintaining the highest levels of security. Many of you know the adage, security, resiliency, and velocity, pick two. Well, this is an effort to be able to get all three. To make it even more interesting, and I don't think I'm alone, we wanted to move from development to production in just a few months with limited resources and internal staff who were gaining GCP experience on the fly with still an on-prem system to support. And of course, all of that using a mixture of GCP native services, legacy systems on-prem, and a number of third-party tools. It's sort of like maintaining a jet engine in flight while transforming the fuel system and training the ground crew all at the same time. So here's what we did. We started with principles. What are the outcomes we're trying to achieve? What kind of experience do we want our customers to have? When you're passionate about customers like we are, the opportunity to enhance our technology and improve our customer experience is quite motivating. The experience we want them to have 
is software they can easily access at scale to make better decisions. So working with Deloitte, we built a cloud experience team designed to bridge our application and platform teams. The goal was not only to improve the productivity of our platform team, allowing them to focus on their delivery, but to increase the velocity of our application migration teams as well. The CloudX team was the first thing we set up, ensuring there was proficiency in both platform and software tools, and a common set of goals to be able to communicate to other teams. They also act as a central point of questions, building a repository for documentation, for self-service training. The CloudX team is made up of CME Group and Deloitte team members with application, operational, and GCP knowledge who support application migrations in an outcome-oriented, sustainable way. Each team member has specific expertise, which underlines the importance of initial team selection. Working with the application teams, the CloudX team embeds and helps in the delivery of software and Google Cloud services. If questions arise, the CloudX team not only answers them, but documents what was done so others can learn and deliver faster. The mantra is experiment, learn, share quickly. With the CloudX team supporting the application teams, our platform team can focus on their delivery. This approach increases confidence in delivery while overcoming many of the ramp up challenges common in a cloud migration. So how do we judge the success of this approach? We want a better productivity and track that by ticket resolution. Issues have cleared faster than we projected. Applications are growing in depth and capability and people are spending more time on their core delivery rather than context switching. We wanted an effective support and training process to quickly bring team members up to speed on Google Cloud. Centralizing support with the CloudX team allowed us to enhance training while providing a sustainable outcome-oriented delivery model. We wanted fast adoption. I mentioned that we had an aggressive timeline for bringing CME Group to Google Cloud. And I'm pleased to say that we're pretty much on schedule with increasing velocity. Maybe even more important, I think we'll arrive at our goal to deliver more and better customer products and experiences thanks to our adoption framework. Based on our success, here's what I can recommend you remember. One, there's already a lot of knowledge in your organization and there's a hunger to deliver and learn more by your teams. Leverage that by connecting with all of your teams through a central group that is focused on the key outcome of customer experience. Share information and practices to ensure consistency of performance. Two, everyone learns a little bit differently in their roles. So you want to allow healthy experimentation. That means asking questions, trying things, and above all, sharing learnings and outcomes. That is the start of building your team's best practices. Lastly, success in technology always comes from a healthy blend of understanding your customers' problems and knowing how technology can solve them. Outcome-oriented adoption is a consistent blend of those things with a common framework of delivery. Thank you very much for your time and good luck in your efforts. See you in the cloud. What I loved about this story is the teamwork and focus on the customer experience to allow for health experimentation and continuous learning. Let's move on to Brazil and hear Priscilla Mie, the Chief Technology Officer of Ije Sao Ije, inspire us with how they're reimagining ways of maintaining health and delivering healthcare to 11 million people living in the south of Brazil. Hello from Brazil, I'm Priscila Mie and I am the Chief Technology Officer of Ija Saúde, a company delivering new ways of maintaining health and delivering health care to the people living in the south of Brazil, which makes up about 11 million people. Today, I want to talk about how we are doing that affordably with data-driven services on Google Cloud and with a diversity-based approach to company organization 
that has grown thanks to Google Cloud's efforts. Healthcare for the people of Brazil is an enormous opportunity. Our research shows only 20% of Brazilians have health insurance. Not only that, only 19% of people with health insurance have regular medical exams. Almost two-thirds don't know what a routine checkup is. The reason for this is that Brazilians see medicine as a financial worry, not a health benefit. They fear they won't have money to take care of their illness. They need better health insurance delivered to them in a personalized way they can understand and effort. By bringing together experts in medicine, financing and data science, Ija Saúde developed a solution that provides individuals and companies different types of health services, including preventive screenings, follow-ups, health scoring, and medical records management. We can offer products with discounts, benefits, schedule appointments, and exams. On the financial side, we provide financial and credit solution for both clients and business partners. Working alongside HR departments, we can understand the health of all employees safely and securely. Our affiliated network and has an extensive portfolio of insurance, investment, telemedicine and digital prescription. As you can imagine, building this company to scale across Brazil, large population could be an enormously costly proposition. Our technology must be secure. It must be easy to operate and reliable for the consumer. It must handle enormous data loads. That's why it was to be reliable. It must be able to grow without overloading our operating costs with charges for storage, compute and networking. We had a vision and we had built much of the technology, but not in a way that could meet all of our needs or take us to where we needed to grow. After some success, we realized we needed to improve our operations and user experience by restructuring our entire architecture. That's when we came to Google Cloud. One thing I didn't mention before, over 50% of our top executives are women. And we have designed Isha Saúde to be a diversity-first organization, so we can better react Brazilians at every level of society. How half of our company has been hired through our diversity program. Attending a Google Cloud Accelerator for startups allowed us to think not just about the architecture in a stronger and more robust way, but we began to look at ways we could accelerate the performance of our algorithms while also working on our internal learning. Google Cloud believes their programs, technical mentorships could help facilitate our learning and growth and it really helped us better analyze the health of employee populations. With the mentorship, we have created a squad to learn and work together on a technological challenge. The mentors perform close interactions, almost hands-on, to help us as much as possible. The first challenge was the cloud migration. We migrate from our previous cloud infrastructure and re-architected our offering to function as a series of 
microservices. This decreased our cost and built up scalability. Next, we also added key products like Google Vision to read medical prescription and reports, apply ML predictions and help people change their routines. Cloud Run manage instances for location hosting. Data Proxy securely pre-process our data while Cloud Storage and BigQuery run our ML algorithms faster and more reliable than before. Here are some results from operating on Google Cloud Platform after just 16 months. Our data requests have 40% less latency when compared to our experience on another major cloud provider. RAM optimization on Cloud SQL has cut storage cost by a third. Our optical character recognition accuracy is 15% better on Google Vision, ensuring better results for our physicians and associated customers. Using DataProc, our clustering time went from 5 minutes to 90 seconds. Faster, cheaper, and better. Nice, right? But the real benefit is in the business. Like I said, these are early days. We are excited by the results and we are confident that Ija Saúde can play a positive role in giving people more control over better health. Today, 70% of deaths around the world are due to preventable chronic non-communicable disease. With better education and better means of control, we want people to accumulate the financial resources to take care of their health better, especially in a preventive way. Our two biggest priorities for the future are to be a reference in a digital transformation in the health chain and to generate a greater positive impact for efforts like ours in the business community. I'd like to thank you, Google, for their assistance and helping us building our dream better and encourage you to contact me if you want to discuss more about our company, your company, or ways to build better in the cloud. Thank you. We're so excited to see how EJ So EJ continues to make progress in supporting people with the financial resources to address preventable diseases. Now let's travel to Australia and meet Duncan Permazel, the general manager of retail sales and marketing at Origin Energy. Working with Accenture and Google Cloud, the energy company is helping homeowners better manage their own power solutions with a new consumer solar application. Origin is an integrated energy company in Australia with 4.5 million customer accounts across electricity, natural gas, LPG and broadband. We retail through our three key segments, consumer, where I'll focus today, but also small to medium enterprises and the commercial and industrial segments. In our consumer customer base, we also provide other services such as solar and storage, where we will design and install solar and storage solutions for our customers. At Origin, our purpose is getting energy right for our customers, community and planet. And our ambition and strategy is to lead the transition to net zero through cleaner energy and customer solutions. One way we'll do this, and a key pillar of our strategy, is by offering unrivaled customer solutions. And part of this is making it simple and easy for customers to access clean and smart energy solutions. Origin partnered with Accenture and Google Cloud to launch the new solar growth platform app. The tool uses 3D data, visual AI, and advanced analytics to show customers how solar panels can help save energy. It can measure things like roof pitch, area, and energy consumption to calculate the most suitable solar product for any household. This innovation is a great example of how we can equip homes with solutions to make a difference. Origin's been a leading retailer and installer of rooftop solar in Australia for over 15 years. In that time, we've helped more than 110,000 Australians go solar, 
and that is more than any other installer over that time period. However, the industry itself is a very disaggregated and highly competitive industry with relatively low barriers to entry. In today's market, we are the second largest provider with about 3% market share, and the largest provider has about 4% market share based on installed capacity. If you combine that with around 3,000 competitors, it's a very interesting industry to compete in, and for us on a national scale. It's also worth noting that historically, the sale was made by physically visiting a site, reviewing the customer's site, and then going away to consider the right system and form up a quote. We would then wait while the customer considered that quote, and subject to the sale being made, the installation would then be scheduled again on another day. It was often the same person or business doing the sale and then coming back to do the install later. But at Origin, as a national retailer, we do most of our work over the phone, probably around 80%, and because that's historically the nature of our relationship with most of our customers. So we have for many years operated over the phone and used satellite imagery to do our designs and try and avoid a pre-sale and pre-install site assessment. In some cases, we would need to do a pre-install site assessment if there was any uncertainty about the premise and the requirements for a successful install. In providing solar and storage options to consumers, it's always worth considering why a customer chooses to invest in solar and why they would come to origin. You can see in this chart that while there's an environmental benefit of the investment, the main driver is still whether or not the consumer will save money. Due to the nature of the upfront payment and the benefits over time, the decision for consumers is more like a total cost of ownership decision that has payback periods of typically between three to seven years if the system is sized correctly. You'll also see that feed-in tariffs and payment terms are key considerations, but they are just inputs into that total cost of ownership decision. A consumer's decision is based on three key drivers. Firstly, the upfront cost of the system, noting any financial or payment terms. The second is the displacement of grid energy by using the energy from the solar system directly in the home. And the third is the earned revenue from energy exported to the grid by what we call feed-in tariffs. As the example in the attached image shows, a household that consumes, say, five megawatt hours per year from the grid, pre-solar, may move to a household that only consumes three and a half megawatt hours directly from the grid and produces two megawatt hours from their solar install and so offsets one and a half megawatt hours of usage in the home and exports the other half a megawatt hour to the grid. This example is oversimplified and can be impacted by a couple of other variables. One variable is grid tariffs. Many consumers pay time of use tariffs, which means that the grid price is normally cheapest during the day when the sun is shining and the load on the network and the generation is at its lowest. The price then becomes higher in the late afternoon to evening when there is more demand on the network from households. Another impact is feed-in tariff rates. In a competitive market, these rates vary from retailer to retailer, depending on how that retailer values the energy that is exported or returned to the grid. Another impact is usage profiles, how much usage is at the time generation is occurring from the solar system during sunshine hours. And then there's the differential in rates. Depending on the time of use tariffs, grid rates can sometimes be up around 25 to 30 cents during peak times. They can also be down as low as six to 10 cents a kilowatt hour in off-peak times. And your feed-in tariffs sit at around six to 10 cents. So all of this means there's much more value for the household in the energy that is used directly in the home. So the new system allows users to provide a simple address to look up and see what their solar opportunity is. It has an intuitive interface that allows customers to see in near real time what the solar setup can look like on the property. The inputs utilised include the home, its orientation, the roof size, the roof pitch and roof material. It also matches up the technical options around the panel types, sizes, the inverter capacity and even the battery and storage options if that's a viable investment for the customer. Given our internal information around the customer's usage, we can also orchestrate an outbound campaign that matches the customer's existing tariffs and usage profiles to the insight about the house as described above. This will allow us to show a customer what the best option for them is from a payback perspective. As I mentioned earlier, 
The old way of selling solar was to invest a lot of time into each system with a large amount of human intervention and gathering of information and data from numerous sources. And sometimes this was onus on, onerous on the customer too. With the new system that we developed together with Accenture and Google Cloud, we can digitally capture the required information. We then use the artificial intelligence and machine learning to optimize system and options. This then allows us to um, an immediate playback to the customer of a quote. The machine learning and AI models used means the customer has a tailored solution and they can be confident that the system hasn't been oversized or undersized for their usage profile. Historically, assessing the suitability of a roof for solar and determining where to place panels has been performed by knowledge workers who piece together many components to arrive at a recommendation. Whilst this is a proven approach, it does take time and it can't really scale to provide a real-time advice to many customers simultaneously. The innovative origin model uses visual AI and geometry to enable almost unlimited parallel solution assessments within a very easy to understand customer experience. There are five key steps in the new process. The first step looks to understand the type of roof being considered. Is it the right material or is it more ornate tiles which could be problematic for the installation? The second and third steps break down the overall roof area into segments, provide insights on the roof slope and orientation to the sun, and provide the gross available area that potentially could be used for solar. The final steps, four and five, place panels on the roof in line with the recommendations for a customer in terms of usage and what is possible from a solution perspective. Collectively, these steps are performed in under 30 seconds. To date, we are seeing customers' journey time shortened while still being able to configure a system and outcome that is personalised for the customer's property and usage profile. The quote is accurate and allows confidence that it is a robust assessment of the data and information to build the recommendation quote. We are getting higher interaction net promoter scores through the new platform than previously and the customers can choose what time of day they choose to interact with us and consider the purchase options. We're also seeing lower cancellation rates on orders due to the increased confidence in the system design and roof structure information. This lower cancellation rate leads to more efficient operations. The machine learning and the team progressing the platform are constantly working on improving the proposition and building continuous improvement cycles that have us enjoying the opportunity of many ideas and options to keep refining the performance of the platform and the customer experience. I would also note that the platform allows some of our partners to consider white labeling the competency to allow them to introduce their customers to renewable and distributed generation and storage in a way that they can trust the experience, that it's going to be customer experience accretive and that the customer won't be delayed or held up in any transfers or movements between the organizations. An important philosophy that worked well with this was to try and get an MVP to market as quickly as possible so that we could test and refine the customer's experience with real insight and data. Our MVP focused on limited geographies and house types in the first instance, and then expanded beyond there. We have seen customer preferences change rapidly in this environment, so our ability to adapt the proposition is very important. We knew the outcomes we had in mind, and with that, it was fundamental to bring the partners together and ensure the cross-functional team saw the vision and shared the optimism. This was important because the work crossed many businesses, teams and skills. After building the MVP, it was just a matter of iterating and iterating through until we had most of the geography and building types covered. And now we're circling back on other ideas and opportunities we saw along the way, as well as thinking about how we continue this experience all the way through the sales cycle and included all the way through the installation cycle. Thank you. That was a great example of how to take advantage of market dynamics to quickly develop a new valuable application to surprise and delight consumers. Last and certainly not least, we wanted to leave you with a special story discussing Web3 and the world of cryptocurrency with Hedera. Joshua Cindy is a staff engineer with Swirls Labs and was previously a principal architect and DevOps manager for Hedera. What excites me about a conference like this is that we get to talk about the future. 
all the wonderful possibilities in front of us and the opportunity to turn them into reality. It's literally in the title, what's next? But innovation doesn't really happen in a vacuum. So in order to understand what's next, we need to look into the past, what was, to contextualize and understand what can be. And I wanna go back to ancient history. So like 11 years ago in crypto terms, that's the beginning of time, roughly. About 11 years ago, I built my very own Bitcoin exchange. You could buy Bitcoin through it, and I was working with this payment provider. This was so early that there weren't any real regulations around the industry, and that provider ended up suspending me, and that was the end of that service. Why? They saw some risk here. What was the risk exactly? Well, to give you an example, my solution itself bought Bitcoin from Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox, if you didn't know, was a bit infamous eight years ago for losing 850,000 or so Bitcoins. Through some theft, fraud, mismanagement, or a mix of all three, it was never really clear. So the payment provider saw some risk here and deplatformed me, and rightfully so. That payment provider was, well, Google Checkout. So I may be the only customer success segment here where I've actually been deplatformed by Google at one point but that's water under the bridge. So why am I here? Well, fast forward to present day, we have built something amazing at Hedera that I would like to share with you. How Google Cloud helped us build it and why I'm excited to share about what's next. Again, in the interest of looking to the past to understand what's next, 12 years ago, Dr. Lehman Baird invented the Hashgraph algorithm. This algorithm underpins the Hedera network. Lehman set out to solve a decades old math problem, not just build a better blockchain. The concept of blockchain has been around for over 20 years. There are 2000 plus projects which all depend on blockchain, but if blockchain didn't exist, Hedera would still exist. Hashgraph solves a network of computers coming to consensus on an event where no individual is necessarily trusted, but does so with extreme speed, high throughput, and at the highest security possible. It also has low costs, which are predictable and which an enterprise can plan around. I got into Google Cloud in 2016 for their Kubernetes service. This solved 90% of the problems I didn't want to focus on. Interestingly enough, Kubernetes is antithetical to decentralization. It is a centralized control plane for managing resources on large compute clusters. We were in a position where we needed each node in the Hedera network to be completely independent of each other and maintained by a separate organization. These organizations could be adversaries or competitors. Kubernetes, the tool of choice, wasn't going to cut it. We continued to use containers, but we developed our own node management tool. This tool uses threshold signatures from our council to orchestrate updates in a decentralized way. While this is itself its own interesting problem. It's a pretty straightforward engineering problem. And what it unlocks for us is to focus on our business case. How do you establish a network governed by large corporate and non-corporate entities across industry, across business segment, and across continents, and have them govern our network? What do these enterprises, banks, and universities all have in common? Well, try to get them to decide on something about their own business how to make an investment, how to structure themselves or plan for their future. Imagine now how the largest aerospace manufacturer makes a decision or the largest bank in Africa. How about the largest search engine? Now, what about all of them trying to make a decision together? When we talk about what's next, we talk about Hedera. That aerospace company is Boeing, the bank is Standard Bank, and the search engine is Google. Google joined the Governing Council in December 2019, accepting council member responsibilities such as, Google runs a single consensus node in the Hedera mainnet. Google is the equal part owner of, the, of Hedera. Google also sits on the technical and regulatory committees that govern the network. They are bought into the idea of Web3 and what the Hashgraph algorithm can do and what the Hedera public network built on top of it offers. For Google Cloud, this led to them understanding and investing, not just in Hedera, but in the broader Web3 ecosystem in general. Google Cloud has formed a team dedicated to Web3 
called Digital Assets Web3 and has approximately 50 people on that core team with an additional 150 individuals working across Google in YouTube, search, engineering, ventures, and payments. And that describes Google, and Google is one of the 26 members. Hedera intends to grow that to 39 governing council members across different geographies and industries. So what can I share? When I think about taking your idea and making a business about it, I think about those poor baby turtles. If you've watched planet Earth, you know what I'm talking about. Most of them fail to make it, getting eaten by birds, crabs, various sea life, whatever. So do a vast majority of ideas fail. Maybe the idea was bad or worse, the idea was good, but it simply wasn't its time. For me, my timing just wasn't right. But for you, that baby turtle, that fragile, unproven idea could make it. And maybe that time is exactly right and it starts something amazing. So what do these Web3 turtles have in front of them? What makes the time right for them? Well, a lot of things I didn't have. You have partners like Google who are eager to have you, who will grant you credits even to use their platform like we do. You have demand and I'm not just talking about the demand of something like pictures of rocks or monkeys or coins with dogs on them, but demand from established companies. Look no further than our governing council. They are bought in on this idea. You have proof of economic value of the technology underlying your idea, whether it be large banks establishing remittance POCs using digital tokens, industry managed nonprofits building a platform for redeeming coupons, law firms tokenizing real world assets, the largest packaging and distribution company in the world proving the carbon footprint of your product as a service, these are the Hedera use cases. And as a Web3 entrepreneur, what you have in front of you is a network like Hedera. We offer a number of things. Fast finality, meaning your transaction is final in seconds. Fairness, that keeps the leaders from adjusting the transaction order. Energy efficiency, per the University of London economic study, we are the greenest solution on the planet. We're even carbon negative. Fixed transaction fees, meaning your costs of your solution isn't wildly unpredictable. Decentralized governance by the big names we mentioned before. And so what does it mean? What's next? Well, with the Hashgraph algorithm and platforms such as Google Cloud, maybe that idea you had might not fade into obscurity because of the ecosystem, the demand, and the underlying technology is here. Maybe it has the potential now to grow up to be a massive sea turtle. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into these valuable stories of innovation and transformation. If you are interested in sharing any one of these stories, you can find these sessions in the featured section of the Next catalog. Thank you and enjoy the rest of Next. Google products provide the information you need when you need it. But why can't you get the same kind of answers for your business? Looker, Google Cloud's business intelligence solution is here to solve that problem, enabling you to go beyond traditional dashboards and make your organization's information accessible and useful. Bringing this innovation to business will be revolutionary, just like navigating a city after Google Maps. Looker is Google for your business data. Here's what we mean. What if Google AI were built into the tools you use to store and analyze data at work? Google's Vertex AI Vision takes data like video, images, and audio, and in real time, turns it into structured data, ready for business intelligence. Going beyond the dashboard means using Google Glass Enterprise to see insights and recommendations based on your data in real time. More access, more transparency. Now that's Google for your business. With Google Maps, you know if a restaurant is busy before you go or you can get rerouted around a traffic jam. Looker will help you connect similar dots in a predictive way. A concert in five days will increase foot traffic by 65%. Would you like to adjust staffing and inventory? Yes. Looker and AI lets you respond to changes in demand and turn insights into action. Foot traffic continues to be busy. Encourage customers to visit an alternate shop with a reward card? Yes. Smarter insights mean better experiences and happy customers. 
So go beyond the dashboard and transform the way you do business with Looker, powered by Google Cloud. Google's infrastructure powers services for billions of people. And then Google Cloud takes those lessons from running these services in order to deliver an innovative and easy to use cloud infrastructure. Today, Google Cloud helps users automate the life cycle of their workloads. In the future, we'll use AI to understand workload patterns and do this automatically. Intelligently optimizing for higher performance with lower latency, cost, and power consumption. Today, we optimize our infrastructure for AI ML and your data, ensuring that it is accessible anywhere. But we're not stopping there. Chiplets are a new design and manufacturing process that brings open source agility to the world of silicon by using a building block approach. Custom chips for a vast range of configurations. Sustainability is important to us because our planet depends on it. And we will operate on 24-7 carbon-free energy by 2030. Every email you send through Gmail or every question you ask search and every virtual machine you spin up across our cloud will be supplied by carbon-free energy every hour of every day. We are reinventing infrastructure where AI-based automation will recommend the most efficient design for your workloads based on your usage. And we'll run them on Google's unique infrastructure optimized specifically for you. All of this delivered on the cleanest public cloud in the world. This is our next. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Hello, and welcome to What's New for Application Developers. I'm Thomas DeMeo, and we're thrilled to have you here. We're so excited about what the future holds, and we've invested a lot to make you successful with Google Cloud, so you can build applications faster and more secure than ever. You may have heard Thomas Curian talk about how we offer prescriptive guidance with an opinionated approach to solve developer velocity challenges. In today's session, I'm going to show you how exactly we do this by highlighting how Google Cloud lets you deliver secure applications in an open manner. Driving developer velocity is especially important given there continues to be a global shortage of developers. 
In fact, the global shortage of full-time developers will increase from today's 1.4 million to over 4 million in 2025. So we want to make every moment count to be as fast and productive as possible. To help alleviate this developer shortage, last year we announced a goal to equip 40 million people with cloud skills over the next five years. Today, we're taking that to the next level with our enhanced Google Cloud Skills Boost with Innovators Plus. This annual subscription provides access to training, special events, Google Cloud credits, and expanded developer benefits, all for $299 US per year. Even though working remotely has become the norm, working faster remotely and across distributed teams continues to be a challenge. Typical friction points include onboarding rote employees, setting up dev and test environments, and long build times, just to name a few. When it comes to security, code and data exfiltration risks are key. This is especially true in sensitive and regulated environments. Customers tell us that current solutions to secure dev environments can add developer friction to the experience. For example, streaming-based solutions may introduce unwanted latency, and running your specific containers may not be fully supported. Solving developer velocity challenges requires a two-pronged approach. How do we not only make it easier for developers to build applications, but also easy for IT admins to securely scale in dev environments? To address this, I'm excited to announce the availability of cloud workstations. Think of cloud workstations as providing pre-configured but customizable developer environments in the cloud with your favorite dev tools pre-installed and up to date. Cloud workstations come with multi-IDE support, such as IntelliJ, PyCharm, Rider, CLion, CodeOSS, and others as part of this fully managed experience. And since cloud workstations can run inside the same network as your other resources, you don't need to emulate services or databases, which can save hours by developing and running code in your staging environment. Cloud Workstations enables consistent developer definitions among developers, with all environments defined via containers, fixing the, well, it works on my machine problem. You can also access your favorite DevOps tooling, including third-party tools such as GitLab, TeamCity, Jenkins, to build, test, and deploy quickly as part of your end-to-end -end workflow, even if they're self-hosted on-prem or in other clouds. From an admin's perspective, cloud workstations can dramatically simplify the onboarding of new developers at scale. You can create a workstation configuration, which defines a shared template of the tools developers need, including VM type, IDE extensions, libraries, code samples, and environment settings. Increasing developer velocity is incomplete without having the right security controls in place for remote developers. This is why Cloud Workstations has enterprise-grade security requirements built right in. This starts with VPC service controls, where you can limit developer access to sensitive areas. You can update or patch your environments so that developers get the most up-to-date version. And you can also use a fully private gateway so that only trusted users within your network have dev access. Next up, Christian Gorka, head of the Cyber Center of Excellence at Commerce Bank, tells us how Cloud Workstations is driving remote developer velocity while maintaining the bank's security needs. Thank you, Thomas. Commerz Bank is the leading bank for the German Mittelstand and a strong partner for around 28,000 corporate client groups and around 11 million private and small business customers in Germany, while being present internationally in almost 40 countries. Commerz Bank is increasingly using cloud technology to bring new products and customer experiences faster to the market, leveraging modern technology and optimizing system performance, as well as running costs and sustainability. For many organizations, developer productivity and, in particular for us, security are top of mind and a first class priority. Because of the nature of our business, that is, being part of a strictly regulated industry, our developers handle a lot of very sensitive applications. To enable development in a safe environment, we have an extensive list of security and compliance controls that need to be checked off 
before we can adopt the solution. I am excited about cloud workstations because it helps us take care of many items on that list. For example, it lets us integrate our development environment into our virtual private cloud behind VPC service controls so that we can make sure our source code and intellectual property do not leave our virtual premises. Furthermore, it supports customer managed encryption keys as well as data recognition, making sure data confidentiality and geolocation is under our control. And while cloud workstations comes with pre-installed software, many things still are configurable. Plus, we can easily patch vulnerabilities and update OS images across various teams in a central place, which not only saves us time, but also helps improve the overall security posture. Finally, our developers really like the speed and responsiveness that Cloud Workstations provides. Onboarding can be done within minutes and the service is easily accessible from anywhere. Of course, access granted. So in the end, we are in need of something that works out of the box, is fully managed and integratable into Google Cloud ecosystem and its services. Hence, I'm glad that we now can leverage Cloud Workstations. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks, Christian. It was great to hear how developers at Commerce Bank can securely collaborate across the world. Cloud workstations can provide security capabilities as you code, which can be extended to other parts of your software supply chain, from build dependency, management, to deployment. Recent attacks such as Log4j, SolarWinds, and Mimecast have showcased the importance of ensuring security across your software supply chain beyond the coding environment. In fact, the White House is now requiring all federal suppliers to conform to software security standards across their supply chain. And the EU Agency for Cybersecurity has recognized this threat as well. To further complicate things, the extensive use of open source and their dependencies makes this a challenging problem to solve. To help, Google pledged $100 million last year to support third-party foundations like OpenSSF, that manage open source security priorities and help fix vulnerabilities. We've also pledged to help 100,000 Americans earn Google career certificates to learn skills, including data privacy and security. On the product side, we are taking those efforts to the next level with the launch of Software Delivery Shield. Software Delivery Shield provides a fully managed end-to-end -end software supply chain security. This starts with the IDE and includes CI-CD pipelines, deploy time policies, and runtime security posture. So while you're focused on writing code, Software Delivery Shield, or SDS, is helping to make sure your organization's security policy is consistently enforced across the software delivery process, enabling you to develop faster. Specifically, SDS adds new security capabilities in four major areas. First, to shift left into the IDE, we are launching Cloud Code Source Protect, a private preview IDE extension which helps you better understand open source vulnerabilities and licenses to go faster by avoiding costly and frustrating rework down the road. Second, when it comes to securing dependencies, we're excited to announce our Assured Open Source Software Service. It scans for known vulnerabilities, analyzes and fuzz tests over 250 packages across Java and Python. These packages are built using Google secured pipelines to help external dependency risks and come with remediation SLAs. Third, SDS helps secure CI CD with Cloud Build which now supports Salsa Level 3. For those unfamiliar, Salsa is an emerging standard that incorporates best practices for software supply chain integrity. Cloud Build provides verifiable build provenance to help you trace a binary to its source and build process to prevent tampering and prove the artifact you're using is legit. Fun fact, provenance is not just available for containers, but for Java Maven packages as well. Lastly, SDS can extend security protection into Cloud Run and GKE. Cloud Run Security Panel now includes software supply chain security insights. This provides information such as salsa level on the running container images, build provenance, 
and service vulnerabilities. To help protect Kubernetes workloads, GKE Security Posture Management provides opinionated foundational guidance into your GKE clusters. We do this by providing detailed security assessments, actionable re remediation advice, and scanning for OS vulnerabilities in your running images. We're integrating the platform to further help drive speed and efficiency. For instance, Cloud Deploy can make continuous delivery for Cloud Run much simpler. Promote from pre-prod to prod, conduct rollbacks, and manage gate promotion approvals in a cohesive and intuitive interface. With the new Cloud Run integrations, you can connect Cloud Run with Google Cloud Services fast. For example, configuring domains with a load balancer or connecting to a Redis cache is now as easy as a single click. And by the way, we have more scenarios on the way. With these enhancements, you no longer need to be an expert in scaling, securing, or managing your pipelines or connecting to other Google Cloud services. Everything we discussed, from Cloud Workstations, Software Delivery Shield, and Cloud Run enhancements are designed to help developer velocity. And we do this in an open fashion. In fact, we continually evaluate the developer experience across Google Cloud and have a dedicated team making ongoing improvements to reduce developer friction and make things faster. At Google, we're big proponents of open source and open standards. As the number one contributor to the CNCF open source projects, our goal has been openness wherever possible. With that, I'm excited to announce that Google has joined the Eclipse Adoptium Working Group, a consortium of leaders in the Java community working to establish a higher quality developer-centric standard for Java distributions. As a strategic member of Adoptium, Google will promote open standards that benefit all developers everywhere, regardless of where they run their workloads. And that starts by making Eclipse Temerin available across Google Cloud products and services. Eclipse Temerin provides Java developers a higher quality developer experience and more opportunities to create integrated, enterprise-focused solutions with the openness they deserve. Next up, Victor Salve from the product team discusses a simplified and secure Java developer experience. Thanks, Thomas. And hey, everyone, my name is Victor Salve. I'm a product manager here at Google Cloud focused on supply chain security. We're going to be taking a look at all of the components Thomas just outlined, collectively known as Software Delivery Shield. So let's get started with the demo. Cloud Workstations provides my team with project-specific profiles configured with the memory, CPU, and the tools required, such as the IDE. Today, we're going to be looking at a Java Maven project, so we'll launch a Java dev environment and get started with our Maven work. To shift left on security, Cloud Code now provides dependency insights right in the IDE, including vulnerabilities in direct and transitive dependencies. Upper Delivery Shield also has trust-based policy gating. In this case, I have a policy in place requiring that deployed images be built by Cloud Build and conform to a vulnerability threshold, so random images like this one are blocked. So let's use cloud code to find and fix all of our vulnerable dependencies so that our policy thresholds are satisfied. I can now trigger a CICD process using cloud build. My build has succeeded and my image was successfully deployed. Cloud build now provides security insights into the built artifacts like this container image, providing me information about the salsa level of the build, any vulnerabilities lurking in the build, as well as a list of dependencies and the provenance of the build. Well, I hope that demo gave you a sense for Software Delivery Shield. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks, Victor. In addition to what we've covered, we've also been focused on helping remove barriers across our data platform, allowing developers to build data-driven applications faster. After all, data often powers the most impactful experiences. For example, with Google services such as Cloud Firestore, we're making it easy to infuse AI and ML across data-driven workflows to help build rich, 
end-to-end -end data centric applications. In fact, over 4 million databases have been created in Firestore to power mobile and web applications. We're providing integration with Vertex AI, our AI ML platform. This enables inferencing directly within the database transaction. In addition, we're announcing in preview Spanner integration with Vertex AI. This integration allows data scientists to build their models easily in Vertex AI and developers to access those models using the SQL query language. We also understand that data can reside in third-party databases too, and developers still want those experiences to be fast and easy to deploy. So when working with data-centric third-party stacks, such as the mean stack, JavaScript developers can quickly deploy MongoDB Atlas and Cloud Run, our serverless compute solution, with Google-provided Terraform scripts. Read our related blog post to find the repo where you can grab this. And other texts will soon follow. It's a great time to be a developer because software is enabling businesses to reimagine how they're providing more engaging experiences. In doing this with the peace of mind that security is embedded at every step of the way. And everything I just described was designed to help you focus on what you love, writing code fast. We're excited to create this future together. Thanks for joining us. Whatever you're ready. Google's infrastructure powers services for billions of people. And then Google Cloud takes those lessons from running these services in order to deliver an innovative and easy to use cloud infrastructure. Today, Google Cloud helps users automate the life cycle of their workloads. In the future, we'll use AI to understand workload patterns and do this automatically. Intelligently optimizing for higher performance with lower latency, cost, and power consumption. Today, we optimize our infrastructure for AI ML and your data, ensuring that it is accessible anywhere. But we're not stopping there. Chiplets are a new design and manufacturing process that brings open source agility to the world of silicon by using a building block approach. Custom chips for a vast range of configurations. Sustainability is important to us because our planet depends on it. And we will operate on 24 seven carbon free energy by 2030. Every email you send through Gmail or every question you ask search and every virtual machine you spin up across our cloud will be supplied by carbon free energy every hour of every day. We are reinventing infrastructure where AI based automation will recommend the most efficient design for your workloads based on your usage. And we'll run them on Google's unique infrastructure optimized specifically for you. All of this delivered on the cleanest public cloud in the world. This is our next. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Welcome to What's Next for Data Scientist and Data Analyst. My name is Jun Yang, VP of Cloud AI and Industry Solutions. And I'm Sudhir Hasbe. I'm Senior Director of Product Management for Data Analytics at Google Cloud. AI is here, and it's growing fast. Every day, I have so many interesting conversations with our customers about the opportunity of innovation with data and AI. Absolutely. AI is top of mind for all our data cloud customers. And we have some amazing announcements to talk to you about today. So let's get started. The promise of data AI is undeniable, and it's a reality today for many organizations. AI advances are happening faster than most realize. It is a groundbreaking era for AI. The last few years have led us to a tipping point with AI adoption, where we have seen the impact of AI across more and more organizations and more and more use cases. Organizations from many industries and varying level of ML expertise are solving business critical problems with AI. 
from com creating compelling customer experience to optimizing operations to automating routine tasks. These organizations learn to innovate faster and ultimately get ahead in the marketplace. But how do they get there? AI is hard, fundamentally hard. First, the challenge start with data. It is a challenge to manage its growth and complexity. It is a challenge to prepare data for AI and ML usage. Second, AI expertise is scarce. How many AI experts do you need to get your first model into production? What about the next set of use cases? And finally, if you have all the pieces in place, the road from prototype to production can still take months, if not years. How can you scale faster with confidence? We have learned from Google's years of experience in AI development on how to make the data to AI journey as seamless as possible. And we have poured this experience into our product and services. In today's session, we'll walk through how our data cloud simplify the way our teams can work with data. Built-in AI and ML expertise and capabilities designed to meet users where they are with their current skills. And finally, with our infrastructure, governance, and ML ops capability, help organization to leverage AI at scale. And now, let me hand it over to Sudhir to share more about data cloud and how to overcome these challenges. Thank you, June. Let's talk about the first challenge you brought up, data complexity. The problem is unpredictable nature of data. Data comes in all shapes and forms, speeds and sources. It's structured, semi-structured and unstructured. Mostly it's ingested in batch today, but it is increasingly required to be transformed and utilized in real time for real time decision making. If you're not already there, soon your company will find itself in a center of multi-cloud, multi-format, and multi-source data ecosystem. An ecosystem that frankly, the monolithic and expensive architectures of the past is not built for. We have designed our data cloud to meet your needs of today and tomorrow. With our data cloud, you gain a complete and unified data and AI solution so you can manage each stage of data lifecycle from operational data to analytical and intelligent applications. With our data cloud, AI and machine learning comes built in, helping you make full use of your data to improve insights and automate core business processes. That's why today I'm proud to announce the general availability of Big Lake to help you break the data silos and unify your data lakes and warehouses. Big Lake will also support Apache Iceberg, which is becoming the standard for open source stable formats for your data lakes. And soon we will also add support for other formats like Delta Lake and Hudi. Our built-in support for Apache Spark in BigQuery will allow data practitioners to create BigQuery stored procedures, unifying their work in Spark with their SQL pipelines. This open data ecosystem is at the heart of our strategy. As of today, over 800 software partners power their applications using our data cloud and 40 data platform partners like DBT, DataIQ and Tableau support BigQuery through certified integrations and customer adoption continues to grow fueled by the ecosystem initiatives like Data Cloud Alliance. Now we know 80 to 90% of data you have today is unstructured. This includes your images, your video files, your audio files. Today we are announcing support for unstructured data in BigQuery through object tables. Object tables enable you to take advantage of common security and governance across your data. You can now build data products that unify structured and unstructured data in BigQuery. This makes BigQuery one-stop solution to store, manage, and process all types of data at global scale. One example of a company making their data work for them is ANZ Bank. The second largest bank in Australia, ANZ uses Google Cloud to help customers make better decisions by analyzing aggregate data sets and delivering powerful insights to create personalized customer experiences. Manual operations that used to take days now only take seconds. So in a nutshell, to overcome data complexity challenges, 
we are bringing lakes and warehouses together with Big Lake and providing support for open formats. We are unifying structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data workloads into BigQuery. Openness, unification, and trust are the foundation of intelligent data-driven organization. And with that, I will turn it over to you, June, to talk about what we are doing about the to, uh, about AI skills gap in the industry. Yeah. First of all, thank you, Sudhir. And it's so great to see the amazing progress our teams have made here. Now let's talk about harnessing the power of AI despite the skill gap challenge. According to US Bureau of Labor Statistics, data scientist is the number six fastest growing job in the US and the race is on to hire. This is a challenge for organizations that are looking to apply AI across their businesses. Google Cloud addresses this challenge head on by offering a wide range of capabilities that can increase the reach of AI ML to more users and help your scarce resource, your data scientists, to achieve greater productivity. Organizations can start with our out-of-box API, like translation, transcription, and many more, where developers can directly apply Google's state-of-the-art AI to quickly solve real-world problems without the need to build AI models themselves. When you want to work with your own data to build custom models, Vertex AI offer a range of uh, ML tools to help you to build, deploy, and manage ML models. This includes the ability to start from scratch to create a fully custom models or build on top of or one of our existing models and then fine tune them for your particular needs. Starting with BigQuery ML, a SQL interface that unlocks ML capability for data analysts and simple ways to be able to build and train their models. As you had heard from Sudhir, BigQuery will support unstructured data, which means BigQuery ML would also work with unstructured data. You can now bring your own model or use a model that's pre-trained by Google directly on BigQuery object tables. The results can be stored and managed in BigQuery for further analysis or deployed to Vertex AI for real-time prediction. The next training capability is AutoML. People can create custom models quickly with their own data and with minimum data science expertise. More and more, we are seeing that even expert data scientists want to start with a base AutoML generated model, then fine tune it to achieve greater accuracy with their own data. AutoML provides advanced models trained by Google as a jumping off point for customization. Seagate, a partner for Google's data center and uses machine learning to predict recurring disk drive failures. With AutoML, they're able to achieve a precision of 98%. That's far, far more than the 70 to 80% achieved with a custom model. For users who want more control over ML, we recently announced an exciting announcement for AutoML workflows, which allows you to selectively modify each step in the model building and the deployment process and be able to tweak custom tweaks uh, for, uh, for your AutoML and giving you more control working with AutoML. We will start with structured data and expand support to unstructured data in the coming months. TabNet is a powerful algorithm developed by Google researchers that leverage neural nets for tabular data. Today, we're adding TabNet to workflow to make it easier for organization to work at a massive scale without sacrificing the explainability or accuracy. And finally, custom training, which provide the most flexibility Data scientists and ML experts can work with their familiar open source frameworks to be able to build, train, deploy, and monitor ML models five times faster with Vertex AI. For some workloads, faster is what it's all about. I am excited to introduce Vertex AI Vision, a revolutionary end-to-end -end computer vision application development service that helps you to be able to reduce the amount of time it takes to build computer vision application from days to minutes at a fraction of the cost. With an easy to use drag and drop interface and pre-trained model for common tasks, Vertex AI Vision is the one-stop shop to build, deploy, manage computer vision application. From ingestion to analysis to storage, now you can easily create computer vision application for any business need from inventory management in retail to improving safety 
in the plant workers for, in manufacturing, even traffic management in large cities. Plainsight is a leading provider of computer vision application and solutions and early adopter of Vertex AI vision. With a speed and cost efficiency benefit, Plainsight is already developing new application and revenue streams that were previously not viable. At Google, our goal is to make our products that are truly helpful to everyone, whether it's solving big problems or providing assistance in everyday life. AI has already had a profound impact in our lives, and there's even more greater potential to come. This opportunity also comes with a deep sense of responsibility to build for AI for the common good. AI that benefits all people and society. We prioritize the responsible development of AI. This includes testing to mitigate bias, prioritizing responsible use in the product design, providing transparency and developer education. We apply responsible AI to all of our products. We're committed to iterating and improving, and we'll continue to incorporate the best practices and lessons learned into the products we build. You have just seen a variety of capabilities in Vertex AI to develop AI ML models. We realize that one size doesn't fit all. We want to offer organization the choice to pick the best tool for the job at hand. Putting powerful ML capability in the hands of more people and helping data scientists build models faster means you can do more with your data and be able to feel the data-driven transformation. June, it's amazing when you go ahead and make technology accessible to more users, the kinds of results they can get, and especially AI ML from a technology perspective. Yep. But the next challenge for organizations with data and AI in hands of more users is how do you scale with confidence? Vodafone, one of the large, largest telecommunications company in the world, made a huge leap forward with its AI capabilities. First, they unified all of their data into a single data ocean in BigQuery, establishing a single source of truth and making data accessible across the organization. This unleashed a huge number of use cases and increased demand for AI ML capabilities. So next, they built AI Booster, an internal ML platform powered by Vertex AI. Now their AI development is 80% faster and more cost effective, all without compromising governance and reliability. So how did they get there? Scaling data and AI across an organization first requires strong data governance and management. And secondly, in order to move from data to AI efficiently across use cases, organizations also need to streamline end-to-end -end processes from preparing data to building, deploying, and maintaining machine learning models. Let's start with unified governance. Our data cloud provides customers with an end-to-end -end data management and governance layer with built-in intelligence to help enable trust in data and accelerate time to insight. To further these capabilities, we are announcing various innovations to Dataplex, our intelligent data fabric. Dataplex helps organizations centrally manage and govern distributed data. Today, we are introducing data lineage, so you can get complete end-to-end -end lineage from ingestion of data to analysis to machine learning models. Data quality will enable you to gain confidence in your data, which is critical to get accurate predictions. And more importantly, Dataplex is now fully integrated with Big Lake, so you can now manage fine-grained access across the organization at scale. Vertex AI integrations across our data cloud streamline access to data all the way from prototyping to production. This brings me to the centralized MLOps capabilities in Vertex AI. No matter how you train your model, our platform can register, deploy, and manage it throughout its entire life cycle. Vertex AI model registry is now GA providing a unified repository for all models to help version control, label metadata, and easily deploying for both batch and online predictions. Vertex AI Pipelines takes MLOps to the next level with serverless orchestration and automation of your ML workflows. Pre-built pipeline components are available across data sources like Dataproc, Dataflow, and training capabilities include AutoML as well as BigQuery ML. 
and to maintain model performance, model monitoring and explainable AI capabilities help you detect skew and interpret predictions. We recently announced example-based explanations, which help you mitigate data challenges, such as mislabeled examples, so you can quickly identify problems and improve model performance. Walmart's incredible digital transformation journey illustrates what's possible for organizations that choose our data cloud. Walmart's migration to BigQuery and adoption of Vertex AI has enabled them to unleash the potential of AI across the entire business, from predicting demand, to managing in-stock inventories, to optimizing supply chain, to freeing up associates to focus more on customers and serving customers. In one case, they were able to optimize processes and save $10 million of food waste every week. I love Walmart's journey. Thank you, Sudhir. It is so great to see so many great customer stories and so many exciting product announcements. To learn more, we have many amazing sessions for you and invite you to watch all of them. Here are our top sessions. And for something fun, for those of you looking to get your hands on, we're partnering with the Drone Racing League to bring you new immersive learning experience. Visit drl.io slash Google Cloud to learn how you can work with the data to be able to predict race outcome and provide tips to enhance pilot performances. We hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for attending and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. And welcome to Next. I'm Andy Goodmans, General Manager and VP of Engineering for Databases at Google Cloud. And I'm excited to share with you what's next for builders and data engineers. Later in this session, Scott Wong, VP of Infrastructure at Credit Karma, will join me to talk about their journey on Google Cloud. Today, every organization on the planet is going through some form of digital transformation. At the heart of this, always on, digitally connected world lie mission critical, data-driven applications. Powering each of these applications are operational databases that must be reliable, resilient, available, performant, and safe for users. At Google Cloud, our mission is to accelerate every organization's ability to digitally transform. And a large part of that is helping customers innovate faster with a unified, open, and intelligent data platform. We do this by focusing on four key areas. First, a unified and integrated data cloud for all your data. Second, a commitment to openness, leveraging open source and open standards. Third, infusing AI and ML across data-driven workflows. And lastly, empowering builders to be more productive and impactful. Let's start with the first focus area, creating a unified and integrated data cloud for your operational and analytical data. At Google, our mission is to make information universally accessible and useful, as evidenced by our most popular globally available products like YouTube, Google Search, Maps, and Gmail. These products leverage a uniquely integrated and scalable data architecture. We've taken these learnings and brought them into Google Cloud, making it the best place for all your data workloads. The way we've built our core services such as Cloud Spanner, Bigtable, AlloyDB, and BigQuery is truly differentiated. These services leverage Google's common infrastructure, which is unique in the industry. Our highly scalable, 
distributed storage system, our disaggregated compute and storage, and our high-performance Google-owned global networking allow us to provide industry-leading, tightly integrated operational and analytical data services. Today, for example, Spanner, our globally distributed relational database service, processes over 2 billion requests per second at peak. It has more than six exabytes of data under management and offers up to five nines availability SLA, which is simply remarkable. While Bigtable, our highly performant, fully managed NoSQL database service, processes over five billion requests per second at peak, and it has more than 10 exabytes of data under management and also offers up to five nines availability. These services offer industry-leading availability, scale, and global reach. Building on this, customers need to have easy movement of data within the data cloud. We heard you, and that's why we announced, in preview, DataStream for BigQuery. DataStream for BigQuery provides easy replication of data from operational database sources, such as AlloyDB, Postgres, MySQL, and Oracle directly into BigQuery. This is special because we worked closely with the BigQuery team to develop an optimized integration to replicate database updates in real time at very low latency. Setup is just a few simple clicks. DataStream for BigQuery is Google's next big step towards realizing our vision for the unified data cloud, combining databases, analytics, and machine learning into one single platform. But don't take my word for it. Let my colleague Gabe show you how easy it is to get started with DataStream for BigQuery. Creating a stream just requires a name, unique ID, region, source, and destination. Today, we're capturing Postgres to BigQuery. One of the great things about DataStream is it shows you the prerequisites for your source right in the UI, so you know what you need to prepare before starting the streaming. Connection profiles are used to define your source and destinations. They represent the information required to connect to an instance, like the host IP, username, and password. We've got one ready to go for the Postgres source. Once we verify we can connect, in the next step, I can customize which schemas and tables we want to bring over into BigQuery. I'll just grab two tables from our employee's schema. Destination profiles, similarly to the source, can be created beforehand. We can define a prefix here so it's easy to see which data is coming from our Postgres source. Summary looks good. One last validation check to be sure we haven't missed anything. Create and start, and right away I can start using the Explorer to see my data that's come across into BigQuery. Wasn't that simple? And there is more. To continue on this theme of easy data replication from operational databases for use cases like analytics, event-based architectures, compliance or archival, we're announcing today in preview, big table change streams. This capability joins our already existing, recently launched spanner change streams. With change streams, you can track writes, updates, and deletes so that they can be replicated to downstream systems in real time. You will see us help make your journey on our data cloud simpler as we continue to provide out of the box data movement. The second focus area is our continued commitment to open source and open standards for increased flexibility and portability without vendor lock-in. We offer managed services that are fully compatible with the most popular open source engines, such as MySQL, Postgres, and Redis. We help manage the complexity of running your databases to increase your team's agility and reduce risk. And we don't stop there. We want to help you break free from legacy proprietary databases with expensive and restrictive licensing. And in the process, help you modernize to open standards and open APIs in the cloud. Postgres, an open source database, has emerged as the leading alternative to legacy proprietary databases because of its rich functionality, ecosystem extensions, and enterprise readiness. It's not surprising that millions of users across industries have adopted Postgres. 
We're focused on making Google Cloud the best place to run your Postgres workloads. We offer you not one, not two, but three fully managed services that support the Postgres interface. First, Cloud SQL for Postgres. It is our enterprise-ready, fully managed relational database service. You get the same experience of open source Postgres with the strong manageability, availability, and security capabilities of Cloud SQL. And you can use the same service APIs to also manage your MySQL and SQL Server databases. It's no surprise that Cloud SQL is used by more than 90% of the top 100 Google Cloud customers. Second, AlloyDB is our fully managed Postgres compatible database service, ready for your top tier workloads and for modernizing your legacy proprietary databases in the cloud. In our performance tests, AlloyDB is more than four times faster than open source Postgres and two times faster than Amazon's comparable Postgres compatible service for transactional workloads. It also delivers up to 100 times faster analytical queries than standard Postgres. And open isn't just about our technology, it's also about developing an open ecosystem of partners. AlloyDB already integrates with many leading technology solutions and has a fast growing ecosystem of partners with expertise ready to support your deployments. And finally, we've also added a Postgres interface for Spanner, our transformative relational database with unlimited global scale, strong external consistency, and up to five nines availability. With the Postgres interface for Spanner, developers can take advantage of familiar tools and skills from the Postgres ecosystem. And to further democratize access to Spanner, we recently announced a free trial to give builders an easy way to try out Spanner at no cost. Get started building with Spanner today. With these capabilities, we've made Google Cloud the best home for all your Postgres workloads. And to make it easy for you to take advantage of our open data cloud, we have simplified our migration approach with the right methodology, tooling, and support to help accelerate your journey. Take advantage of the program today. The third focus area is around how we are infusing AI and ML across data-driven workloads. We use AI and ML across our database technologies to make our services more intelligent. Capabilities such as Cloud SQL cost recommenders and AlloyDB Autopilot enable DBAs and DevOps teams to manage performance and capacity for large fleets of databases. In addition to infusing AI and ML into our databases, we're providing integration with Vertex AI, our AI and ML platform, to enable model inferencing directly within the database transaction. I'm therefore excited to announce today in preview, the integration of Vertex AI with Spanner. You can now use a SQL query in Spanner to call a model in Vertex AI. With this integration, both AlloyDB and now Spanner can simply call Vertex AI models using SQL in operational transactions, allowing data scientists to build their models easily in Vertex AI and developers to access these models using the SQL query language. All these AI and ML capabilities can allow you to simplify management of your databases and enable builders to deliver intelligent applications. Our final focus area is around empowering builders to be more productive with innovative, one-of-a-kind developer experiences. Industry-leading services such as Cloud Firestore are loved by developers because of how fast one can build an application end-to-end. Now more than 4 million databases have been created in Firestore, and Firestore applications power more than 1 billion monthly active end users using Firebase Auth. We've also been pushing the envelope on database operations with observability features across our key services. We've introduced Cloud SQL Query Insights for Postgres and MySQL. In addition, we make Cloud SQL cost recommenders generally available and introduce Postgres System Insights in Preview. Today, we're excited to announce the preview of security and performance recommenders for Cloud SQL. 
These capabilities help builders optimize their database configurations and improve their security posture. Now let's see our UX leader, Katz, demo of Cloud SQL Insights in action. Insights helps me investigate and detect problematic queries and find the root cause of the problem from a single pane of glass. System Insights helps me understand the overall health of my databases. I can immediately see that the P99 of CPU utilization is at 100%. In looking at the query latency and CPU utilization graphs, I can see regular latency spikes, indicating that there are problematic queries causing high CPU utilization. To understand this further, I can navigate to Query Insights. Looking at the top level Query Insights dashboard, I am immediately drawn to the database's load graph. It confirms that there are several problems, including one that started around 915. The colors in the graph help me see that there's an increase in IO weight and an even larger increase in lock weight. Traditional monitoring tools only provide a query-centric view of performance. Insights provides in-context visualization to find which application code caused the problem. For example, the tags table is especially helpful to me as a developer, since this application was built using Django's ORM rather than by writing the SQL queries directly. Insights uses SQL Commenter, an open telemetry standard providing instrumentation to augment SQL from frameworks. This first entry for the payment driver subsidy controller and the demo send subsidy route looks like it's the problem. With this context, I can go look at the source code now to investigate further. I hope you enjoyed that demo and can now see how we aim to make our database services easy to use to help every builder focus their energy on innovation and differentiation. We've talked through a lot today. So now let's hear from Scott Wong, VP of Infrastructure at Credit Karma to learn how they've reduced operational burden and cost with Google's Data Cloud. Scott, welcome. We're glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Andy. Excited to be here. Tell me, Scott, who is Credit Karma and why did you choose Google Cloud? In 2007, Credit Karma was founded during the last housing crisis with a mission to be the consumer technology platform focused on helping our members achieve financial progress. And over the last 15 years, we've really built this around free credit scores, providing over 4 billion credit scores to our consumers across the US, UK, and Canada. And today, nearly 130 million members use our product. But financial progress to our members means much more than just credit reports. We are the go-to destination for everything related to financial goals. And to provide this, we provide personalized data-driven insights to our members to feel more confident about their major money decisions. And at the center of these insights is our data models and data systems, all being powered by Google Cloud Services today. Our cloud migration journey started almost six years ago. On the left-hand side is our infrastructure in our traditional data centers before we moved to cloud. And on the right-hand side, you can see is our current infrastructure in Google Cloud Services. We started moving to cloud with our data warehouse and that moving to BigQuery. And then we started to methodically started moving down the stack to our whole recommendations pipeline. Dataflow, Bigtable, and the AI platform were all part of that migration. You can also tell in the middle of the screen, we have a reverse ETL process. Our user store in BigQuery serves those features into Bigtable and then gets scored or recommended through our modeling scoring service, all on GKE. Those recommendations get to our members through our product 63 billion times in predictions a day. And today we think there's even more opportunity for future innovation with the possibility of Spanner and Vertex AI uh, using in our recommendation system. Oh, how are you using Google's data cloud today for your key use cases? And what are some business benefits you've achieved by moving to Google cloud? One, we really focus on making our data scientists as efficient as possible. And that meant simplifying access to our users feature store, as well as deploying their models as quickly as possible. To give you some sense of scale today, we deploy over 700 models a week as opposed to pre-cloud, it was almost 10 a quarter. Additionally, in experimentation, we do over 7x more experiments today than we did before cloud. 
And with the help of Bigtable and BigQuery, we have 10x more features deployed daily through our batch data. These gains can be attributed to what we call our unified model training, powered by BigQuery, Bigtable, Dataflow, and Google's AI platform. Nice. What makes Spanner appealing to you for your operational workloads? We're considering Spanner for our primary relational database to reduce engineering toil, drive higher efficiency and reliability to our core mission critical production database tier. We're a fast growing company need to scale. And we think Spanner provides some interesting advantages in their multi-region, global consistency and five nines availability offering natively through the product. This would be one of our most complex migration processes, moving live production data into uh, a new database tier. And so it will take a lot of engineering effort. We look forward to working with the Spanner product team on this. Thank you so much for that conversation, Scott. I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for having me, Andy. And I enjoyed being part of Google Next. As you can see from all we've spoken about today, the future of data has endless possibilities. Tune in to all our sessions at Next for more details on the announcements you heard today. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of Next. I'm Sachin Gupta, VPGM for Infrastructure at Google Cloud. The roles of enterprise architects and developers are evolving. Not only do you have to keep the lights on, you are expected to stay on top of the ever-changing trends and technologies that create business value. And you have to do all of this while lowering costs and improving performance, so IT infrastructure runs quickly and smoothly. Your role is critical to a successful transformation. For example, adopting technologies like AI ML and containers is becoming vital to businesses, with more than 76% of surveyed enterprises saying that AI projects are their top priority. And meanwhile, security breaches are so common these days, it doesn't even make the top news. They are disruptive and costly and can be avoided with the right preventative methods. After all, as Gardner says, 99% of cloud breaches are due to human error. With Google Cloud, you can innovate faster and more easily while optimizing costs. We know organizations like yours still have a lot of infrastructure to migrate, and we are committed to helping you migrate more securely and efficiently. Global customers and local partners like Palo Alto Networks, H&M, and Major League Baseball rely on us to deliver scalable, high-performing, highly available cloud infrastructure and services. A big area we're investing in is the expansion of our global footprint to meet the unprecedented global customer demand. Today, I'll be discussing how we are partnering with you to help drive business value in three key ways. First, we are driving business transformation and achieving new outcomes with industry-leading AI ML, unparalleled security, and modern infrastructure services and solutions that are designed for your industry. Second, we're helping you optimize your workload performance while reducing costs. And finally, from migration to management, our mission is to help you unlock this value simply and easily. Customers come to Google Cloud to transform, and innovate. Let me share a little more about how we are driving this change through AI leadership, invisible security, and cutting edge industry solutions. AI is in our DNA. From AI powered search to YouTube recommendation engines and Google Assistant, we have decades of experience running scaled, diverse ML workloads and industry leading AI infrastructure products and solutions. Wayfair is using Vertex AI to forecast global customer demand 
ensuring customers can quickly access what they need, and to automate and personalize AI-powered customer support. Salesforce is using performance-optimized cloud TPU v4 for conversational scale-out AI. These outcomes are made possible because of the innovation across our AI stack. And it starts with hardware choices and performance that help you keep pushing the limits of AI in large models. Cloud TPU v4 delivers industry-leading ML training performance and scale. With six terabits per second interconnect, you can run large-scale training workloads up to 80% faster and up to 50% cheaper compared to alternatives. And that's how companies like Cohere deliver cutting-edge natural language processing faster and with a lower carbon footprint. We're also announcing new A2 Ultra GPUs built on NVIDIA's A180 gig GPUs with high-speed memory. AI Singapore has reduced the loading time of large-scale language models by 40% and increased throughput by over 50% with A2+, resulting in increased productivity. And customers are also using Google Batch to orchestrate and schedule AI jobs of any scale. With Batch, our customer Locomation was able to unlock AI insights from their autonomous trucks 80% faster. Google is committed to making AI and machine learning more open and accessible. To further this, in partnership with Meta, we recently co-founded the PyTorch Foundation. And for over a decade, we've contributed to critical AI projects like TensorFlow and JAX. Today, we are announcing a new industry consortium, the OpenXLA project that will unite an ecosystem of leading machine learning compiler technologies and accelerate and simplify machine learning innovation. These open source AI contributions enable you to take your AI idea and turn it into reality easily and at low cost. Next, I want to share how we're transforming security. At Google Cloud, we are championing a future of invisible security, where security is engineered in, and operations are simplified. We package the expertise that we use to protect our own business and our billions of users and make it available to you. You can easily deploy a wide range of tools depending on your own risk profile, from prevention to detection to remediation. Today, I want to highlight the next step in our cybersecurity journey as we welcome Mandiant to Google Cloud. By taking advantage of Google Cloud's existing security portfolio, our Google Cybersecurity Action Team and Mandiant's leading cyber threat intelligence, you can stay protected at every stage of the security lifecycle. Cloud Armor is another security innovation that provides advanced ML-powered DDoS and WAF protection for web apps, services, and APIs. It has prevented some of the largest DDoS attacks on the planet with zero impact to customers. Recently, the largest HTTPS attack was staged against a Cloud Armor customer. It was 76% larger than anything previously reported, the equivalent of Wikipedia's daily requests in 10 seconds. And the customer experienced no impact. And for regulated industries with stringent and country-specific requirements, we offer controls to meet your digital sovereignty objectives. Sovereign controls allows you to define the location of your core data, set access permissions, and control your cryptographic keys. Supervised Cloud, which is coming soon, is a fully partner-managed and operated solution that supports data, operational sovereignty needs, and country or region-specific regulatory requirements. For highly sensitive workloads that require the most stringent security requirements, Hosted Cloud offers air-gapped hardware and software, including managed infrastructure, AI ML, and database services. Since transformation takes different forms for different industries, we partner with customers to build industry-leading, innovative solutions. Together with the CME Group, we plan to transform the derivatives market through technology, expanding access, and creating efficiencies for market participants. 
In telecom, communication service providers like Bell Canada rely on Google's network to expand globally and deploy 5G networks with Google Distributed Cloud Edge. Google Distributed Cloud Edge GPU optimized configurations bring the power of GPU acceleration and machine learning to enable the future of retail. Customers and partners such as 66 Degrees, AWM Smart Shelf, and Ipsotech are using GPU optimization to deliver innovative retail solutions at the edge, including AR in the store, shelf stockout notifications for quicker restocking, and cashierless checkout to reduce lines. In media and entertainment, we provide solutions to customers like Unext, with streaming built on the same Google infrastructure we've tested and tuned to serve YouTube's 2 billion users globally. To get a better picture of how our media and entertainment industry customers innovate with Google Cloud, I'm proud to introduce Senior Vice President, Technical Infrastructure of Major League Baseball, Truman Boys. Major League Baseball's technology mission is to connect with our fans. Our infrastructure team has historically maintained applications on-prem, and now we have unlimited compute from the public cloud, and this allowed us to shut down four data centers, modernize all of our infrastructure, and to spin things up rapidly. And in the off-season, we scale it back. Google's cloud helps us to understand the entire fan journey and artificial intelligence allows us to derive a better connection to them. We're able to have personalized content with that fan. It gets richer over time as we learn more about them. Working with Google, we're preserving the history of baseball, going back into the 1940s, and we're able to make highlights available to our fans. Google Cloud hosts all of these video clips for us. And now we have an opportunity to enrich this format beyond what it is today. We're looking to modernize the entire platform that we have and move into delivery through Media CDN. Major League Baseball and Google Cloud are connecting with our fans, so that experience is happening in venue as well as a digital experience, and we're knocking it out of the park. Thank you so much, Truman. It is amazing to see how MLB is innovating for the fan experience, leveraging Google technologies like AI, media CDN, and the reliability and elasticity of our global infrastructure. We've shared a number of ways in which we've built our infrastructure to enable transformation. But we also continue to build solutions and products tuned to support your top workloads and data applications. And we've optimized these for both performance and cost. One example of this is Google Cloud VMware Engine. VMware Engine is a fully managed native Google service that helps you lift and shift your VMware applications to Google Cloud faster and easier. We are the first external provider to support VMware's Cloud Universal Program, which makes it easier for you to migrate to the cloud. And with built-in point-and-click migration tools and our instant provisioning feature, you can get workloads running in your private cloud in less than one hour. Customers like LIQ have saved 60% in infrastructure costs with VMware Engine by migrating 80% of their business applications and half of their databases. We are continuing to scale VMware Engine by increasing support from 64 to 96 nodes per private cloud, all with four nines of availability in a single site and a dedicated 100 gigabit per second network. This provides high performance and reliability for your most demanding production workloads. It is no wonder that customers like Mitel could overhaul their unified communications platform and data infrastructure with VMware Engine in less than 90 days. Another example of workload optimization is a recently announced Google Cloud High Performance Computing Toolkit. Several decades ago, Quantum computing was just a concept. But now, with HPC Toolkit, quantum AI is easy and accessible. HPC Toolkit is an open source tool 
from Google that helps you quickly and easily create repeatable turnkey HPC clusters. The toolkit comes with several blueprints and broad support for third-party components such as the Slurm scheduler, Intel DAOs, and DDN Lustre storage. Next, I'm really excited to announce C3 VMs. It is the first VM on the market to feature the latest generation of Intel Sapphire Rapids processors and is built on new Intel Google co-designed infrastructure processing units, or IPUs. All of this together means differentiated performance, security, isolation, and flexibility. C3 is the first VM in our fleet with 200 gigabits per second low latency networking to support a variety of workloads such as data processing, web serving, and high throughput HPC workloads. Because clusters can be scaled and parallelized more densely, we're seeing customers and partners like Ansys and Snapchat completing jobs faster. And Parallel Works is seeing 10x faster performance with C3 compared to the prior generation. Contact your sales rep to join our private preview. Moving on to another product built to leverage the IPU, Google Cloud Hyperdisk is the next generation of block storage, which will be available on both Compute Engine and GKE. We are decoupling block storage performance from the VM, allowing you to tune your storage performance to your workload needs. We estimate you'll see around 50% better total cost of ownership than persistent disk, and 80% higher IOPS per vCPU compared to any other hyperscaler. We have built cost optimization into many of our core products, and we have exciting new capabilities to announce. Our new flexible committed use discounts, or flex cuts, can make it easier to save and manage costs across teams by giving you region and VM family flexibility. With AutoClass, customers like Redivis are reducing storage costs and achieving better price predictability in a simple way. It automatically transitions objects to cooler storage based on the last time they were accessed and transitions to standard storage upon access. That brings us to the third way we drive business value, ease of use. As cloud platforms have become more versatile, they often have also become more complex to adopt and operate. That's why Google Cloud strives for radical simplicity from migration through management. Speaking of migration, our new migration center can reduce complexity, time, and cost by providing key capabilities in migrating and modernizing to virtual machines, containers, or serverless computing. With Migration Center, Viant, a large media company in partnership with Slalom, successfully migrated an entire data center to Google Cloud in less than six months. We also have a new offering in our mainframe modernization solution called Dual Run. Dual Run lets you replicate your mainframe workload in Google Cloud and run the two environments in parallel. This allows you to confirm successful operations in Google Cloud before your cutover, which can massively reduce risk. And that's why customers and partners across industries, like financial services company Santander, are seeing success with Dual Run. We also want to simplify the way you manage and scale. Managed instance groups, or MIGs, with auto-scaling use application metrics to radically simplify and improve operational efficiency, allowing you to scale in and out without manual intervention. And with the power of Google's ML, MIGs can predictably scale in and out based on historical data. These three defining pillars for Google Cloud infrastructure, transformative, optimized, and easy, are the key tenets behind our intentional engineering efforts. This is why so many customers trust Google Cloud and what helps to power such innovation across the industry. I invite you to try Google Cloud and our innovative new releases. We look forward to delighting you. Thank you.
My name is Omar Gandhi, a Senior Director of Product Management from Google Cloud, and I'm joined by my colleague, Jerome Sims. Hi, Omar. And we're both excited to share with you some new products and capabilities we're introducing at Next this year. As Amar said, I'm Jerome Sims, Director of Product Management at Google, and I'm focused on Google's DevOps portfolio. It's great to be here with Amar to share these exciting updates with our DevOps, sysadmin, and operator friends. Now, Amar will kick off the session. Thank you, Jerome. At Google Cloud, our mission is to accelerate every organization's journey to digitally transform their business. And when it comes to DevOps, we serve customers of all sizes and types today. While some of you are early on your journey, some are way ahead of their peers. Regardless of where you are on your DevOps journey, we want to help. Let me give you some examples of transformations we've enabled recently. First, Gordon Food Service. This is the largest family-operated food distribution company in North America. With Google Cloud, they've been able to increase the number of deployments from just four times a year to 2,900 times a year. That's a huge jump. And Lowe's, America's leading retailer in home improvement. I go there every other weekend. They went from doing just one release every two weeks to over 20 releases every single day. Or Vodafone, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, one of the world's leading telecommunication companies. They used our Vertex AI and DevOps services to build a cutting edge AI ML platform to enable next generation AI use cases for their customers. As you saw, we partner with companies of all sizes to enable such transformations. And our goal is to make DevOps on Google Cloud easy for your organization as well. And to fulfill this mission, we focus on four key areas which address the key challenges we hear from these customers every day. First is security. Security in DevOps has become increasingly critical, and we are seeing more and more hackers preying on the security vulnerabilities of your software supply chain today. Software supply chain, simply put, is the journey that your software code takes from development all the way to production. Software supply chain attacks are on a sharp rise in recent years. Gartner predicts that 45% of organizations worldwide will have experienced a software supply chain attack by 2025. Number two, multi-cloud. More and more organizations are adopting multi-cloud today for many reasons, including the need for distributed applications, data sovereignty, security, compliance, et cetera. And your DevOps teams are being asked to support such multi-cloud deployments. However, this is not easy. How do we ensure efficiency, security, and consistency as we develop, deliver, and deploy across multiple clouds? This becomes a critical challenge. Number three, sustainability. Given the global climate change, all organizations are rising to the challenge. Virtually every team in every enterprise today is looking at how it can help their organization reach their carbon emission targets. Now, Google has long been a pioneer in achieving sustainability in our internal operations. And now we want to provide tools to support sustainable development and operations for all organizations. And finally, integrating and scaling your DevOps tool chain. This is still a challenge for many organizations. A typical DevOps tool chain can consist of many open source or commercial products and span across multiple areas. This can lead to large, complex, and fragmented tool chains that are very difficult to integrate and scale. At Google Cloud, we're working diligently on integrating our DevOps tool chain within the broader ecosystem. And we also want to support you to run your DevOps tools on Google Cloud with ease and scale. This year, we are launching many new products and capabilities across all of these four areas. And now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Jerome, to tell you more. Thanks, Amar. Let's dive into some details of our announcements today. As Amar just mentioned, software supply chain security is becoming an increasingly critical concern for many DevOps teams. And to help you better protect your software supply chains, we're very excited to bring you Software Delivery Shield. 
Software Delivery Shield is a comprehensive yet modular set of capabilities that spans a set of Google Cloud products, delivering a fully managed end-to-end -end solution to help protect your software supply chain. It can start from helping to protect your applications at the local developer environment, enhance the security posture of your software supply, build a more secure CI-CD pipeline, and finally, protect your application once deployed to production. On top of that, we let you establish, maintain, and verify a chain of trust along your supply chain through policy enforcement. At Next this year, we're introducing new capabilities across many of these areas. First, shifting all the way left to help you better secure your applications during development, we are launching Cloud Workstations, a new service which provides a fully managed local development environment on Google Cloud with built-in security measures. If you're worried about source code exfiltration or privacy risks, Cloud Workstations allows you to limit access to sensitive resources or the public internet, or even use a fully private gateway. If tomorrow you patch a vulnerability or base image, with Cloud Workstation's forced image update, your developers will automatically have updates reflected in their own local environments the next day. With Cloud Workstations, you can be much better off in terms of securing your local development environments. More than that, we are also giving your developers tools to help them code faster with greater security. With Cloud Code Source Protect, developers will get real-time security feedback as they work in their IDE, such as identification of vulnerable dependencies and licensing information. This quick and actionable feedback can allow developers to promptly make corrections to their code at the beginning of the software development process, thereby saving hours of time that would otherwise be spent in costly future fixes. When your developers are coding in cloud workstations, Artifact Registry and Container Analysis can give them a secure space to store and manage their container images and language packages, and also scan them for vulnerabilities. We are now adding more language support for vulnerability scanning. You can now do on-push scanning for Maven and Go packages in containers and for non-containerized Maven packages as well. To help you improve the security of your open source dependencies, our Assured Open Source Software Service provides a trusted source for you to access open source packages curated and tested by Google. This service now provides over 250 packages across Java and Python. These packages are built in our own secured pipelines and regularly scanned, analyzed, and fuzz tested for vulnerabilities. It also includes verifiable Salsa build provenance. Salsa stands for Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts. It is a framework that brings industry-recognized best practices for software supply chain integrity. In continuing to help secure your pipelines, I'm really excited to announce Cloud Build. Our fully managed continuous integration platform now supports Salsa Level 3 builds. In addition to providing an ephemeral and isolated build environment, Cloud Build now generates authenticated and non-falsifiable build provenance for both containerized applications and non-containerized Java packages and also displays security insights for built applications. Finally, to help secure the runtime environment, we're introducing a new set of security features in GKE. GKE can now help assess your container security posture and give you active security guidance. It also includes many out-of-the-box security capabilities. Well, how about we just take a look at the demo now? Hey, everyone, and thanks, Jerome. My name is Victor Salve. I'm a product manager here at Google Cloud, and we're going to take a quick look at a brand new capability within GKE. So GKE's new security posture management capability provides foundational uh, Kubernetes security for your clusters by analyzing your workloads. And this includes things like configuration concerns, so like your pod spec security settings. It also looks at your 
images, you're running images and scans them for vulnerabilities on a daily basis. So if I drill into this report, I have all sorts of ways I can slice and dice. So for example, I can you know, look at it from a workload perspective, namespace, so forth. I can even filter by severity, things like my critical and highs, and get a report of just the things that I want to prioritize and address most immediately. And in this case, I have a vulnerability in Zlib, but it also gives me specific remediation. And that's one of the things that stands out with posture management for GKE is it gives you direct insights into where these things are happening in your system. So the affected workloads, how to remediate them, and so forth. If I slice this by workload, I can actually look into specific workloads and see what's affecting them. So in this case, there's a number of vulnerabilities. In my currency ser service workload, I have you know, configuration concern. So I can go in and actually get specific remediation instructions directed right at this particular issue for this workload. So I know how to address it. It's not just a vague concern. And of course, I can then just go in and update it in my pod spec and make sure that uh, I'm running with the best security possible for my containers and for my applications. With these many features in GKE, we're helping to make security easy for every customer who is using our fully managed Kubernetes services. For customers on Cloud Run, our serverless platform, we're introducing new enhancements to Cloud Run's security panel. It now displays software supply chain security insights, such as the Salsa build level compliance information, build providence, and vulnerabilities found in running services. When your developers are building application, oftentimes they will need databases. I'm happy to introduce Cloud SQL Security Recommender powered by ActiveAssist. Cloud SQL is the fully managed relational database from Google Cloud. With Security Recommender, it can now automatically monitor the security posture of your databases, alert you on potential security vulnerabilities, and also provide guidance to help mitigate the risks. Today, more and more DevOps teams are being asked to support multi-cloud deployment. To make multi-cloud easier for you, we're introducing a set of new features to our Anthos platform. Anthos is a cloud-centric container platform to run modern apps anywhere consistently at scale. With the newly introduced features, Anthos customers can now enjoy a unified management experience everywhere from a single Google Cloud console. And to drive consistent security, governance, and observability across a fleet of clusters spanning all environments, whether on-prem, hybrid, or multi-cloud. In addition, Anthos now supports VM deployments for your edge environments. So customers can modernize their edge applications and infrastructure using a common platform that supports both containers and VMs. Sustainability has been a core value of Google from the very beginning. And to help our customers develop and operate more sustainably, I'm pleased to announce that Carbon Footprint is now generally available. Carbon Footprint introduces a new level of transparency to support you in meeting your climate goals. Now let me invite my colleague Cynthia to show you a quick demo of Carbon Footprint. Thanks, Jerome. Hi, everyone. My name is Cynthia. I'm the product manager of Google Cloud Carbon Footprint. You can access Carbon Footprint from the console navigation under Tools. Here, you can see the Carbon Footprint associated with your GCP usage. We use granular machine-level energy consumption data coupled with hourly emissions factors, which is then apportioned to each customer based on usage. For more details, you can see the emissions broken down into scopes one, two, and three, all of which are following the greenhouse gas protocol, carbon reporting, and accounting standards. You can also see a monthly trend chart together with breakdowns by project, by product, and by region. As Google invests in enough renewable energy and carbon credits to neutralize all of our operational greenhouse gas emissions, the net operational emissions associated with your Google Cloud usage are also zero. Beyond this dashboard, you can also drill down to the data through scheduling and export into BigQuery, which you can then use to save to Google Sheets or to customize your own dashboards using Looker or Data Studio. If you have ActiveAssist enabled, 
From either the Carbon Footprint UI or Recommendations Hub, you can review the projects identified as idle and most likely unattended through machine learning. You can choose to shut down or reclaim these resources, which will not only reduce your carbon footprint, but also help you save cost. With the GA of Carbon Footprint, we believe it will help organizations achieve a much greener operations on Google Cloud. As previously discussed, integrating and scaling your DevOps toolchain is a challenge for many DevOps teams. And for that, I'm happy to announce our managed service for Prometheus is now GA. It offers a fully managed and easy to use monitoring service based on open source Prometheus with the speed and scale brought to you by Google Cloud. With this service, there is no longer a need to federate, add resources manually, or devote time to maintaining your monitoring infrastructure. You can focus on scaling your business and not Prometheus. In addition, to make continuous deployment easier for you, we added integration between Cloud Deploy, our fully managed continuous deployment service, and Cloud Run, our leading serverless runtime environment. With this integration in place, you will be able to do continuous deployment through Cloud Deploy directly to Cloud Run with one-click approvals and rollbacks, enterprise security, and built-in delivery metrics. Next, log information is very useful for our DevOps teams. And to make the use of logs easier on Google Cloud, I'm excited to announce Log Analytics, a new feature of cloud logging. Through an innovative partnership with BigQuery, cloud logging now allows your DevOps teams to get more value out of the logs through the power of SQL queries. Having your logs readily accessible in BigQuery, you can also leverage BigQuery's innovative machine learning for more advanced use cases. Well, everyone, that's everything I have today. Our teams work super hard to bring you all of these new products and capabilities, and I hope you're as excited about them as I am. Now, let me pass it back to Amar. Thanks, Jerome, for sharing those exciting announcements with us. With these capabilities, your organization can adopt a more secure, intelligent, and sustainable DevOps practice. If you want to learn more, and I'm sure you do, we invite you to check out all the other sessions in the Operate Track. Our subject matter experts will take you through them in more detail. And last but not least, we have just released the 2022 edition of the State of DevOps Report. You can download it by scanning this QR code or from the additional resources section down below. Thank you, and on behalf of Jerome and I, we hope you have a great next 2022. Thank you for joining me and the entire Google Cloud team today. And a special welcome for what's next for security professionals. My name is Sunil Pody, and I'm the VP and General Manager for Google Cloud Security. As many of you know, organizations large and small are realizing that digital transformation and the changing threat landscape requires a ground up security transformation. Attackers' tactics, techniques, and procedures have evolved as their targets have shifted and their desired outcomes have changed. So long gone are the days of a limited number of malicious nation state actors only targeting specific governments or critical infrastructure. These days, new normal is persistent attacks and off the shelf attack tooling leveraged by sophisticated threat actor gangs and nation states. And these folks are primarily focused on financial gain and business disruption across the mainstream enterprise, from the mid-market credit union bank to a very large enterprise in the Fortune 500. 
And to tell us more directly from the front lines, I would like to welcome Sandra Joyce, Mandian's EVP of Intelligence and Government Affairs. And it's my great honor to introduce her and the entire Mandian family into Google uh, since the recent acquisition. Sandra? Thank you, Sunil, and greetings to our audience at Google Next. As a new member of Google Cloud family, Mandiant brings expertise in threat intelligence and consulting to double down on Google's commitment to security. At Mandiant Threat Intelligence, we're always vigilant, tracking threat actors across the cyber domain as they seek to spy, steal, and sabotage the networks of organizations around the world. While cyber attacks used to play out completely behind closed doors, the threat has changed. And we're seeing an enormous amount of activity in full public view. State and criminal adversaries aren't just quietly hacking victims. They're creating public spectacles, which are designed to undermine the credibility of institutions and companies. Despite rumors to the contrary, ransomware is not dead. Those actors are still going strong, but the nature of their activity is always changing. Criminals simply need to find some way, any way, to compel victims to pay. These actors know they're undermining the businesses they target and they will not just stop at leaks. We've seen these criminals reach out to partners or customers or even to the media to garner interest in the leak and create public pressure for the victim. Unfortunately, many businesses find themselves in the impossible position of having to make a decision about preserving their data and, or acquiescing to threat actors. Nation state actors are playing a very similar game. A recent major attack on Albania included network disruption and leaked information similar to what you might see in many criminal cases. These governments are taking a page out of the cyber criminal playbook. But not all cyber activities are as straightforward. Information operations seek to target the hearts and minds of their audience, and threat actors use the cyber domain to carry out these types of campaigns. The information operations we see are designed to attack institutions like governments, alliances, or even democracy itself. We're now even seeing these nation states use information operations to target competing companies. For instance, an information operations we call Dragon Bridge has been posing on social media as residents living near a mineral processing facility. These fabricated online personas complain about the facility in order to stop competition of their country's activities. They use influence operations to bolster their country's market share while attacking competitors with influence operations. There are a lot of things driving threat actors to their targets. Some victims are targets of opportunity that are compromised by actors. Our supply chain has already proven to be an effective means of gaining access to downstream victims, and aggregated access has been abused by both criminals and nation states to great effect. APT29 is targeting technology companies to gain access to their customers. In Ukraine, broad access has been abused to great effect in a destructive attack. What kind of big data might interest an adversary? Data that might be used to track people, for instance. We've seen threat actors compromise hospitality, airlines, and other travel resources to track people of interest. APT39, one threat actor that we track, has a history of targeting people directly with spear phishing attempts, but they also target organizations with data on their victims, a potentially more fruitful and efficient means of doing business. Another threat actor, APT42, targets dissidents, activists, journalists, and academics who are critical of that country's activities. It is our mission to ensure that these activities are called out and provide defenders the tools and intelligence that they need to detect, block, prioritize, and respond to threats. Mannion and Google Cloud share a strong commitment to security and will work together to keep our customers, defenders, and the entire global community safe. Back to you, Sunil. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sandra. I'm so excited that you and the Mandian team, alongside the Threat Intel team, are joining Google Cloud. Now, as many of you know, Mandian clearly shares our mission to reinvent how enterprises detect and respond to threats and incidents. Mandian's products, services, and expertise will all combine to enhance our Google Cloud security portfolio and amplify our joint vision to keep customers safe. Now, here at Google Cloud, we continue to champion invisible security to help you move from today's reality, where security is bolted on as an afterthought, to a future where cloud security is engineered in, operations are simplified, and shared responsibility evolves to a model of shared fate, where the cloud provider has true skin in the game. 
Now, you might be asking why invisible security now? As you heard from Sandra, mitigating advanced and persistent threats can be difficult for enterprises if they don't have the resources, the talent, or the security engineering capabilities of a Google or a handful of other cutting edge organizations is ultimately what keeps some of these uh, you know, actors at bay. So that begets the question, are these mainstream enterprises, can they ever be protected unless they can be like Google? And imagine if enterprises of all sizes could re-platform on the same cloud, use the same tools, and use the same best practices that protect Google. That's essentially what we're doing with Google Cloud. And so first, we are helping enterprises become Google by providing the industry's most trusted cloud. And at the same time, knowing that most enterprises will take a, a while before they fully adopt cloud, we are bringing the best of Google to enterprises with security solutions for your on-prem, private, or multi-cloud environments. And we are helping organizations address these top-of-mind security initiatives across a variety of dimensions starting with cloud governance and digital sovereignty. Now, as most of you know, digital sovereignty has become top of mind for many of you internationally. Governance and sovereignty are global issues with regulations and many unique compliance requirements across a wide set of regions. So the core of Google's and Google Cloud's approach is putting our sovereign controls in your hands. So this goes above and beyond data location and protection from external access, it includes predefined residency controls, as well as assured workloads. And as most of you know, we have been focused on strengthening our sovereign cloud with trusted partnerships. And in addition to T-Systems for Germany, we have now embarked on deep and strategic alliances with Thales for France, Telecom Italia for Italy, and Vincent for Spain, and with many more to come. So now while sovereignty is key, managing and understanding cloud posture and risk is essential to a wholesome experience in cloud. Now, we help teams understand their Google Cloud security posture and risk profile by incorporating world-class innovations, starting with Forsady, a recent groundbreaking technology and an acquisition into Security Command Center. With this new addition, you can now fully understand your attack posture. You can prioritize, contextualize vulnerability findings. And, but that's not all, because you can now step ahead and with Forsity built into SCC, it allows us to provide advanced attack path simulations so you can apply targeted actions before attackers can take advantage of high-risk vulnerabilities. So in addition to governance and cloud risk management on GCP, another area that needs to be reimagined by the CISO and the entire security team is security all operations all up across all your environments, cloud and on-premise. And on this journey, instead of having siloed SIM and SOAR and Threat Intel solutions, our new Google Cloud Security Operations solution converges security operations capabilities so that security teams can now pivot faster and manage alerts more effectively between Chronicle, SIM, SOAR, and our best-in-class Threat Intel. And with the addition of Mandiant's leading in incident response services, in-depth threat intelligence gained from the front lines, and Mandian's Advantage platform, all of these will collectively help us accelerate your security operations transformation. This combined approach will help organizations move from not just modernizing security operations to a state of proactive cyber defense, which ultimately we believe is the future of security operations. And now to tell us more about how leading organizations are transforming security it's my great pleasure to welcome my friend and a great partner and a customer, Bashar from Schwab. Over to you, Bashar. Thank you, Sunil. Transforming security for me is all about how security can be a business enabler while making sure the team embraces change and leverages all the latest cloud native security controls available to us. To transform our security program, we are really focused on three key areas. Security transformation to support business growth, zero trust by default, and threat detection and response going cloud native. Now let's dig a little bit deeper on securing our cloud transformation. For my team and I, our what isn't really changing. In other words, we aren't taking more risk just because we are embracing the cloud. And our risk appetite has largely stayed the same. 
But what has changed is the how. Now, what does that mean to us? It means that just because we used to do things a certain way, mostly in legacy data centers, doesn't mean we should do them the same way in the cloud. Yes, we need to stay true to our risk appetite, but we also need to use this as an opportunity to innovate, to champion and embrace change, to do things differently, if and where it makes sense. To use the power of hyperscale cloud infrastructure, cloud native controls, and AI and machine learning to achieve greater automation. I want to use machines to reduce my team's toil and enable faster decision making based on data sets we weren't even able to analyze previously due to scale and various constraints. Now, as I mentioned, our second key focus area is all about embracing zero trust architecture at scale. For us, that means putting identity at the center of all decisions and removing implicit trust relationships. We focus instead on establishing an explicit trust for each transaction. Contacts and visibility are the other dimensions that are crucial to a successful implementation of zero trust, in my opinion. So how do we make sure we have visibility and contacts from as many sources and signals as possible to dynamically and continually assess access policies on the fly? How do we make sure that works where our teams are, where these days is not likely in the office? Ultimately, zero trust is all about linking identity and access to prevention strategy. But realistically, it dovetails into our third key focus area, which is rethinking threat, incident detection, and response. For me, scalable visibility is the foundation to modernizing threat detection and response especially in a world where our data sources continue to grow exponentially. The only way to process all of that security into contextual data and actually make it useful is to embrace cloud native technologies to ensure scale and speed. Scale is super important to us. It ultimately enables us to use advanced analytics to make better and faster decisions. There's also the harsh reality of security talent availability in our industry today. My belief is that we need to leverage machines to do more, to help us see more, and to make decisions on our behalf where it makes sense. That being said, people and expertise will continue to be important, even if they are outside of your direct organization. That's why choosing the right security partner is key, especially in the context of security transformation. Make sure you choose partners based on a shared vision of the outcomes you want to achieve together. The last thing I want to leave you with is that make sure your team doesn't get hung up on previous security patterns. Push them to embrace change and innovate using all the latest tools at your disposal. And with that, Sunil, thank you for having me and back to you. Thanks, Bashar. Bringing the best zero trust access for users to apps and apps to apps is top of mind for many of you. So we've made significant investments in our Beyond Corp Alliance alongside strategic partners such as Palo Alto and a variety of other partners in the ecosystem. This now gives you comprehensive zero trust options to secure private and SaaS app access while mitigating internet threats across managed or unmanaged devices. However, successfully adopting a zero trust security architecture isn't always easy. So to help we have packaged our proven experience and best practices with our cybersecurity action team and select partners. With this, we are, they are available to support anything from exploratory zero trust conversations to architecture reviews to implementation support. So now we know implicit trust that we've covered so far can create you know, an opportunity for insider threat management and other significant security risks not only in the context of access, but also the software supply chain. In my mind, that's the last green space of potential opportunity to, to be really reimagined within an enterprise security posture. And to further help enterprises secure software supply chains, we're introducing an all new offering called Software Delivery Shield. Software Delivery Shield takes this complex challenge with a tested approach based on best practices that we use internally and to secure our own software supply chains for 100,000 plus developers here. And so to double click on a specific area, 
we have made significant progress on Assured Open Source software. Very excited to announce the preview for Assured Open Source that now provides access to the same open source software packages that Google depends on, allowing you to benefit directly from Google's own in-depth end-to-end OSS best practices. So in addition to everything I just covered, we are also releasing a wide variety of innovations across our entire security portfolio. To hear more about them or to learn from others, join our breakout sessions to go deeper into the topics as well as engage forward looking beyond Cloud Next. Now, we are so excited to help you become like Google with our most trusted cloud and by bringing security magic to you wherever you are as our two fundamental pillars of cloud security here at Google. And one thing I wanted to highlight was that in this journey of modernizing security, either on GCP or wherever you are, unlike some of our peers, we are chosen to actually offer best-in-class partner capabilities in conjunction with first-party Google solutions in a cohesive experience versus an all-or-nothing capability. So in closing, you may recognize that the pace of innovation on this path to invisible security has not slowed down. In fact, if anything, it has continued to accelerate, especially with Mandiant now in the mix. So I hope you'll join us and our partners on this journey as we reinvent security to meet the requirements of tomorrow. Thanks again, stay secure, and have a great rest of next. everyone. It is an honor to kick off this session as the new leader for the Google Workspace business. Some of you are current customers who use Workspace every day at work, and some of you are considering it for the first time. Regardless of which camp you're in, every time that you use Gmail or Google Chat, Calendar, Drive, Docs, Meet in your daily life, you are using Workspace. Bridging communication and collaboration across these products is the magic of Workspace. I've been leading the development of these products for the past few years, and it has been remarkable to see that Workspace has become the world's most popular productivity tool, relied on by more than 3 billion users across the planet. Now, serving billions of users every day gives us incredible insight into the human experience, and this insight is the heartbeat of our innovation. Our mission is to meaningfully connect people so they can create, build, and grow together. We're here for you as you grow and build your business. Whether you're a mom and pop shop or a small business or a global corporation, more than 8 million customers entrust Workspace today, and we could not be more enthusiastic to fulfill that responsibility. Hybrid work challenges have dominated recent headlines. I have the good fortune to talk to customers every week, and what I hear from them is that flexibility is the key. Achieving flexibility relies on solving two core issues. First, overcoming the gaps between the people working in the office and people working remotely. Second, securing data and preventing cyber attacks everywhere that work happens. Now, for many businesses, the physical office is no longer the center of gravity for work. But as they look to establish a hybrid workplace that's energized with ideas and a drive for getting things done, many are finding that their legacy tools just aren't meeting their needs. So why are organizations struggling with hybrid work? Well, apart from deciding when and how you come together in the office, there's also the question of how they can harness the effectiveness and the fun of creating together in the same room. They want that power without giving up the well-being that comes with the best of the hybrid workplace, like fewer commutes and more focus time. The good news is that we're right there with you. Our teams live and breathe hybrid. And here's what we're building into Workspace to help make hybrid the very best experience for everyone. Now first, let's acknowledge 
that meetings are not going away, but they can be dramatically improved. To make the most of meetings, we've introduced features like automatic light adjustments and noise cancellation so that you can look and sound your best. Companion mode gives everyone a front row seat in hybrid meetings, whether they're joining from their phone or from a conference room. And to reduce digital fatigue, we've added features like co-presenting and the ability to unpin your own video tile. Now beyond meetings, creating community and spaces, enabling co-creation directly into the conversation with docs is something that we've pioneered in Workspace. With Smart Canvas, we are taking real-time co-creation to that next level by making docs come alive. A simple at mention in a document can bring in recommended people, meetings, and data to create a flow, which allows teams to stay focused instead of switching between tools and tabs. You can even hold a meeting directly within a doc with one click, bringing the voices and faces of your team in a live discussion without ever leaving your document. Now, once you've set yourself up for success in hybrid work, how can you be sure that your data and people are working in a secure environment, no matter what their location or their device? There's a tendency to think that securing people and data in a hybrid environment is more challenging than before. Well, that's only if you're coming on from systems that were built in the legacy pre-cloud era. These systems have security bolted on as an afterthought and frankly, simply cannot scale to the threats that we face today. Workspace has always been cloud only. This means that you are benefiting from decades of Google's deep expertise in threat protection, AI, and global scale. This is deep computer science that you simply cannot develop overnight. The safety of our customers and their data isn't just baked into our solution. It is a fundamental part of how we develop software here at Google. Our cloud-native zero-trust security model protects your data against both external threats and internal risks. Today, Gmail blocks more than 99% of spam, phishing attempts, and malware before they even reach our users. That same protection is extended to all your documents in Google Drive. Millions of customers have already made the move to Workspace, and I'm so inspired by their stories. Let me share just three of them. Korean Air carries more than 27 million passengers in a given year. They adopted Workspace in July 2019 to improve internal collaboration and communication, such as more fluid exchanges between teams and leadership. They overhauled everything from email, document collaboration, and internal communication. Now, Workspace helps shape a new mindset for their workforce and a new way of working. Today, secure collaboration happens end to end with Workspace documents created for flight safety and management and are stored securely in Drive and shared between corporate teams and their flight crews, whether they're on the ground or in the air. Wayfair is another example of a company that turned to Workspace to drive transformation. They're the destination for all things home giving their 29 million customers the power to create spaces that are just right for them. Now, Wayfair started by adopting Drive and Google Docs and eventually replaced all their legacy tools. Every month, they host more than 150,000 meetings in Google Meet, ranging from just a few participants to hundreds. They've capitalized the seamless flows from Google Docs to chat to meet in Workspace, allowing their teams to get work done no matter where they are. Finally, a very new customer, Banco Macro, one of the largest domestically owned private banks in Argentina. The bank was founded almost 50 years ago. Their mission is to build relationships of trust and foster a unique culture of customer care. Now their goal of becoming a leader in the digital market meant that they needed to switch to modern tools that allow fast-paced collaboration and communication. They chose Workspace. They want to attract emerging talent with tools that they already know how to use in their personal lives and shift the organizational mindset to seamless co-creation. With those goals, Workspace was the natural solution for them to turn to. Attracting and retaining talent is top of mind for many of us as we prepare for tomorrow's workforce. A new study stated 
that 75% of recent college graduates prefer working in Google Workspace. There are thousands of engineers across Google working to deliver on the Workspace mission. Every year, we double the pace of innovation. This year alone, we delivered over 300 powerful new features to help teams get things done. But there's so much more to come. And today, I'm excited to announce new ways in which we're making Workspace even more powerful. Capabilities like adaptive framing give everyone in a crowded conference room a chance to be seen. Companion mode for mobile bridges the gap between those at home and those in the office by giving everyone a voice. We've also introduced auto transcriptions in Meet, not just in English, but soon in French, German, Portuguese, and Spanish, all to reduce the chore of note-taking and to make it much easier for people who couldn't be there to stay in the loop. We're building on our investments in Smart Canvas. Earlier this year, we introduced auto summaries in Google Docs and pageless format and new smart chips. Today, I'm excited to share that we're bringing Smart Canvas to more places in Workspace, starting with Google Slides. Let's talk about presentations. Often, it's the delivery and not the content that makes a presentation impactful. However, in hybrid presentations, audiences often have to split their attention between the slides and the speaker. With Speaker Spotlight in Slides, we're bringing the storyteller and the story together for a far more integrated, engaging view, creating focus and engagement. We're extending Smart Canvas to Google Sheets too. Smart data extraction and a new timeline view allows you to focus on the content and not data entry. Here at Workspace, we've always believed in an open ecosystem and extensibility. I am thrilled to announce that we're opening up Smart Canvas for third-party applications. New smart chips for Salesforce, Zendesk, Figma, and other partners will allow people to view and engage with this rich third-party data in the flow of the work rather than switching tabs or context. To help secure your environment and data, we've introduced two major capabilities, trust rules in Drive and the ability to set global DLP rules that apply across your workspace deployment, now including Google Chat. Unlike other solutions, DLP checks in Google Chat happen in real time. This means that we scan the content, detect sensitive data, and apply an action instantaneously without the delay that is standard across the industry. With Workspace, you don't have to trade off security with speed. Our groundbreaking client-side encryption feature allows customers to have complete control over access to their data. Today, we're excited to announce that we are extending client-side encryption to Gmail and Google Calendar. On its own, Workspace is a comprehensive productivity solution, and it's even more powerful when you connect it to other tools in your environment. To help with this, we're introducing APIs for Meet and Chat and a Meet add-on SDK that allows you to bring the power of these tools directly into the third-party apps that you're using every day. Our partners, Figma and Asana, are using that new SDK to embed their apps directly into Meet. The new Figma add-on will enable teams to collaborate on Figma design files and FigJam digital whiteboards directly in Google Meet. And finally, we're bringing AppSheet and Google Chat together so that users can interact with custom AppSheet apps right within the chat that they're already using. Now, all these capabilities are designed to help organizations thrive in hybrid. They're also an expression of our mission to meaningfully connect people so that they can create, build, and grow together. Now it's time to see this in action. I'd like to introduce you to Ilya Brown, one of our vice presidents of product management. Thanks, Aparna. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Like many of you, I manage a team that works across time zones and locations. It can be tricky, so I'm excited to get specific and show you how Workspace can help teams adapt and thrive from wherever they work. For demonstration, we'll use Symbol, a company that relies on Workspace for team collaboration. This is Megan. She's working on a big website launch for Symbol with her remote and in-office colleagues. We join Megan as she starts her day. The website project is mission critical for Symbol. So Megan's top priority is making sure everything is running smoothly. Let's take a look at how the project's going. Symbol's website hasn't been updated in five years, 
and everyone is excited to launch the new design. Megan opens Google Workspace to find her tools in one place. She's thrilled to see the final website messaging and design are in from the agency and can't wait to share them with her team. She greets her team in their project space and lets them know the good news. Carlos, the web developer, asks to take a look at the final website design. Megan shares the file. Now, the file is also stored in files in the project space, preserving the website design for everyone in the space to access, saving the team time and helping the team stay productive. Working with different schedules and time zones can make it harder to assign responsibilities and keep everyone on the same page. Megan uses a project planning doc to keep track of her team members' responsibilities and tag people for input. It shows a project tracker with some team members already tagged. Although the doc is long and detailed, the team can quickly get up to speed with auto-generated summaries of all the main points. Megan can easily track tasks and assign responsibilities with a people chip in the table, which she created automatically with a drop-down template. Megan lets her team know that she plans to organize a meeting where they can review the new website messaging together and she shares a custom emoji to express her excitement. These quick impromptu chats help keep everyone connected when working from different locations and custom emojis can allow individuals to express themselves in a more personal way. Megan creates a calendar invite easily from within her team's project space. She can see her team members availability, which shows their working hours, work locations, and time zones by specific day. With an available time that works for everyone, she books a meeting room for people at the office and sends an invite. The next day, Megan receives a reminder about the meeting a few minutes before it starts. She clicks to join Google Meet directly from the project space. She notices that her room is quite dark and there's some construction work happening on the street outside. Meet automatically applies noise cancellation, optimized lighting, and image enhancement to ensure that Megan can be seen and heard. The team has joined from mobile devices, home laptops, and a meeting room in the office. The in-room Google Meet hardware supports adaptive framing with multiple intelligent cameras from Hudley. These use active speaker tracking to automatically frame people as they speak and capture attendee responses so everyone can be seen clearly and feel included. The attendees also use companion mode from their laptops and check into the meeting room, which displays their names in the video tile and people pane so everyone knows who's in the room. Megan opens the file they need to review and brings her team meeting there with one click. This way, she can see the team while they review and discuss the final version of the website. They collaborate in real time, adding comments and feedback as they go. Being able to see people while working in the same document can make collaboration so much easier and frankly, so much more fun. That's right, Aparna. And I personally love the AI magic in noise cancellation and lighting. I don't know about you, but my home can get a little cramped, a little crazy, a little noisy. And these features help me focus on the meeting rather than how I look or how I sound. Now, Megan's ready to share the website prototype to gather feedback. Let's see that in action. Megan is going to have a group of internal stakeholders and trusted external customers test the website prototype and provide feedback before their launch. Her colleague, Amani, a program manager, is in charge of setting up the process to gather feedback. She has created an app in AppSheet that uses chat to automatically request feedback from everyone with a central place to track the responses. She messages Megan over chat to ask for the list of testers. When Megan tries to share the sheet of invited testers, the automatic data loss prevention feature known as DLP lets her know that the file includes personal user data that's been flagged as sensitive by her admin. Megan removes the sensitive information and shares the sheet. DLP is great for companies that want to help protect sensitive data and help make it easier for users to do the right thing when working with confidential information. Megan sends a team-wide update announcing that final testing is underway. She sends the message in Gmail with client-side encryption enabled since the launch is still highly confidential. This means the email can remain private and encrypted every step of the way. No one outside Megan's company will see the contents of the message. Within minutes, Megan starts seeing feedback come in and she jumps into action. Pranav, a regional marketing manager, has reported a translation issue. Megan knows the developer team will need to handle this, so she files a ticket in the JiraBot directly in the project space. 
it's great to see the smooth workflow happening. And with client-side encryption coming to Gmail, all emails, including attachments, can remain private. At last, the website is ready for launch. Let's see the final stretch of the project. Megan is excited about presenting the team's hard work to the global team. She opens the project planning doc, noting all the completed tasks. The only task left is to present to team. Megan launches the draft presentation through the document chip in the notes column of the review tracker. She uses the slide library to add a cover page. This will allow her colleagues to see Megan's video directly on the slide as she presents, helping to foster a more engaging presentation. Now that she's put the final touches on the presentation, she starts the meeting right on time. With controls in Meet, she can navigate through her presentation, allowing her to easily see speaker notes and meeting participants without leaving the Meet window. Later in the day, Megan's director, Shiv, posts a leadership announcement to Symbol's 8,000 employees, congratulating the team and sharing the full marketing plan to amplify the new website. Well done, team. That was awesome. Congrats, Megan and the Symbol team. That was just a glimpse at how Workspace helps teams thrive in the face of hybrid challenges. That was such a great demo. Thank you, Ilya. I am psyched by how we can help users and customers today, and I am so excited by where we're headed. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope you check out the on-demand content and the breakout sessions for much more on Workspace. Bye for now. Google products provide the information you need when you need it. But why can't you get the same kind of answers for your business? Looker, Google Cloud's business intelligence solution is here to solve that problem, enabling you to go beyond traditional dashboards and make your organization's information accessible and useful. Bringing this innovation to business will be revolutionary, just like navigating a city after Google Maps. Looker is Google for your business data. Here's what we mean. What if Google AI were built into the tools you use to store and analyze data at work? Google's Vertex AI Vision takes data like video, images, and audio, and in real time, turns it into structured data, ready for business intelligence. Going beyond the dashboard means using Google Glass Enterprise to see insights and recommendations based on your data in real time. More access, more transparency. Now that's Google for your business. With Google Maps, you know if a restaurant is busy before you go or you can get rerouted around a traffic jam. Looker will help you connect similar dots in a predictive way. A concert in five days will increase foot traffic by 65%. Would you like to adjust staffing and inventory? Yes. Looker and AI lets you respond to changes in demand and turn insights into action. Foot traffic continues to be busy. Encourage customers to visit an alternate shop with a reward card? Yes. Smarter insights mean better experiences and happy customers. So go beyond the dashboard and transform the way you do business with Looker, powered by Google Cloud. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Vertex AI Vision session. I am Fabien Lampac, Product Manager at Google Cloud. Hello, everybody. This is Nelson Gonzalez. I'm a Product Manager in the Google Cloud team. Today, we're very pleased to introduce Vertex AI Vision. Let's get started. Today, we're glad to be joined by Carlos Enchia, Co-Founder and CEO at Plainsight AI, and Button Zatmari, Vice President at BrainCorp. A quick run through of the agenda for today. I'll provide a brief overview of Vertex AI Vision, followed by a demo. Then Carlos will share with us how Plainsight has brought the best of Vertex AI Vision in the hands of their customers. And finally, Nelson and Button will present some examples on how Vertex AI Vision is applied to the retail sector. So let's dive right in. Today, there is about 1 billion cameras installed worldwide in buildings, cities, highways, 
And the future holds a rapid growth of cameras and sensors streaming data from factories, retail stores, data coming from cars, satellites, drones, and just about everywhere. In addition to this expected growth of sensors and data, we see new developments in AI, the migration to higher sensor resolution, and communication from devices happening at 5G speeds. All these factors are enabling a rapid expansion of novel computer vision application to be created in order to serve every industry and every use case. So this is a huge opportunity, but this is not an easy journey. Classically, if you want to build video AI analytics application, you'd have to use multiple tools, a lot of engineering would be involved to form the streaming pipeline, the AI analytics, and the data warehousing. It's taking time, it's expensive, and as importantly, you need to trust the insights delivered by the applications. With Vertex AI Vision, all these things are now simplified. And we've redesigned everything from the ground up to obtain an efficient and easy to use pipeline. And we've reduced the time to build Vision AI applications from days to minutes at the tenth of the cost. Also, you can trust that we've developed Vertex AI Vision responsibly and according to Google's AI principle. With continuous training, including testing for bias performance, and by incorporating features to protect privacy and security, like person blur, as well as choosing not to offer any kind of personal identification features, such as facial recognition or multi-camera tracking. So what is Vertex AI Vision? Vertex AI Vision is your one-stop shop that provides all the functionalities to easily build and deploy scalable video analytics pipeline at low cost and low latency. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we're launching Vertex AI Vision in public preview. So with Vertex AI Vision, you can ingest media from live cameras or existing data, process media using either state-of-the-art pre-trained AI models or custom-built models, store data in Vision Warehouse, which comes along with powerful uh, search capabilities, and finally, analyze the data and serve meaningful, actionable business insights to your customers. You can do all of this in the single user interface of Vertex AI Vision Studio or via the SDK for expanded capabilities. Now, we're going to show you how to build and deploy your first application with a quick demo. Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating and deploying a Vertex AI Vision application. And today, we're going to build a smart city traffic analytics application using live video from cameras and AI to help city planners better understand traffic patterns in order to reduce congestion and increase citizen safety. So let's get started. First, we create a new application with Vertex AI Vision Studio. Next step is to select a video stream as an input of the pipeline. For this demo, we are going to select some streams associated to live video cameras. By clicking Live View, the video feed is rendered directly into the user interface. Now, we're going to process the data by adding AI models to our application. And the first thing we want to do is detect and count all the vehicles crossing the intersection. To do so, we are adding the Occupancy Analytics pre-built model. Then, we want to configure this model by selecting the video feed we are interested in and using the line crossing tool to associate a smart event to each leg of the intersection. Also, to answer privacy, we are adding a person blur model so that if a person comes into the field of view of the camera, blurring will be automatically applied on that person. With Vertex AI Vision, all these models are available right out of the box, but we can also bring in custom models. As an example, we're now importing a bicycle detector that has been trained in Vertex AI. All you need to do is select a model previously trained and import it. Next is the storage of application output, and we're going to connect our pipeline to a warehouse. Creating a warehouse is really easy. You just need to specify a name, and the warehouse will be created and set up for you. And finally, we're going to add a BigQuery connector to store structured data in the table. Here, we're browsing the available tables and selecting one. 
Now that we have the inputs, the analytics, and the outputs defined, we can deploy our application via just a few clicks. So let's look at the data that has been stored in Warehouse. Warehouse assets are accessible directly from Vertex AI Vision Studio, and from there we can perform powerful search based on time and metadata. For example, I want to search for all events that happened today in the afternoon that contained 5 to 10 vehicles. As we added a BigQuery connector, no structured data is being streamed in a table, and we can run queries for analytics. We can also connect the output of this query to Data Studio to easily visualize results and create live dashboards. Finally, we can use the Vertex AI Vision SDK to consume output in other ways. In this case, we are serving data to city planners via a web-based dashboard to help them better understand traffic patterns and make more informed decisions. To conclude our session today, Vertex AI Vision is your one-stop shop where you can easily ingest, analyze, and store video streams on Google Cloud and build applications to power use cases across smart cities, retail, manufacturing, and much more. Thank you. I hope you liked the demo. Vertex AI Vision unlocks novel use case, and we're proud to work with independent solution vendors that are helping their customers build, integrate, and execute Vision AI workflows. One fantastic example is our collaboration with Plainsight, who's been pioneering the use of Vertex AI Vision. I'm glad to introduce Carlos Sanchia, CEO and co-founder of Plainsight AI, to tell us more about them and their journey with Vertex AI Vision. Thank Carlos. you, Fabian. Plainsight unlocks successful computer vision solutions, and it does that through providing a unique combination of AI strategy a visual data science tool set and deep learning expertise to develop, implement, and oversee transformative computer vision solutions for enterprises across industry. And we do that really by addressing speed, standardization, productionalization, and oversight. Speed delivers value in days, not months. Standardization is a way to be able to maintain and repeat the solution over time. Productionalization is a codified automation of the workflows. And then oversight. Any computer vision solution requires oversight and responsible computer vision monitoring and management of that life cycle. And when we're talking about repeatable enterprise computer vision, we're really talking about hardened solutions, but they're end-to-end -end proven vision AI solutions. And because the technology spans across the horizontal, we work in a lot of different sectors. Smart Ag is one of them, manufacturing, quick service restaurants, energy for oil and gas. And we're really an AI-driven data discovery company that's responsibly applying AI. We're available on the Google Cloud Marketplace for deployment, and we have maintenance and oversight over the entire solution. Computer vision enablement with Vertex AI vision. There's a couple quotes here from uh, leadership over at Plainsight. One of them's here from Elizabeth Spears, our co-founder and chief product officer at Plainsight. Vertex AI Vision is changing the game for use cases that have previously been economically unviable at scale. The ability to run computer vision models on streaming video with up to 100x cost reduction is creating an entirely new business opportunities for our customers. And additionally, just a little quote from my side, with pre-built components, easy configuration, and instant deployments, we're accelerating delivery from weeks to minutes for our customers' diverse use cases. And it's really driving a low-cost adoption of computer vision, accelerated uploads to Google Cloud, and streamlined processing. It's a speed to solution. They're streaming video. Connection handling is done in minutes. And it's an ease of use. It's a point-and-click model selection with insights in minutes. I want to take a little time to talk about one of our customers that we've done a solution for. DRW is a diversified training firm innovating across both traditional and cutting edge markets. So the problem we were addressing with them was really around office heating and cooling needs that are fluctuating wildly as employers balance in office and work from home schedules. And it's not just the HVAC system, it's also the facilities and services that are provided to the employees. This flexibility provided to employees offers DRW an opportunity to dynamically adjust HVAC needs based on occupancies and conserve energy as practical. 
And part of the requirements here were really highly accurate, real-time IP camera streaming applications where privacy and security standards are maintained throughout the entire application. And I wanted to highlight here the ease of the interface in the Google Cloud Console. On the left, you see the application graph for this specific application. It's one stream being processed in real time. A person blur for fully occlusion is being implemented here. And then an occupancy count. The data is being stored in the data warehouse for Vision AI and also in BigQuery so we can analyze it later. Here's the resulting video from that graph. As you can see, PII is being maintained and anonymized throughout the process in real time. No data is landing in Google Cloud that is not anonymized. Thank you, Fabian. Thanks, Carlos. I'm eager to see the many innovative solutions that Plainsight will bring to your customers leveraging Vertex AI Vision. I now would like to bring Nelson, who will share some exciting announcements about AI models in Vertex AI Vision. Nelson. Thank you, Fabian. Hello, everybody. This is Nelson Gonzalez again. Customers expect Google Cloud to deliver strong AI capabilities. We're pleased to offer a broad portfolio of AI models within Vertex AI Vision, ranging from custom models that you can build in Vertex AI to pre-built models offered by Google. For example, the occupancy analytics models include crossing counting, active zone counting, and dwell time features. These models, combined with the person blur model, deliver important customer analytics relevant across industries while protecting the privacy of your end customers. At Google, we take the responsible development of AI seriously and believe all AI technology requires a responsible approach. We are committed to upholding the highest standards for ethical use of AI. And our approach combines socio-technical assessments with actions plans that amplify opportunities and mitigate potential risks. For Vertex AI Vision, we have taken steps to incorporate mitigations for risk concerns that arise in the development process. Informed choices based on our experience. We have also taken steps to evaluate our models for fairness. Introducing responsible AI-focused features unknown before, such as the person blur. In addition, customer education and transparency is key. We are providing our customers with educational materials and best practices as part of the Vertex AI Vision collaterals. We are continuously iterating improving and incorporated lessons learned from within cloud and across Google. Today, we're pleased to introduce the first of several models that we plan to bring to our retail customers through Vertex AI Vision. The product recognizer solves a very difficult challenge, how to recognize products at a scale based solely on the product image. Product Recognizer does exactly this. It recognizes the product based on visual and text features of the product package and recognizes the product at the UPC at JITIN level. In order to do this at a scale, Google brings distinctive capabilities in terms of breadth, maintenance, and depth. We leverage a state-of-the-art AI and the Google Knowledge Graph, which includes over a billion products and grows daily with continued maintenance by Google. As Product Recognizer grows, we plan to deliver additional attributes about, about each product beyond the UPC number, such as whether the product is gluten-free or not for grocery products. The retail analytics models found within Vertex AI Vision including the product recognizer, will enable customers to realize a broad set of use cases. We also know that our customers need flexible, scalable, and financially viable solutions that are built on trust. In terms of flexibility, we want to enable customers to use multiple sensor modalities, ranging from fixed cameras 
to robots, to mobile devices that capture the images. Scalability requires partners that bring ISV solutions that integrate with retail vision, as well as SIs that are able to integrate into the store systems. Financial viability is key to ensure that the first steps taken by your company drive retail into innovation while delivering positive ROI and a strong value creation. It's really critical to go beyond the pilot store and prove a solution that applies to the full network. Lastly, and very importantly, the solutions need to be built on trust for retail customers that will interact with the solutions at the stores and including, very importantly, protecting your end customer's privacy. We're pleased to introduce today a set of key customers and partners that have been able to bring this innovation of Vertex AI Vision and the product recognizer. Today, I'd like to introduce one of these partners. Whether you're a child or an adult, you've probably been intrigued by robots, AI-powered robots that hold the promise to solve challenging problems that are very challenging for a human to address. These problems include being able to solve the analytics needed at each store. It is my pleasure today to invite Bhutan Sadmari, Vice President at BrainCorp. Thank you, Nelson. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, I've been with Brain from pretty much day one, uh, and it's been amazing to be part of the journey and see the company grow to where it is today. Today, BrainCorp is an automation company. We are optimizing and automating workflows with robots. We are number one when it comes to deployed mobile uh, robots in public spaces. We have more than 20K units out there operating safely on a daily basis, covering more than 80, 80 million miles uh, and being super helpful for our customers. In addition to automating some base functions like sc floor scrubbing, we introduced uh, additional functionality to our robots, added some payloads like a uh, mechanism to collect images of the shelf content when they operate in retail spaces and partnered with companies to analyze those images and with there bring uh, a new functionality and help our customers uh, and do shelf analytics. We have this function first rolled out at some of the largest retailers uh, in the US on our existing fleet and today, I would also like to introduce a new dedicated inventory scanning robot, which is cost optimized for data collection and is more flexible in adapting in a variety of store form factors. Uh, and it is zero touch autonomy and, long, and it has a long battery life. What this means is that it will allow our customers to manage these units remotely uh, and to give you an example, imagine you are a market manager and you want to see if all the seasonal displays are properly out uh, in your market. You could do this with a click of a button at your own will. In addition to this dedicated multipurpose inventory scan robot, I am super happy to announce our partnership with the Google Retail Store Analytics uh, team and with Nelson to bring a scalable, flexible, financially viable uh, inventory scanning solution to the market. Uh, the workflow is very simple and elegant. We start with a robot that collects raw images uh, and it always has an updated map of the environment. 
we use the product recognizer and shelf tech recognizer from the retail store analytics. And we put this together and store the insights in an aggregated warehouse, in a BigQuery warehouse. We will know what products are on display, what is out of stock, what is low on stock, what is missing, what needs to be replenished, where the products are on display. This will all be in a centralized data warehouse. Having everything in one centralized place will enable us to deliver accurate and actionable insights to optimize e-commerce and retail operations and increase sales. At the store level, it will enable shelf restock alerting, task management automation, price tech compliance alerting, product location compliance alerting, etc. On the e-commerce side, it will link physical with the online. And what this really means is the following. Retail stores, that is the store that you usually go on a daily basis, it's increasingly becoming a multifunctional environment. It's also a warehouse for your online orders. And with that, having an accurate inventory is increasingly important. Our shelf analytics service will allow you full and accurate and up-to-date visibility of what's available in the store. And with that, you will be able to link online to the physical. You, at all times, you will have an accurate representation on your online presence to what's available in the store. And with that, optimize your operation. We will also give you an updated map of the store. With the updated map of the store and knowing what is, on, what is available on shelf, you will be able to uh, optimize your picking routes and save labor and serve your customers better. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Button. To summarize things, Vertex AI Vision is your one-stop shop that allows you to easily and quickly build and deploy cost-efficient vision applications using state-of-the-art AI models. Partners complement Vertex AI Vision by, number one, bringing key capabilities and domain expertise to Vertex AI Vision, integrating Vertex AI Vision platform and models into their solutions. With that, I'd like to turn it to Fabian for some additional thoughts. Thank you, Nelson. Before we go, I want to spend a moment on the exciting things to expect in 2023 and beyond. Edge, we're going to enable the deployment of Vertex AI Vision application on devices at the edge. Custom models, you can expect more capabilities to help you build your own models and better serve your use case. While we don't have the time to go through all these exciting details today, we look forward to sharing more with you as we continue our journey. With that, here are a few ways that you can learn more about Vertex AI Vision and get hands-on with the platform. And you can get in touch with us via your Google Cloud contact. Thank you, Nelson, Button, Carlos, for joining me in person today during this Vertex AI Vision session. We started with the exponential roadmaps goal, zero carbon emissions by 2050. Where our emissions primarily stem from? Device, CDM, networking, and cloud. Our goal is actually to get to zero emissions by 2030. Backstage was built internally at Spotify, so it unifies your tooling, your services, docs, and apps under a unified, consistent UI. We donated it to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Amazing to see how many people at Spotify actually care deeply about this topic. Cloud Carbon Footprint is actually an open source tool developed by ThoughtWorks. The only thing that's limiting us right now is just people hearing about it. It leverages cloud APIs to provide visualizations of estimated carbon emissions. We leverage Bigtable, GKE. It starts not just from the cloud, but it goes all the way out to our end user devices. We want to empower not just Spotify internally, but the broader developer community to reduce their carbon footprint. Hi, 
everyone. Welcome to next 2022 session on Document AI. I'm Sudhira Wanguri, and I lead the Document AI product suite here at Google Cloud. Today, I'm also joined by the Managing Director and the Head of Document Lifecycle at Commerce Bank, Andreas Goldman. We have some new exciting announcements for you today in the Document AI product suite. So let's dive right in. Modern economies, businesses, and livelihoods depend on digital documents. Digital manual labor comprises the work that many of us do, but almost never shows up in a job description. It is essential to the vast majority of today's business workflows, and it captures the value of the data in those digital documents. Why AI ML for documents? Employee experience, significantly lower TCO from automation of manual work, speed and error reduction are some of the reasons why our customers have told us they've tried to automate tedious manual processes with AI and ML. The reason why legacy technologies require supporting labor, manual labor, is because understanding a document is much more than reading a document. That's where document AI comes in. So let's talk about how we want to help our customers and their employees manage the toil of digital manual labor. Document AI, in a nutshell, converts unstructured content into business-ready structured data. With Document AI, we have made it our goal to turn documents into business-ready structured data. As we work closely with our leading customers, we realize that part of the problem is that legacy technologies are solving a problem that's too simple. Yes, you can get some structured data with a table parser, but we have heard that what customers are really looking for is business-ready structured data. In other words, they're looking for a technology that will read documents in ways similar to humans. They are looking for the confidence that when they start to automate processes, they are not signing themselves up to a different kind of digital manual labor. Google's Document AI presents a simple and cost-effective path to build Document AI processors and a complementary system of record to manage documents and data. Today, we're announcing Document AI Workbench in public preview. Document AI Workbench enables you to automate document processing by using your own data to build models with Document AI's machine learning platform powered by state-of-the-art computer vision, natural language, and neural networks. With DocAI Workbench, you can use your data to create ML models for many document types, such as printed, scanned, handwritten, tabular, etc. You can label with a simple interface. You can train for free at the click of a button. You can reduce your time to market all while owning your own data within your own GCP project. You can import already labeled documents and you have two training options. You can train from scratch to create a model of any document type. You can also uptrain to get accurate results faster for document types which have a relevant processor already that you can use as starting points such as the invoice processor. BBVA had this to say about the DocAI workbench and several other customers have been echoing the same sentiment. Another customer, Livio, has uptrained an invoice processor with 1,600 documents and increased their F1 score from 75 to 83 thanks to uptraining. Document AI results now beat the results of a competitor, and this will also help Livio save 20% on the overall cost in the long run. Sears estimates that their time to market will reduce by 80% with DocAI Workbench versus building custom models. Google's DocAI Workbench offers a flexible and easy to use interface with end-to-end -end functionality for Pandera's clients' demands. And custom document extractors and classifiers not only reduce their prototyping from months to weeks, but also offer Pandera's clients added cost uh, reductions compared to their current technologies. Now, Workbench extracted data from documents more accurately and with less training data for flexible document types, flexible layout document types like W9, W2 variants, and free layout document types like invoices, receipts, bank statements, and pay stamps. 
A third party agency used DocAI's workbench alongside major competitors' products to automate this document processing. Here are some of the notable features we are launching as part of the DocAI workbench announcement today. DocAI workbench covers essential workflows to develop custom document extraction processors with an end to end UI support, data import, schema creation and annotation, training and uptraining, evaluation and troubleshooting model deployment and version management, and a human-in-the-loop integration for last mile quality assurance. We also have various partners available to help our customers with Document AI. In addition to Workbench, DocAI has pre-trained processors on documents that matter to you, delivering highly accurate data and lowering your processing costs dramatically. Over the past year, we have improved our existing DocAI for Procurement GA offerings and launched new preview offerings. These improvements span across processing of invoices, receipts, purchase orders. We added support for more than six new languages and expanded to new regions. Today, we are announcing the following for Document AI for Procurement. A GA refresh of the invoice and expense pre-trained processors with improvements to normalization and line item entity detection. We're also launching up training in public preview for invoices, expenses, purchase order, pre-trained parsers. This will unlock new possibilities for improving accuracy, adding new language support, and customizing the schema. We will also introduce support for five new languages and expand the availability of DocAI for procurement to Canada and Australia. Training for invoice expense and purchase order pre-trained process unlocks new possibilities, as I said, for accuracy, language support, and customization. Here is an example of an invoice up training use case where we have used up training uh, to improve the results of the invoice processing. Here's another example of where up training was used to train an expense pre-trained processor to add a new language support, such as Japanese. Today, we're also excited to announce ID document proofing as part of our DocAI for Identity product suite. You can also upgrade pre-trained processors to meet your needs across a wide variety of pre-trained processors, such as the invoice, expense, purchase order, contract, so on and so forth. In addition to our pre-trained processor product suite, as well as the workbench, DocAI also has our state-of-the-art, much-loved DocAI OCR form parser, as well as document splitter features that enables customers to convert their unstructured documents into text and structured data. DocAI OCR is able to do just fine with text, However, as a developer, this would be very difficult to sometimes integrate into an application or a storage system. So here with a form parser, we're able to get back a set of key value pairs and the layout structure really implies that there is a question and answer dynamic for the content in the document. With a parse key value pair, this is much easier for a developer to integrate into another system. With that, I'm excited to announce Andreas Wolmar, the Managing Director of Document Life Cycles at Commerce Bank. Commerce Bank has used Document AI to transform their document process automation systems, and I'm excited to hear more from Andreas. Over to you. Hello, everyone. Commerzbank is the second largest private bank in Germany. It is a leading bank for the so-called German Mittelstand, which is the majority of corporate clients in Germany and a strong partner for approximately 11 million private and small business customers in Germany with a client-centric portfolio of financial services in two segments. We serve our customers in Germany and globally with approximately 44,000 employees. I am heading the cluster document lifecycle responsible for the document-related services, from creation of documents to archiving, as well as the digital communication to customers. I'm driving in parallel the initiative Paperless Bank in supporting the transformation of Commerzbank to a digital advisory bank. The DocAI use case is a key initiative to enable Commerzbank overall strategy. 
optimization of the business models to, towards a digital advisory bank in combination with a significant reduction of the number of branches. At the core of the turnaround strategy, new advisory centers are created, which directly depend on this document ingestion pipeline. As a full service wholesale bank, in the middle of our transformation, we are still facing a lot of paper-based communication with our clients. By introducing, for example, the advisory centers, we have to redesign the handling of documents coming in. The new pipeline is relevant for both segments going forward, private clients and corporate clients. The aim is to automate the recognition of the incoming documents, which was traditionally done by the staff in the branches and the back office. Automation via Google Doc AI will allow us to operate with significantly less staff, taking care on sorting and assigning the documents to the defined business processes. In summary, we are switching from late scan, which means decentral, manual, processing and sorting, followed by logistic to the back office for scanning and filing, to early scan, which is central delivery, direct scanning, automated sorting and assigning by Doc AI pipeline, and followed by the transfer to manual processing. We talk about approximately 50 million scanned pages per year and approximately 30,000 incoming letters per day, adding up to a very high number of document types to be brought on the pipeline. We will run trained documents, structured, unstructured, freestyle, as well as barcoded documents through the pipeline. As a further benefit, it will free us from our own infrastructure by using a fully cloud-based model. At the same time, we will increase customer experience by reducing the running time for incoming documents and therefore much faster fulfillment of the requested service for our customers. Overall, it is helping us to transit to the digital processes with significantly higher efficiency. In addition, the new pipeline will allow us a step-by-step -step migration of approximately 20 historically grown scanning processes with a high degree of manual interaction to the new pipeline within the next years. Not only an innovation case, as well a renovation case. Going forward, we will use the same technology to fully end-to-end -end automate high-volume processes, which will be done by a partnering cluster in Commerzbank. The MVP will go live soon and we will then continuously ramp up and retrain to increase the degree of automation. Commerzbank has established cloud partnership with Google, ranging from infrastructure to services. We decided to partner with Google by using Document Workbench due to an innovative and future-oriented approach with a strong partner the covering of a broad spectrum of documents via different industry, as well as a very comprehensive approach for custom documents. And we were running a successful proof of concept already in 2021. The first step is achieved and it's adding value to Commerzbank significantly. And going forward, documents will continuously be ramped up to the pipeline. We are using a, a customized human in the, in the loop interface to comply with all our requirements and data sources, making the handling as easy as possible for our back office staff. Nevertheless, it is just the beginning. Besides ramping up the new pipeline, we have to address the grown process and document complexity within Commerzbank. Based on this, we are trying to simplify those dimensions in parallel to being able to scale as good as possible. We understand it as a multi-year journey, creating added value with every step for our customers, as well as concerning the efficiencies in document handling and processing. We are looking forward to realizing the full potential together with our partners. 
Thank you for having me today. Back to you, Sajira. Thank you, Andreas. We are very excited to hear from customers such as Commerce Bank how DocAI has been useful in furthering their mission and strategy. Now on to the next exciting announcement in the DocAI product suite for today, DocAI Warehouse. Now once customers extract data from documents, the next challenge they face is managing and using this data. There are three challenges today. There's no cloud native service to store and manage documents along with its unstructured data. Customers need to stitch together multiple cloud components. Search on unstructured data is very basic, keyword based and complex to assemble. And building workflows to process documents requires complex integration of this extracted data with various applications and tools. As you can see on the left, we have a mature portfolio to process structured data. However, unstructured data constitutes 80% of enterprise data and is yet underserved on the cloud. This product was developed to address this gap and unlock value from unstructured documents. With DocAI Warehouse, we address three problems with legacy records. DocAI Warehouse provides you the best of Google's semantic search technology on documents, We've integrated it with best-in-class DocAI for scalable and accurate classification and extraction. And with a cloud-native elastic managed service, we manage and scale the compute storage and databases. DocAI warehouse features span across search and organization, governance and compliance, workflows and integrations, and AI and data processing. As you can see, Doc Warehouse is applicable to a broad range of use cases, document types, and workflows. We have seen initial traction with financial services, healthcare, supply chain industries, but it's applicable to a broader set of operational document-based applications. What we're announcing today is a UI to administer search, browse, folder, and govern documents, APIs, client libraries to manage search documents, folders, schemas, self-serve provision from the Cloud Console catalog with documentation, and GCS connectors and batch DocAI pipeline management workflows. That wraps up all our announcements in the DocAI product suite today. Here are a few ways that you can learn more and even get hands-on with DocAI. Please get in touch with us via your Google Cloud contacts or directly at docai-external at google.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to working with you all on your document-related challenges.